Chapter 401 Quickly Grow Up A few companion eggs dropped as well, so Zhou Wen fed them to his companion beasts. Tyrant Behemoth finally began to evolve after eating the two poisoned bat companion eggs. The tiny behemoth, which was originally only half a person's height, grew its fur crazily. Its muscles swelled like balloons and soon, it grew to almost four meters tall. The muscles on its body were like steel, filled with explosive power. Tyrant Behemoth, Legendary, Evolvable, Life Providence, Extreme Strength, Strength, 21, Speed, 21, Constitution, 21, Primordial Energy, 21, Talent Skill, Mountain Devouring, Companion Form, Boxing Glove. Zhou Wen had been feeding it for quite some time, with plenty of epic companion eggs in the mix. It took this long before Tyrant Behemoth advanced to the legendary stage, so he had no idea when it would advance to the epic stage. However, Tyrant Behemoth was indeed ferocious. It was nearly four meters tall when it was only at the legendary stage. If it advanced to the mythical stage, it might really be able to devour a mountain. It would be unimaginably massive. Little Behemoth, quickly grow up. I don't expect you to advance to the mythical stage. Hurry up and advance to the epic stage. Be a happy fighter for me. Zhou Wen actually didn't wish for Tyrant Behemoth to advance to the mythical stage. The six hero families had plenty of resources. Yet, it was difficult for them to nurture mythical companion beasts, so it would be even harder for him. If it weren't for the game dungeons that allowed them to grind for resources, Zhou Wen probably wouldn't have been able to afford to rear a mythical companion beast. Zheng Tianluan had been in a bad mood recently. He had imagined that he would be able to get close to the girls from the Wei Yang Club after he got together with Sully. That way, he could then hit on the other beauties. With his family background and position as the vice president of the student council, it didn't seem difficult. However, to his surprise, those female students from the Wei Yang Club didn't participate in activities with the student council and instead regularly hung out with the people from the Xianwen Club instead. Although Zheng Tianluan's family had some connections, he was naturally far more inferior to Li Xian. He didn't dare to do anything about the Xianwen Club. He originally wanted to invite Wei Gu to help him deal with the Xianwen Club, but Wei Gu repeatedly rejected the notion. Nothing happened. This made Zheng Tianluan even more depressed. After leaving campus, Zheng Tianluan was heading home. When he walked to a small alley, he saw a pale-faced, middle-aged man with a sickly look walking over. The middle-aged man's appearance reminded Zheng Tianluan of Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen's face was a little pale, as though he hadn't been out in the sun for years. It felt very similar to the middle-aged man, worsening Zheng Tianluan's mood. When Zheng Tianluan saw that the man was staring at him, he couldn't help but feel the asterisk said. He glared back and wanted to ask what he was looking at. However, the moment his eyes met the middle-aged man's gaze, he was left rooted to the spot. He felt as if there was a ball of mist in the middle-aged man's eyes that was attracting him. He couldn't help but look into those eyes, unable to think about anything else. Jack kept looking at Zheng Tianluan and slowly walked in front of him. Then, he stretched out a hand and carefully pulled out a strand of hair from Zheng Tianluan's head. Zheng Tianluan was jolted awake from the pain. Even though he did not know why he was suddenly confused, he felt a sense of fear when he looked at the middle-aged man. He couldn't help but retreat and ask, What are you trying to do? Jack ignored Zheng Tianluan and pinched the strand of hair with his fingers before taking out a palm-sized doll. The doll looked like a clown. Jack stuck Zheng Tianluan's hair onto the clown doll's head. The soft strand of hair seemed to turn into a steel needle in his hands. It quickly sank into the body of the clown doll. At that moment, Jack looked up at Zheng Tianluan with a strange, chilling smile. He pursed his slightly purple lips and said, I have something I need your help with. There's a student named Zhou Wen in your school. Help me get a strand of his hair or nails. Are you crazy? Why would I do such things for you? Zheng Tianluan didn't know why, but the fear in his heart intensified as he spoke. He kept retreating, and if not for his legs going soft, he would have already turned around and escaped. Jack didn't say anything to Zheng Tianluan. He glanced at a stray dog who was rummaging through a trash can. He reached out in the air, pulled out the stray dog's fur, and sucked it to his fingers. Under the pain, the stray dog barked at Jack, but Jack only gave it a look before the stray dog instantly turned around and ran off with its tail between its legs. It didn't even dare to bark again. Jack took out another clown doll, inserted the dog fur into the head of the clown doll, and drilled an unforgettable scene into Zhang Tianluan's mind. Jack's eyes became frighteningly bright as he stared intently at the clown doll in his hand. He had a frightening smile on his face, as if he was a clown smiling. That pale face looked like the white face after a clown put on clown makeup. In the next second, Jack exerted some strength to rip off the clown doll's arm. At the same time, the stray dog let out a tragic cry as fresh blood spewed out. One of its front legs seemed to be ripped off by an invisible hand. 
Jack yanked at the doll in his hand even more crazily. Very quickly, the remaining limbs of the doll were torn off. Similarly, the stray dog lost its limbs as blood splattered everywhere. Under Zheng Tianlun's horrified gaze, Jack tore off the clown doll's head. When Zheng Tianlun saw the stray dog being beheaded in front of him, he broke down mentally. He screamed and turned around to run. Your hair is here too! Jack's soft words made Zheng Tianlun, who was extremely terrified, stop running. He stood there like a stone statue, without moving. I'll give you two days! I want to see Zhou Wen's hair or nails, otherwise, you will be like that stray dog. As Jack spoke, he reached out and stroked the clown doll's head. Zheng Tianlun instantly felt his scalp go numb as if a huge, invisible hand was caressing his head. His body trembled and he fell to the ground, his pants soaked. Jack frowned, seemingly unwilling to look at Zheng Tianlun again. Covering his nose, he turned around and slowly walked out of the alley. At the same time, Zheng Tianlun heard Jack's hoarse voice. Remember, you only have two days. How am I to find you after I get it? Although Zheng Tianlun was extremely afraid, his desire to live compelled him to ask in a trembling voice. After you get it, I will naturally appear by your side. Whether you live or die is in your hands. As Jack spoke, he turned and left the alley. Zheng Tianlun got up and secretly chased down the alley, only to find that there was no one on the streets. There was no sign of the middle-aged man. Zheng Tianlun would have thought that he had just had a nightmare, if not for the bloodstains on the ground and the stray dog's corpse. Chapter 402 Luck Composition Apart from eating at the cafeteria and bringing Wang Lu breakfast, Zhou Wen hardly left the house. With the baby tiger, the efficiency of grinding increased significantly. The dimensional crystals and companion beasts that dropped had improved significantly, be it in terms of quantity or quality. Plus 5 luck really shows an obvious improvement. If I have a few more points, wouldn't the drop rate double? Zhou Wen thought about where to get another pet that added luck. Due to the lucky baby tiger's life providence being unique, even if he had one more baby tiger, the luck wouldn't stack. Therefore, it was useless even if Zhou Wen went to Binong Cave to grind for the baby tiger again. Wait a minute. The lucky baby tiger's life providence can't be stacked, but can it be synthesized? When two different companion beasts combine, they might produce a different life providence. Just like when I fused the silver wing flying ant and sky spider youngling, the king of low altitudes became the king of sky. If I were to fuse the baby tiger with some other cat or dog, would I be able to turn it into a lucky cat or something? Would it be stackable? Shouwen was considering the viability of this matter. If he could really synthesize one like this, he could completely synthesize the luck type life providence with another powerful companion beast. It would give him a luck bonus and powerful combat ability. Shouwen was only thinking about it. He couldn't have the blood-colored avatar die, nor could he refresh dungeons. All his thoughts were empty thoughts, making it impossible for him to farm the baby tiger. As he hadn't refreshed the dungeon, Zhou Wen had nearly wiped out all the monsters he could grind in the past few days. He was about to reach a point of not having any monsters to grind on. This was the first time he had encountered such a situation since obtaining the mysterious phone. Although there were also instance dungeons he had never been before, such as Mount Laojun, Zhou Wen didn't dare visit them, as he was afraid the blood-colored avatar would die inside. Thankfully, Zhou Wen had many books to read, so it wasn't that he had nothing to do. He was engrossed in an ocean of knowledge every day. Zhang Tianlun felt like crying. He originally believed that using his relationship as a fellow schoolmate, it wouldn't be difficult to get a strand of Zhou Wen's hair. In the beginning, he had sought out the Xianwen club members, who were closer to Zhou Wen. He claimed that the student council wanted to host a joint activity with them, hoping that Li Xian and Zhou Wen could participate. He was responsible for all the expenses. For this, he spent a large sum to get some special dimensional zones passes. However, to his surprise, Li Xian told him that Zhou Wen was in seclusion and refused to participate in any activities. In the end, the joint activity was held. He had spent the money but failed to see Zhou Wen. What do I do? What do I do? Zheng Tianlun was extremely anxious. There was less than a day left. He had to obtain Zhou Wen's hair as soon as possible. He didn't dare imagine the outcome of failure and dared not remember the tragic state of the stray dog. Zheng Tianlun had thought of many methods, but they were unviable. Finally, he had no choice but to find Zhou Wen himself. He had to obtain a strand of Zhou Wen's hair no matter what. Zhou Wen was reading a book near the balcony on the second floor. The sunlight shone on him, making him feel warm and comfortable. As he wore the truth listener earring in its companion form the entire time, Zhou Wen heard Zheng Tianlun's approach before he even reached the yard's entrance. Why is he here? Zhou Wen was puzzled. Zheng Tianlun was clearly walking towards his building and was about to reach his yard's entrance. I have to get his hair! I have to get it. Zhou Wen listened carefully 
and heard Zheng Tianluan muttering to himself. It was so soft that ordinary people might not be able to hear it even if they stood beside him. However, truth listeners' hearing was just too good. Zhou Wen heard him clearly. Whose hair does he want? Mine? What does he want my hair for? Zhou Wen immediately made some bad connections. There were many magical dimensional forces in the League. Legend had it that some people in the West District had curse-type primordial energy skills that allowed them to curse a person to death remotely through mediums such as a person's hair and nails. There were many similar abilities in the East District, and they were even more exaggerated. There was no need for any physical contact. Just knowing the time someone was born was enough to take their life, even from a great distance away. Zhou Wen currently didn't have much knowledge regarding such primordial energy skills. In a real battle, be it an epic human or companion beast, he had the power to contend a fight. Instead, he was afraid of powers that he could succumb to without even seeing. Against such powers, even if he had the annihilated powers, it would be of no use considering how he couldn't find or hit his target. For instance, many powerful epic experts died without even seeing a dimensional creature while exploring dimensional zones. It wasn't that they weren't strong enough, but that their resistance against the unknown force was too weak. They were nothing but burrs who were unable to use their strength. Of course, there were burrs that succeeded. Legend had it that the Xia family's hero had cultivated the invincible Kane divine art in the past, reaching an invulnerable state. No matter how evil power it was, nothing could kill him. He was a classic example of being able to be a ramrod that could charge straight forward. However, he ultimately didn't end well when he entered a dimensional zone. Therefore, Zhou would always firmly believe that knowing one's enemy was the key to winning all battles. It was best if he didn't take any risks. After all, he only had one life. While Zhou Wen was pondering over it, Zheng Tianlun had already pressed his doorbell. It looks like the people from the bureau have arrived. Zhou Wen had guessed what was going on. After some thought, he went down and opened the door. He wanted to find out from Zheng Tianlun about the person whom the bureau had sent. Zheng Tianlun, why are you looking for me? Zhou Wen asked Zheng Tianlun who was outside. I have an important matter to discuss with you. Can I come in? Zheng Tianlun asked carefully. Come on in. Zhou Wen kept a high alert the entire time. He didn't get too close to Zheng Tianlun, maintaining a certain distance. To his surprise, Zheng Tianlun slammed the door shut after entering and plopped to his knees. Zhou Wen, please save me. If you don't save me, I'm dead. What are you doing? Zhou Wen frowned slightly. Zheng Tianlun said, The night before yesterday, I applied for leave and went home. On the way, I bumped into a strange middle-aged man. Zheng Tianlun recounted what had happened that night. No matter how he thought about it, he knew it was impossible to get Zhou Wen's hair by force. He knew that Zhou Wen was from the Yan family, so he couldn't afford to offend him, nor could he use force. Zhou Wen, I'm begging you save me. I really don't want to die. Zheng Tianlun cowed out as he spoke. Zhou Wen reached out to stop Zheng Tianlun. Although he didn't have a good impression of Zheng Tianlun, he didn't have any feud with him either. He felt uneasy hearing the pleading. However, just as his hand touched Zheng Tianlun's hand, Zheng Tianlun's flesh and bones exploded and his arms turned into a bloody mist. Chapter 403 Battling Jack The two never expected such a turn of events. No matter how fast Zhou Wen retreated, his hand was quickly stained by the blood mist as Zheng Tianlun fell to the ground and screamed. In a forest in the suburbs, Jack revealed a mocking smile. How could he place his hopes on others? He made Zheng Tianlun firmly believe that he needed Zhou Wen's hair. Only then would Zheng Tianlun be able to fool Zhou when because even Zheng Tianlun himself believed that it was real. Others wouldn't be able to see through the flaws. Oh pal, it's been a while since we got some exercise. It's time to come out and get some exercise. As Jack spoke, a sanguine aura on him surged and condensed into a blood-colored clown life soul. The blood-colored clown life soul came in front of Jack. Jack pulled out the strand of Zheng Tianlun's hair from the puppet and gave it to the clown life soul. The clown life soul reached out to grab the hair and it immediately burned with a blood-colored flame and quickly burnt to ashes. It transformed into a sanguine beam that fused into the clown's body. By using your blood as the medium, I'll use the soul as a guide, blood hex clown. Use your strength to make those ignorant people tremble in grief once again. Jack looked excitedly at the blood hex clown and growled. A sanguine glint flashed in the eyes of the blood hex clown as a demonic blood-colored flame rose over its body. In his dorm, Cho Wen looked at the blood on his hand and tried to shake it off, but it was already too late. He felt his ears heat up before a force entered his body from his palm and spread through his entire body. Large amounts of primordial energy surged into his body. It was massive, almost comparable to the lightning bolt he had endured at Dragon Gate Grotto. Zhou Wen immediately realized that truth listener's evil nullification life soul had taken effect, 
resolving the strange power of the assailant. I was still too careless. Zhou Wen reflected over his faults, but after some thought, he realized that he was up against someone bent on getting him. No matter how prepared he was, it was inevitable for him to miss out certain things. The best way was to eliminate the enemy first to truly feel worry-free. But now, he didn't even know where his opponent was. When he looked at Zheng Tianluan, who had his arms torn apart, Zhou Wen felt a chill run down his spine. It was Zheng Tianluan this time, someone he didn't care too much about. But what if the next person was Li Xian, Wang Lu, or the rest? Could he still remain so indifferent? Zhou Wen called the school's emergency number and called for a doctor to handle Zheng Tianluan. Jack stared at the blood hex clown in front of him. Seeing the sanguine light in its eyes glow with greater intensity, he believed that the blood hex's power was in control of Zhou Wen. He ordered, Bring him here! Zhou Wen felt an endless stream of primordial energy surge into his body, preventing him from being able to accommodate it as large amounts of primordial energy seeped out of his body. Suddenly, the truth listener earring seemed to be pulled by something as it floated up and pointed in one direction. Zhou Wen's heart stirred as he walked outside. The moment he opened the door, he saw in Jing and Wang Lu standing outside, about to knock on the door. Zheng Tianlun's screams had alerted them, which was why they had come over to take a look. Help me look after him. Don't let him die. I have to make a trip. Zhou Wen pointed at Zheng Tianlun, who was screaming inside before walking out. He didn't pity Zheng Tianlun, but if Zheng Tianlun really died in his dormitory room, he would probably have a hard time explaining himself. Without any evidence, the college would only believe that he had killed Zheng Tianlun. Regardless of Jing's and Wang Lu's expressions, Zhou Wen headed straight for the direction the earring had pointed. After leaving the school, Zhou Wen headed west according to the earring. Soon, he left the city and entered the suburbs. A forest appeared in front of Zhou Wen, and the heat from the truth listener earring grew stronger. It made Zhou Wen realize that he was approaching his target. After slowing down his speed, Zhou Wen carefully entered the forest. Truth listener earring's hearing was put to its greatest use. Everything within a hundred meters around him projected into an image in his mind thanks to his hearing. Not long after entering the forest, the truth listener earring's ability allowed him to see a man standing in the forest. In front of him floated a blood-colored clown like life's soul. Just as Zheng Tianlun had said, the man was wearing a shirt and suit with a unique hat on his head. He had a standard Caucasian look with blue eyes and carved facial features. His hair was a rare silver color. His skin was white to begin with, and with him looking a little pale, it looked like there was no blood in him. It was as if his face had been wiped with white powder. When Zhou Wen sensed Jack, Jack also sensed something. He frowned and looked in Zhou Wen's direction. At the same time, surprise flashed in his eyes. Did the bureau only send you here? Zhou Wen gripped the bamboo blade tightly as he walked towards Jack. At the same time, he used Truth Listener's ability to constantly sweep his surroundings to make sure that there were no ambushes. You are actually immune to the Blood Hex's control. Furthermore, you were able to find me. Interesting. Jack stared at Zhou Wen as he sized him up. His eyes were shimmering, as though he was looking at some interesting toy. You won't find it interesting very soon. Zhou Wen had already confirmed that there weren't any ambushes around him. He instantly unsheathed his bamboo blade and appeared in front of Jack instantaneously, as though he had teleported. With transcended flying immortal, he slashed at Jack's body with unparalleled speed. Jack clearly hadn't expected Zhou Wen to be that fast. Such strength was completely different from the information Shinyuchi had given him. He was no ordinary student at the legendary stage. To be at the epic stage at such a young age? Jack's gaze froze slightly. Zhou Wen's saber was simply too fast. Clearly Jack was weaker when it came to combat. Perhaps due to his long imprisonment and him not having fully recovered, he couldn't dodge in time. The black gas in his hand struck at the bamboo blade, but the black gas was directly sliced apart by the bamboo blade. Jack's palm was sliced off. The bamboo blade did not stop and slashed right into Jack's body. With a ripping sound, Zhou Wen realized that the bamboo blade had only sliced through Jack's jacket. He was gone. All that was left was the slightly trembling hand on the ground. Zhou Wen scanned his surroundings and pushed the truth listener earring to its limits. It reflected everything around him in his mind, but he didn't see any traces of Jack. Just as Zhou Wen was searching for Jack, he suddenly felt that something was amiss. An ant had crawled over at his feet. There were many ants in the forest, but this ant was somewhat odd. It had actually crawled straight in front of Zhou Wen's feet. Zhou Wen's heart stirred as he rapidly retreated. The ant's tiny body exploded like a bomb, blasting apart the ground and trees nearby, forming a huge crater that was more than two meters in diameter. Chapter 404 Stalemate Zhou Wen flew back and touched a leaf that exploded like a grenade. Fortunately, he was wearing the mutated stone chi armor. He charged out the instant the leaf exploded using ghost steps, 
suffering minimal damage from the explosion. Even so, the mutated stone cheese armor was blackened from the blast. Jowen was somewhat astonished. This person's ability was so bizarre that he could actually turn an ant and a leaf into his weapons. It was impossible to guard against. The entire forest was filled with insects, leaves, and vegetation. Jowen didn't know which insects or leaves would become a bomb. Even the grass on the ground could become a landmine. Jowen's body stood in midair. He used truth listeners' hearing and his eyes to search for Jack. If he couldn't find him, no amount of strength was useful. However, Jowen couldn't find any traces of Jack within the range of his senses. The entire forest only had the rustling sounds of leaves when the wind blew and the chirping of insects. Jowen hovered in the air, using the god fiend flying ability to prevent himself from touching anything. Then, he slowly moved in the air, in search of Jack's possible hiding locations. When insects, birds, or leaves approached him, he would preemptively slice them apart. However, there weren't any further explosions. Jowen sensed that Jack was still there. He hadn't left. The atmosphere in the woods felt very odd. Boom! Jowen suddenly heard an explosion. However, the explosion didn't happen from his body. Instead, it happened above a large nearby tree. A bug exploded from the crown of a tree, scattering the leaves and branches everywhere. Even a wasp hive that was nestled in the tree flew out. Jowen looked at the leaves and wasps that filled the sky as though he was watching a flurry of bombs. He only had one thought in mind. He absolutely couldn't let them touch him. With ghost steps and dragon gate flying immortal skill, Zhou Wen's figure rapidly flashed. The leaves and wasps that filled the sky failed to touch him. Boom! 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 Several trees were blasted apart as the sky filled with leaves and critters. Zhou Wen kept flying as his body twisted and turned, passing through the leaves like a ghost. He didn't touch the leaves, but the nearby leaves automatically exploded as though the entire forest had turned into an explosive warehouse. Anything that approached Sho Wen could explode. Sho Wen was caught off guard. All he could do was dash out of the forest and appear in the sky above. He looked down at the forest from above and observed everything that was happening. Truth listener's power had already presented everything that was happening in the forest to his brain. No activity could escape his ears. Sho Wen was certain that the person was still in the area, but he had used some unknown method to hide. As long as he carefully searched, he could definitely find him. This was the most terrifying opponent of the same level Zhou Wen had ever encountered since he began cultivating. Although he had fought others before, the strongest was the mutated Stone Chi and Mei. No matter how powerful they were, they weren't as diabolical and terrifying as this person. Previously, although Yin Jun was also diabolical and terrifying, he wasn't good at combat. He was more like a crazy scientist, but this person was like a killing machine. Although his combat ability wasn't very strong, his abilities and means allowed him to kill someone without doing the dirty work. Zhou Wen moved back and forth in the air as he swept the nearby trees several times, but failed to find any traces of Jack. That bastard Shinyuchi. Is this his idea of an ordinary student? Jack cursed inwardly as well. Before he was locked up, he had seen many experts. Only a handful were as terrifying as Zhou Wen. He really couldn't believe that Zhou Wen was only a student. Jack didn't dare move. Although he had already made use of sorcery to disguise himself as a part of the forest, he could sense that showing any signs of abnormality would be detected by the aerial Zhou Wen. He didn't know how Zhou Wen did it, but he knew that he was using a method to constantly scan the forest situation. He had already felt something similar to a vision sweep over him several times. Jack closed his eyes, unwilling to let his gaze attract Zhou Wen's attention. However, his heart was burning with zeal. He loved killing people. The more powerful someone was, the more excited he became. At that moment, his blood was about to boil. He yearned to kill Zhou Wen immediately to satisfy his inner desires. As for Shinyuchi's order to bring Zhou Wen back alive, Jack had completely forgotten about it. He was like a venomous snake that was seeking an opportunity. Once the prey showed weakness, he would deliver the most lethal strike. I don't believe that you can keep flying in the air. Jack waited patiently for the opportunity. One of them was in the air while the other was in the forest. They were in a stalemate. Zhou Wen couldn't find Jack's hiding spot and it wasn't convenient for him to attack the woods. That would only give Jack a chance. As time passed, Jack realized that Zhou Wen didn't show any signs of descending despite him floating in midair. His desire to kill Zhou Wen intensified. Half a day passed, and the sky gradually darkened. Here's my chance. As he felt the sky grow darker, Jack knew that his chance was here. The night was his home ground. Although he couldn't find Jack's location, Zhou Wen continued waiting patiently. He was waiting for Jack to strike. As long as he made a move, it was impossible for him to perfectly conceal himself. This gave him a chance of finding his true body. Zhou Wen really didn't wish to let such a terrifying figure escape. 
Otherwise, he didn't know who would be the next victim. When the sun set and the moon silently crawled up, Jowen continued floating in the air, waiting for Jack to reveal an opening. Suddenly, Jowen felt an abnormality in the woods. A snake was rapidly darting under the leaves. It was normal for snakes to move around in the grass, but Jowen found something was amiss with the snake. It seemed to have a clear goal. It was heading deep into the forest. Jowen summoned his overlord sword and slashed out. The sword beam instantly tore through the forest and chopped down a tree. At the same time, he split the snake into two. Boom! The snake exploded, creating a huge pit in the vicinity. But on the other side, Jack's body emerged from a cave made of tree root that was the size of a fist. He dashed into the forest like a black shadow. However, the direction he headed in wasn't directed at the aerial Jowen, nor was it deep in the woods. Jowen quickly chased after him, but he saw Jack stop and reveal his snow-white teeth. He gave Joe one a sinister smile. Chapter 405 It couldn't be him. While smiling sinisterly at Joe one, Jack threw out a blood-colored dagger. However, the dagger wasn't thrown at Joe one, but at the ground. Joe one immediately felt that something was amiss. He saw the blood-colored dagger fly over and immediately realized the problem. His shadow. Jack wasn't attacking him, but his shadow that had been projected by the moonlight. It was too late to dodge. He didn't have the time to think further. Joe Wen's first reaction was to summon his inverse ancient sovereign life soul. The moment the inverse ancient sovereign life soul was summoned, the blood-colored dagger had nailed Joe Wen's shadow. However, due to the inverse ancient sovereign's humanoid sun life soul appearing, the strong rays of light scattered his shadow. Most of the shadows were redirected in another direction. The shadow cast by the moon was almost invisibly faint. His heart palpitated slightly, but he didn't feel any damage. Like a ghost, Joe Wen appeared in front of Jack and slashed his overlord sword and bamboo blade at him. Jack ducked, causing overlord sword to miss. However, bamboo blade slashed across his waist. Unfortunately, all that was sliced apart was Jack's clothes. He was nowhere to be seen. Boom! 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 Jack's clothes exploded in front of Joe Wen, forcing him to retreat quickly. He retreated to the air once more and switched back to his godfiend life providence. The atmosphere became tense again. Both of them knew that they had met a terrifying opponent. They waited for each other to make the first move, waiting for the moment the other party revealed a flaw. Joe Wen wasn't in a rush. He didn't believe that the other party could keep hiding without eating or drinking. He flew into the air and grabbed a random piece of pancake and a can of coke from the chaos bead. He even brought out some spring onion to go with the pancake. He ate while monitoring the situation in the forest. That punk is quite a figure. He's so tasteless. Is that even called food? Jack couldn't stand Joe Wen's eating preferences, but he couldn't help but feel hungry. The fragrance of red wine and roasted meat surfaced in his mind. Jack gulped his saliva and forced himself to stop thinking. Just like that, he continued the stalemate with Joe when while silently seeking out an opportunity. It was not feasible to use Lunar Shadow Sorcery to control Joe Wen, so Jack had to think of other solutions. As Jack endured the hardship below, Joe Wen ate his fill in the sky. At first, he only filled his stomach. Later, he took out a vacuum-packed duck head and beer and sat down in the air, having a feast. This punk's taste is terrible. Is that what a human will eat? Jack wished he could throw the food that Joe Wen was eating into a trash can, but he held back. Jack glanced at where Joe Wen's shadow was, but he didn't dare head over. Although Joe Wen appeared to be eating and drinking on the surface, he believed that Joe Wen's sword beam would definitely slash at him the moment he made any abnormal movements. He was well aware of the prowess of Joe Wen's sword beam. Although it was a little lacking compared to a few sword experts he knew, his sword beam held some special attributes to it. It had to be extraordinary, considering how he could sever his hand. After Joe Wen had his fill, he said to the forest, You won't be able to escape no matter what. Why don't you come out and have a chat? If you can provide enough information that satisfies me, I might spare your life. Jack continued lurking and ignored Joe when as though he hadn't heard him. Your ability is so outstanding that I believe you have some status in the bureau. Why risk your life? Zhou Wen continued probing. However, no one answered him. Suddenly, Zhou Wen realized that someone was approaching the forest. The person was riding a gray wolf with an astonishing speed as he quickly approached the forest. Zhou Wen took a careful look and realized that it was Nsheng. Ah Sheng, don't enter the forest. Zhou Wen shouted at the distant Nsheng from Adair, but it was already too late. The gray wolf Nsheng was sitting on was too fast as it rushed into the forest. Boom! Boom! Zhou Wen immediately saw an explosion in the woods, as leaves exploded like a bomb. The blown up trees snapped and mud flew. It was a mess. Zhou Wen was feeling worried when he saw Ah Sheng rush out of the dust. 
apart from his clothes being a little tattered and looking quite sorry, he didn't look injured. Sorcery! Life blast! Who could it be from the West District? Ashin glared at the woods and asked. No one answered. The forest was still silent, with only a few critters fleeing for their lives. Seeing no one reply, and Shun looked at Zhou Wen and asked. Young Master One, are you alright? I'm fine. He refuses to come out. I've been waiting for him here so that he can't escape. Zhou Wen said. You have fought him before, right? Describe his looks and abilities, said Ensheng. Zhou Wen recounted Jack's looks and abilities to Ensheng. While Ensheng wore an extremely odd expression, he finally couldn't help but exclaim when he heard Zhou Wen mention the blood-colored clown life soul. Blood Hex Clown. Could it be that psychopath from the West District? It can't be wrong. It's definitely Jack. Other than Jack, no one else has the ability to use Blood Hex Clown, Lunar Shadow Sorcery, and Life Blast. He seems very famous? Joan asked. Of course he's famous. A few decades ago, the name, Jack, sent shockwaves through the entire league. He committed more sins than Jing Dao Xian. At least Jing Dao Xian only killed people depending on his mood. But Jack kills people because he likes to kill people. An entire city's people were once cursed to death by him. Back then, many of the league's top-notch epic experts died in order to arrest him. He should be imprisoned. Could it be? And Shung immediately realized that the Bureau had released the psychopath, Jack, in order to capture Zhou Wen. However, upon further thought, and Shung felt that something was amiss. He felt that it couldn't be Jack. If it was Jack, how could he have been stopped by Zhou Wen? The Bureau is truly unscrupulous. To think they would dare release a devil like Jack just to capture me? Zhou Wen frowned slightly. If not for his special abilities, and with the help of a mythical companion beast, he would have died at Jack's hands. In fact, Zhou Wen should be glad that he encountered Jack who had been imprisoned for decades. Most of his companion beasts had died in battle before his imprisonment. While fighting Zhou Wen, he mainly relied on the perfect blood hex life soul and primordial energy skills. If his previous companion beasts were present, he would have been even more terrifying. Chapter 406 Blood Hex Chapter 406 Blood Hex Jack lurked in the grass, alarmed. He had been imprisoned for more than 20 years. Were young adults these days so powerful? Back in his day, he could kill young adults in their 20s, such as in Shung, without wasting too much effort. However, between the two young adults that he met today, Zhou Wen had forced him to hide in the darkness while in Shung, who appeared a little older, maybe in his mid-20s, but definitely not in his 30s, had managed to escape the life blast that he had set up. This made him suspect that the League had experienced an explosive growth over the past few decades. However, from his journey here, he believed that humans might have improved, but they shouldn't be that powerful. Jack lived up to his name. The thought of escaping didn't arise just because of Zhou Wen and Ensheng's strength. The killing intent in his heart burned even more. If my previous companion beasts were still around, killing them would be much simpler. Unfortunately, I'll have to think of another solution now. Jack's mind raced, as he thought about how to kill Zhou Wen and Ensheng. He had no intention of escaping. Perhaps, even Shen Yuchi wouldn't have expected that a great devil like Jack would have to go through so much difficulty to capture a university student. Back when Jack was pursued by the Bureau, and in what seemed like an inescapable net, he had even killed more than 20 epic inspectors. Jack even infiltrated Holy City while being pursued, a showcase of his boldness. He abducted the son of the previous Director General of the Special Inspector Bureau and killed him in front of the experts chasing him. Shinyuchi had made a deal with Jack because he wanted to put things right once and for all. He hoped that Jack could capture Zhou Wen without anyone noticing, but little did he expect Jack to end up in a predicament. He swept his glance across the forest, and a vicious glint flashed across Jack's eyes as he exploded the life blast he had set up. Rumble. The leaves exploded in the forest like bombs. In a region spanning a few hundred meters, there were explosive booms and destroyed trees everywhere. A large group of birds and wild beasts fled in all directions, and the forest was thrown into pandemonium. No good. He wants to escape. Truth Listener's range was only about a hundred meters. The explosions had already exceeded the distance that Truth Listener could monitor. There were all sorts of creatures fleeing in the forest. If Jack were to be among them, it would be impossible to find him. Joan had no choice but to fly in the sky and constantly search with Truth Listener's powers, hoping to find something abnormal. Suddenly, Zhou Wen saw a black shadow escape rapidly under the moonlight. Although the moonlight was bright, there were trees sheltering the area. Shadows covered the area below as the black shadow rapidly slunk through the shadows. Zhou Wen's truth listener couldn't hear it. It just so happened that his eyes accidentally swept across the spot where the moonlight scattered, allowing him to see it by chance. Zhou Wen immediately recalled that the other party had previously wanted to pin his shadow. 
Clearly, he was proficient in shadow techniques, and now, he was escaping using shadows. It would be difficult to find him if he escaped successfully. There was still a chance of finding his true body next time, but even so, Zhou Wen himself wasn't confident. With no mercy in his heart, Zhou Wen switched to the ancient sovereign life soul, letting it fuse with him. His entire body emitted a glow as he rushed into the forest like a god of light in pursuit of the shadow. Don't chase after him! And Sheng loudly warned Zhou Wen, but he saw Zhou Wen charge in without stopping. All he could do was rush in as well. The ancient sovereign life soul brought Zhou Wen powerful vital essence, one that emitted light and heat as he lit up the dark forest. Tree leaves fell on Zhou Wen. With one hand holding the overlord's sword and the other holding the bamboo blade, he slashed out a sword and saber beam, splitting all the leaves that came close to him. However, when he stepped onto the grass on the ground, the grass suddenly exploded. Thankfully, Zhou Wen was wearing the mutated stone chi armor. Resisting the blast, he leaped up and tapped his feet on the trunk before continuing his pursuit of the shadow. Zhou Wen didn't dare land on the ground as he used the trees to engage in pursuit. His glow illuminated the forest. Under the brilliance, he could clearly see a shadow moving quickly on the ground without making a single sound. Truth listener couldn't hear it either. He slashed out Fong Wheel's sword flash with the overlord's sword, but the shadow rapidly flashed. It dodged the sword beam and circled around in a bid to escape in another direction. Zhou Wen chased the shadow as he kept slashing out sword beams, but the shadow dodged Zhou Wen sword beams again and again. It was like a ghost, making Zhou Wen almost believe that it was really just a shadow. However, seeing that the shadow was constantly dodging the sword light, and that it wouldn't fade under the light he emitted, he knew that it wasn't a real shadow. To be able to use a shadow escape technique to such a degree, and use a large area of life blast, could this person really be Jack? And Shung rushed into the forest, and stood on a tree branch. When he saw Zhou Wen chasing the shadow, he was alarmed and puzzled. He had heard many legends about Jack in the past. All the different kinds of evil and powerful primordial energy skills at his disposal made him extremely unpredictable. He was capable of killing people in an invisible manner. This legendary person was actually suppressed by Zhou Wen, forcing him to reevaluate Zhou Wen's strength. Young Master Wen might end up being a second overseer in the future, thought in Sheng. He had watched Zhou Wen develop his strength, but even he was astonished at such a growth rate. Just as Zhou Wen cornered the shadow with nowhere for it to escape, Jack revealed his body. Jack stood there, his blood hex clown life soul in front of him, as he withstood the fall wheel sword flash with both hands. Boom! The blood hex clown and Jack behind it were sent flying, as they slammed into an old tree. Blood immediately spurted out from Jack's mouth. Zhou Wen wasn't willing to give him a chance. The moment his feet landed on the ground, he exerted strength with all his might, ready to charge forward and kill Jack on the spot. However, just as his foot touched the ground, he felt his ankle tighten. A terrifying force tugged at him, almost causing him to fall to the ground. Zhou Wen looked down and realized that the jack's severed hand was grabbing his ankle. Sanguine aura surged from the severed hand arm as it clutched tightly at his ankle. The sanguine aura also surged up and quickly spread across his leg as though a blood pattern talisman had been drawn on the stone armor. No good! And Sheng wanted to rush over, but when he saw Zhou Wen's expression and gaze, instead of rushing over immediately, he stopped in his tracks. And Sheng had seen similar looks and expressions many times. It was the look and expression that a particular overseer he knew well had when it was time to reel in the net he had carefully arranged. Jack suppressed the excitement in his heart as he stood up. He licked the blood on his lips and looked at Zhou Wen with burning eyes. You should feel honored to be the first person I, Jack, have killed in 27 years. Chapter 407 Slaying Following Jack's words, the blood hex clown beside him emitted blood-colored light. The blood hex clown levitated, its hand seemingly praying to Buddha while it seemed to chant something. As the chanting sounded, the blood hex clown sanguine halo intensified. It actually turned into blood-colored incantations that revolved around its body. As for the palm gripping Zhou Wen's ankle, it exploded from the blood hex clown's blood hex. The strange blood-colored incantation patterns crept onto Zhou Wen's stone armor, as though they were trying to wrap him in a net formed of blood-colored incantations. In that case, you should feel more honored than me. Zhou Wen said to Jack without showing any signs of panic despite being trapped by the blood incantation. Jack felt a little uneasy as he stared at Zhou Wen and asked, Why? It's because you will be killed by me. You have lived for so many years. This should be the first time you have been killed, right? Zhou Wen said. Is that so? Then I'm really looking forward to it. Jack felt that something was amiss, but with the arrow already strung, he had to release it. However, the unease made him activate it ahead of time. He didn't wait for the blood hex clown to finish the incantation. 
a red glow flashed from the blood hex clown's body as it flashed like police sirens. The blood hex clown's body suddenly exploded the next second. With the self-detonation of the blood hex clown, the blood incantation on Joe Wynn's body, and the severed hand exploded. It was an internecine curse. Bang! A blood-colored blast of light rose from Joe Wynn's body as everything almost 20 meters in diameter was destroyed by it. Impossible! Jack stared at the empty area behind the blood explosion and saw Joe Wynn still flowing in holy light. He stood there like a god of light, completely unharmed. Jack completely couldn't believe his eyes. It was the evil self-destruct skill that the blood hex clown had acquired only after it advanced to a perfect body. The power of its self-detonation was enough to injure even a mythical creature. However, it would take a long time before the blood hex clown life soul would recover from its self-destruction. Jack seldom used it even before he was locked up. Being cornered today, he used this power, but he never expected that it would fail to injure Zhou when at all. How could he remain composed? However, he was ultimately a person with an iron will. When he realized that something was wrong, he phased away into a shadow in a bid to escape without any hesitation. Are you done playing? It's my turn now, right? With the overlord sword in hand, Zhou Wen's sun like radiance gradually vanished. It was replaced by a mysterious aura. Unlike the vital radiance from before, Zhou Wen didn't leak any primordial energy as he seemed to meld into the void. Double life souls. And Shun was pleasantly surprised. Double life souls were extremely rare. This was because primordial energy arts could easily produce conflicts. Typically, an ordinary person could only cultivate one. Otherwise, it was very possible that the conflict between primordial energy arts would cause damage to the body, especially when advancing. Such sudden conflicting impulses happened suddenly. It was especially so when life providences between the primordial energy arts clashed. Death was almost certain. Needless to say, any conflict in life souls would probably lead to a situation worse than death. And Shang knew a person who cultivated dual primordial energy arts and condensed two life souls. That person had peerless talent, and with immense perseverance, he condensed two life souls of two different primordial energy arts. He originally thought that he was fine, but afterward, he realized that he could only control his body in the day. Once he fell asleep, his life soul would occupy his body and do many crazy things that he didn't even know about. Eventually, he went mad and was sent to a mental hospital. The fact that Joe Wen was able to have double life souls proved that his talent was indeed as excellent as the former principal had said. However, and Shun was worried that the double life souls would harm Zhou Wen. Having double life souls exacerbated Zhou Wen's advancement to the mythical stage. There was already no clear advancement path, but now he had added an obstacle for himself. This made and Sheng very worried. The surprise was both worrisome and pleasant. Zhou Wen switched his life providence to Godfiend, and the lost country ring appeared on his finger. Zhou Wen remained suspended in midair as he looked at the escaping Jack in shadow form, having no intention of pursuing him. All he did was touch the lost country ring on his finger. A strange glint flashed in the eyes of the ring's ghost face. It was as if a supernatural being had opened its eyes. Furthermore, the light gradually spread outwards, causing the originally simple, ancient ring to have incantations engraved on it. Boom! 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 Jack fled in a frenzy, but when he charged through the woods and hit the sword marks that Joe Wen had delivered previously, sword flashes burst out from the sword marks. Jack ran so quickly and anxiously that he repeatedly triggered countless sword marks. Rays of sword flashes stabbed into his body and exploded, instantly blasting Jack out of his shadow form. Covered in blood, Jack suffered wounds everywhere thanks to the sword flashes. He fell to the ground, coughing blood non-stop. Jack stared at Joe when and swallowed a mouthful of blood. He asked in a hoarse voice, You know how Hex spells as well? No, but I have to thank you for giving me some inspiration. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't have thought of using my life soul in this manner. Zhou Wen wasn't lying. Jack's combat method inspired Zhou Wen. It allowed him to combine the spatial and dimensional knowledge he had acquired recently and finally figured out a way to use the Lost Country. It wasn't as simple and crude as using it for teleportation. Lost Country's ability to change spatial trajectories wasn't limited to just teleportation. Jack looked at Zhou Wen with a complicated expression. Although he was a genius, he had only just advanced to the legendary stage at Zhou Wen's age. He was far inferior to the present Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate at all as he slashed out the demonic astral wheel. He planned on slaying the heavily injured Jack, unwilling to give him any chance. Jack was no longer able to dodge, but there was no trace of fear on his face. Instead, his eyes were scorching hot. This is amazing! This world is amazing! There should be plenty of strong fellows like you among humans, right? It's really thrilling! Jack muttered to himself in fervor. 
Zhou Wen ignored him, as he cleaved apart Jack's body with the Overlord sword. Fresh blood spewed out, as Jack was split into two on the spot. However, when Jack's body landed, Zhou Wen was shocked to see it transform into a palm-sized doll that had been sliced into two. The doll even spoke despite being sliced in half. Zhou Wen, you really excite me. To me, you're a top-notch food ingredient. I'll definitely kill you and make your flesh into a top-notch delicacy. Before that, please do protect your body and prevent anyone from tainting this priceless ingredient. Chapter 408 in Shung's Suggestion In a cave, a pale-faced Jack spat out a mouthful of blood. His face flushed abnormally red. He had used a puppet avatar hex to battle Zhou Wen. Although the one killed was only a puppet avatar, and not his main body, the death of his avatar dealt him some severe injuries. Furthermore, the blood hex clown life soul had really self-destructed. It was a very serious blow to him. Although I can't wait to eat delicacies, I still need to get some companion beasts first. Otherwise, I might really not be his match. Jack wiped the blood from his mouth as he wondered how he could obtain a companion beast. He naturally did not fancy typical companion beasts. With his present situation, he needed plenty of time to obtain high-level companion beasts. Since those people from the League want me to do their bidding, they should pay for it. A look of mockery flashed in Jack's eyes. If he had considered taking Zhou Wen to the Bureau to exchange for true freedom, he no longer had that thought after today's battle. Jack walked out of the cave and headed for Luoyang City. He didn't have any communication devices like phones on him, so he needed to find a place to contact Shin Yuchi. He didn't plan on telling Shin Yuchi what happened today. Failure would only make them think that he was incompetent. Jack planned on telling Shin Yuchi that the unfamily was protecting Zhou Wen. He needed some companion beasts to bring him back. Others might only need a companion egg, but Jack was different. It would be fine even if it was a companion beast with an owner. He believed that Shin Yuchi wouldn't reject his request. After entering Luoyang City, Jack went to a shop to buy a phone and contacted Shin Yuchi. As he expected, although Shin Yuchi was a little reluctant, he still agreed to his request. He told him to wait two days for the companion beast to arrive. After the call, he wanted to throw the phone into the trash can, but he realized that there were several different types of bins. He didn't know what the different labels meant, so he casually threw it into one of them. Sir, you're mistaken. You just threw a phone, right? That's recyclable. You should place it in the bin for recyclable waste. A young girl said to Jack when she walked over. Jack looked at the girl coldly. When the girl and Jack looked at each other, she was stunned. Then, as if she had lost her soul, she walked toward him. Jack turned and walked into a remote area with the girl following in tow. She had no idea what she was doing. In an empty alley, Jack looked at the girl and reached his hand out towards her neck. However, before his fingers could touch it, he stopped. There was a strange expression on his face. Darn it. All I can think of right now is that top-notch delicious ingredient. How can I eat such trash? Jack looked at the girl with disgust before gritting his teeth and turning to leave. Not long after Jack left, the girl woke up and looked around blankly. She didn't know why she was here, nor did she know that she had just escaped a calamity. Joe went scan the entire forest and didn't discover any aura nor did he sense anything. He was certain that Jack's real body wasn't here. I failed to kill him despite going through all that trouble? Joe inside. He really wanted to kill Jack. He was too terrifying. And Shun walked over and said with a smile. You're just a student, yet you managed to force Jack to such a state. I'm afraid no one will believe you if you tell others. You should be proud of yourself. What's there to sigh about? Don't joke around. If I can't kill him this time, I don't know what terrifying means he will use to deal with the people around me next time. Joe Wen said. And Shung nodded and said, A devil like Jack will definitely not let this matter rest. It's indeed not appropriate for you to stay in school. You're fine on your own. With your capabilities, it won't be easy for Jack to touch you, but it's hard to say for the people around you. Zhou Wen felt a headache over this. He wasn't afraid for himself, but if the next time, the person standing in front of him was either Li Xian or Wang Lu, Zhou Wen couldn't imagine how he would feel if they suddenly exploded and splattered blood all over him. Young Master One, if you don't want to go to the unfamily, I have a suggestion. You can prevent the people around you from being hurt by Jack, and also stay safe. And Sheng said with narrowed eyes. What's the suggestion? Zhou Wen asked. Recently Chess Mountain hasn't been peaceful. There are frequent signs of breakout creatures. Deputy Governor Qin is building a special unit to guard Chess Mountain. Those people are not part of the army. Most of them are mercenary hunters, or cultivators, who have committed a crime. If you are interested, you can join this unit. Firstly, you can contribute to guarding Chess Mountain. Secondly, you can also avoid injury to the people around you. Thirdly, there are many experts in the camp, so it won't be easy for Jack to touch you. 
And Shun said, Aren't you afraid that I would be killed by a breakout creature at Chess Mountain? Zhou Wen looked at Shun gloomily. I really didn't dare to recommend you in the past. But after watching your battle with Jack, I don't think it makes a difference. And Shun said, How can it not make a difference? Zhou Wen felt that what Shun said made no sense. There was naturally no danger if he didn't go. And Shun smiled and said, With your present strength, if you were killed, then Chess Mountain's encampment would definitely be lost. So even if you don't go to Chess Mountain, the breakout creatures inside will still rush to Luoyang City. When the time comes, won't you still have to fight them? So what difference does it make? Why do I have to fight them? Can I run? Zhou Wen curled his lips. You can also run on Chess Mountain. Don't worry. You aren't a regular soldier. Just run. You won't be considered a deserter. And Shun said with a smile. Zhou Wen was hesitant. Life on campus was comfortable. If possible, he really didn't want to go to a dangerous place like Chess Mountain. And Shun noticed Zhou Wen's hesitation and continued. Tell me. If Luoyang City really falls in the future, it will definitely be the doing of dimensional creatures in Chess Mountain. If I were you, I would head to Chess Mountain to take a look. At least I would understand the creatures there ahead of time and know how to deal with them. It's much better than others who aren't prepared. Is Chess Mountain that terrifying? Zhou Wen asked in puzzlement when he saw how serious and Shun was. According to our research, the ruins of the ancient Xiaoga city might be in Chess Mountain. Don't you think it's terrifying? And Shun said sternly. Zhou Wen was slightly taken aback. In the history of the East District, there were two most famous battles between deities, monsters, immortals, saints, and humans. One was the battle between the Yellow Emperor and Chi Yu. The other was the famous Battle of Mai. The famous novel, Investiture of the Gods, had depicted this very battle. Chapter 409 Blood River Zhou Wen thought for a moment and felt that going to Chess Mountain didn't seem like a bad idea. He could also seek out the tiny palm symbol and try to download Chess Mountain. Just as Sheng had said, the more he knew about dimensional creatures, the higher the chances of him being able to survive after a large-scale breakout. While the dimensional creatures in Chess Mountain had yet to rush out in mass, this was the best chance to go to Chess Mountain. The situation would only worsen in the future, so it wouldn't be easy to head over again. Just treat it as going on a vacation and touring the area. It will not be too late to return to campus after Jack's matter is resolved. And Shun said, All right. When do we set off? Zhou Wen asked. To prevent any delays, let's do it now. And Shun looked at Zhou Wen and said, Don't tell me you still wish to return to the school and inform your schoolmates? Wouldn't that be equivalent to telling Jack who matters to you so that he can threaten you with them? Zhou Wen thought for a moment and agreed with him. He gave up on his plans to return to the school and followed in Shun to Chess Mountain. Chess Mountain was not far from Luoyang City, so it was not long before Zhou Wen arrived at the encampment within Sheng. As the situation at Chess Mountain was getting worse, Qin Wufu had been transferred here and was temporarily in charge of guarding Chess Mountain. After An Sheng introduced Zhou Wen to Qin Wufu, Qin Wufu sized up Zhou Wen strangely and said, Adjutant En, are you sure you want Zhou Wen to join the new unit? Yes. And Sheng answered affirmatively. It's not impossible, but you should know the unit's situation. The members are quite rowdy. Qin Wufu knew Zhou Wen and knew his relationship with the Yin family. That was why he was being tactful. Otherwise, he would have rejected Zhou Wen joining the unit. After all, Zhou Wen was only a student. The unit he had recently established was used to guard Chess Mountain, so all the members were at the epic stage. And Sheng noticed Qin Wufu's concerns, so he said, You know Zhou Wen's situation as well. The Bureau has been looking for trouble with him over Wang Ming Yuan's matter, so Madame got him here mainly because she wants you to take care of him. Actually, it's just for a few days. Madam has other plans, so he will be sent back very soon. Qin Wufu felt a headache coming on. Defending Chess Mountain was enough to give him a headache. Now, he had to take care of some nepotic fellow like Zhou Wen. However, Qin Wufu had to take into consideration Ou Yang Lan and reluctantly agreed to accept Zhou Wen. However, he rejected Zhou Wen's entry into the unit and told him to stay put for a few days. There was no need for him to do anything. Zhou Wen didn't mind. He had only planned on staying temporarily for a few days, returning once he resolved his jack problem. Therefore, Zhou Wen stayed at Chess Mountain's encampment. As he didn't have a job scope and wasn't a soldier, he didn't need to be on duty. No one cared about him, so it suited Zhou Wen's intentions. On the day Zhou Wen went to the Chess Mountain encampment, he headed out to take a look. There was fog in the direction of Chess Mountain, so he couldn't see anything clearly. It was as though a beast trapped in fog had opened its mouth. The river flowing out of Chess Mountain was as red as blood. And Sheng told him that it had started a few months ago. Which military unit are you from? Why are you wandering around here? As Zhou Wen walked slowly along the riverbank in search of the tiny palm symbol, 
an officer leading a patrol stopped him. Zhou Wen showed his identification card that Qin Wufu had given him. The officer took it and immediately felt respect for him. After a military salute, he handed the identification documents to Zhou Wen. So it's Dr. Little Zhou. What are you doing here? The job title Qin Wufu gave him was an intern doctor. Although he was only an intern doctor, doctors were highly respected in the military. No one could guarantee that they wouldn't be injured on the battlefield. They would definitely need doctors to help them. Most people who could become military doctors had the ability to heal. This ability was extremely rare and precious on the battlefield. Even an intern doctor was a rare species. This officer didn't know that Zhou Wen wasn't even an intern doctor. His identity was something Qin Wufu had temporarily given to him in order to make it easier for him to stay in the military camp. I just came to the river to take a look, Zhou Wen said casually. When the officer heard Zhou Wen, he imagined that Zhou Wen was investigating and collecting samples, so he sighed and said, Dr. Little Zhou, you have to investigate carefully. There's indeed a problem with the river's water. Recently, many of our soldiers have suffered red rashes. The more frequently they patrol the river, the worse the rashes become. Although they don't deal any major harm and one can recover after two days from staying away from the river, the itch is really tremendous. It's not like we can avoid patrolling. Although Zhou Wen wasn't a true doctor, he knew some basic knowledge. He asked casually, Have you tried using a filtered face mask? We've tried. It's completely useless. Even protective suits have been worn. It's still useless. As long as we get near this river, the rashes will still break out. The officer said. Zhou Wen really didn't know much. Just as he was thinking of how to send them away and continue his search for the tiny palm symbol, he saw a soldier running over from the mountain pass, panting. Why are you here? Shouldn't you be guarding the sentry post? The officer asked immediately when he saw the soldier. Lu Gui, he suddenly fainted. I can't wake him up no matter what I do. He has rashes all over him. The soldier said as he panted heavily. What? Quick, find a doctor. Ah, uh, Dr. Little Zhou is here. Follow us quickly. We need to take a look. The officer recalled that Zhou Wen was an intern doctor, so he pulled him towards the mountain pass. Zhou Wen's face turned livid. He was an imposter. How could he know any medical skills? It would be a wonder if he could figure out anything. However, he hadn't denied his identity as a doctor, so it wasn't appropriate for him to say anything now. He felt that he wouldn't say anything once he came to the soldier. He would immediately direct them to send the soldier to the medical team and be done with it. The sentry post was the closest outpost to Chess Mountain. Usually, there would be two soldiers standing guard and monitoring the situation nearby. When Zhou Wen arrived at the sentry post, he realized that this was indeed close to the Chess Mountain's pass. He could vaguely see the mountain pass's cliff. There was a soldier lying in the sentry post. Zhou Wen was shocked when he saw his face. His face was covered in rashes and parts were covered in blood. What's going on? Why are his rashes so serious? The officer glared at another soldier and asked. The soldier didn't dare hide anything as he revealed the truth. Originally, the rule was to take turns every three days, spending a maximum of three days per rotation. However, Lu Gui had some matters to attend to and had to swap shifts with his other comrades. Including today, he has been here for seven days. Chapter 410 Imposter Doctor The unit has made it clear that we can only stand guard for a maximum of three days. Furthermore, we are to stay away from the river for three subsequent days. He actually stayed here for seven days. Does he have a death wish? The officer looked at Joe when as he spoke. The soldier said with a bitter smile. Lu Gui said that he had a tenacious body and wasn't afraid. He was really fine in the beginning. He didn't get any rashes after manning it for five days like us. On the sixth day, he only had a tiny bout of rashes, but who knew that his rashes would suddenly break out today? His entire body is covered in rashes, and they are festering. Before I left, it wasn't as serious. Dr. Little Joe, what do we do? The officer asked Joe Wen. What else can we do? Send him back to the medical team quickly. Joe Wen was just about to say that when he saw the soldier's body convulse, wherever his skin was exposed, the red rashes rapidly decayed and his hands festered. It was unknown if the pain had jolted him awake. He began reaching out and clawing his face. With one swipe, his skin was torn, leaving behind a few marks on his face. His cheekbones could be seen, making him look extremely frightening. However, the soldier did not care and continued to claw himself with all his might. His face was mangled in a few scratches, but he refused to stop and continued to claw at it with all his might. Hold him down! The officer immediately ordered. The soldiers rushed forward and pressed his hand down to stop him from grabbing his face. It was unknown if Lu Gui was conscious or not. He didn't say a word as he struggled with all his might to claw his face. Lu Gui, do you have a death wish? 
the officer berated him loudly, but Lu Gui acted as though he didn't hear anything. He struggled with all his might, his feet kicking hard, as he rubbed his body across the ground. After he kicked off his boots and socks, people realized that his feet were covered in rashes. Suddenly, Lu Gui stopped struggling and blood seeped out from his mouth. He looked like he was about to die. Dr. Little Joe, what should we do? Hurry up and save old Lu. A soldier who was on good terms with Lu Gui nearly cried. Zhou Wen thought to himself, I'm not a real doctor. How would I know? He wanted them to send him to the medical team, but it was already too late by the looks of it. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and felt that this red rash could also be a poison. Perhaps Dr. Darkness's fight poison with poison would be useful. By now, Zhou Wen could only attempt a Hail Mary. He would rather have the soldier die in his hands than watch him die. Without any hesitation, he summoned Dr. Darkness to appear in companion form and use fight poison with poison as a syringe appeared in his hand. Hold him down properly. Don't let him move, Zhou Wen said to the soldiers. After all, he was not a real doctor. Administering injections was not his forte. Fortunately, if it was only administering a tranquilizer, he could still do it. The few soldiers held Lu Gui down tightly as Zhou Wen stabbed the syringe in and slightly pushed the plunger, injecting bits of poison into Lin Gui's body before stopping to watch his reaction. Dr. Darkness's poison was extremely potent. He reacted quickly after being injected with it. The blood that flowed out of Lu Gui's mouth had clearly decreased, but Zhou Wen didn't know if it was because he was about to die or if fight poison with poison was showing its effect. After waiting for a while longer, Lu Gui's rashes stopped festering. Lu Gui's convulsions also lessened in intensity. Seeing that the poison was effective, Zhou Wen injected a little more. Lu Gui's body convulsed even more, but the rashes on his body were dissipating. Zhou Wen knew that it was truly effective. It was normal for Lu Gui's body to convulse. It was unknown what kind of poison Dr. Darkness used, but the pain from having it injected into the body was something Zhou Wen had experienced before. It wasn't something an ordinary person could tolerate. However, this also meant that Lu Gui's condition was improving. Previously, he couldn't feel any pain. Zhou Wen didn't dare to inject too much poison. Seeing the improvement, he put away the syringe and used Dr. Darkness's light of penetration to look inside Lu Gui's body. He didn't discover any problems, nor did he discover what the source of the rashes was. Ah! It hurts! Lu Gui's eyes widened as he screamed in pain. His body struggled even harder. Dr. Little Zhou, what's going on? The officer and several soldiers looked at Zhou Wen, unsure of what was happening. His condition has improved. He's probably saved, but it's impossible to carry out any of the subsequent treatment here. Quickly send him to the medical team, Zhou Wen said. The officer hurriedly summoned an ox-shaped companion beast, which carried Lu Gui back to the encampment. Dr. Little Zhou, are you heading back with us? The officer asked Zhou Wen. I still have something on. I still have to take a look by the river. Go ahead. Zhou Wen didn't have any medical skills. It was useless even if he followed. However, since fight poison with poison had been effective in saving Lu Gui's life, the extent of his recovery depended on the true doctors. The officer was in a hurry to bring Lu Gui back, so he did not speak further and rushed back to the encampment. Zhou Wen continued walking in the direction of Chess Mountain, hoping to find the palm symbol. He didn't dare get too close to the Chess Mountain's mountain pass. The place was extremely unstable, and dimensional creatures could rush out at any time. Therefore, he only searched in the vicinity. However, there were no stone monuments or any human buildings by the river. There was no tiny palm symbol. As he approached Chess Mountain, the rocks in the mountain pass could be seen clearly. The rock on Chess Mountain was very unique. Most of it was black, but there were some rocks that were white in color. The contrast was obvious as if some white lines had been drawn on black cloth. The blood-colored river flowed out from the mouth of the mountain. If the color was any darker, it would really resemble blood. There's no tiny palm symbol? Zhou Wen was somewhat disappointed as he looked in the direction of Chess Mountain, afraid to head forward. A warning sign had already been erected in front of him, indicating that it would be dangerous to head any further. Zhou Wen held the mysterious phone and scanned the surroundings with the camera function. There wasn't a vibrational notification on his phone either. He didn't know if there really wasn't a tiny palm symbol or if his mysterious phone couldn't detect anything due to the proximity gap. I'll continue walking. If the mountain pass's wall doesn't have it, I'll return. Zhou Wen hesitated for a moment before deciding to take a walk forward to see if there was anything on the mountain pass's walls. With his present strength, as long as he didn't encounter a mythical creature, there shouldn't be too much danger. However, Zhou Wen was still very careful and didn't dare let his guard down. Strength wasn't absolute, and he wasn't omnipotent. If he encountered a dimensional creature he couldn't subdue, even if he were of the same level or higher it could still take his life. Chapter 411 The Little Flower on the Mountain 
Lu Su was reading some documents for her research when she suddenly received an emergency notice. She rushed over to take a look at the soldier's condition and could not help but frown. What happened to him? Dr. Lu, Lu Ke violated the rules. He stationed himself at the sentry post for seven days and turned into this. The officer said. He stationed himself at the sentry post for seven days straight? Does he not want his life anymore? Lu Su was slightly taken aback when she heard that. She went forward to carefully observe Lu Gui's injuries and asked in disbelief. He must have scratched himself, right? There's indeed some festering, but... The more she looked at it, the stranger she found it. Lu Gui's injuries seemed to have signs of rashes, but it was obvious that the rashes were no longer festering and there were signs of recovery. The situation wouldn't have been so if the rashes had really acted up. We happened to meet Dr. Little Zhou earlier on. Dr. Zhou injected some medicine into Lu Gui at the sentry post, improving his condition a little. He's much better now. The officer explained everything that had happened earlier. Dr. Little Zhou? Which Dr. Little Zhou? Lu Su found it unbelievable. After all her research, she had ultimately failed to find a way to treat the rashes. Once it acted up, death was a certainty. According to what they said, Lu Gui had been there for seven days without dying. That was testimony to his luck. The situation back then must have been the rashes acting up, quickly turning him into a pool of blood. According to their description, Lu Gui should already be a dead person. Even if she, Lu Su, had been present, there was no way she could have saved Lu Gui. However, the doctor they were talking about had only given one injection to significantly improve Lu Gui. She could no longer see any signs of the rashes, so she found it unbelievable. It's Dr. Zhou Wen. His identification document says that he's an intern. The officer replied. Lu Su ran through all the medical team's personnel through her mind, but they did not have such an intern doctor. There were indeed a few new interns this year, but none of them had the Zhou surname. Take him in for a checkup now. Lu Su let Lu Gui in. Lu Gui could already walk on his own, but his facial injuries were rather serious. Lu Su checked Lu Gui and treated his wounds. But this only served to surprise her more. Lu Gui's entire body was covered in festering rashes, which meant that the breakout was very severe. Lu Gui and company were probably not lying, but the rashes did not show any continual signs of decay. Instead, they were slowly improving. After Lu Su's checkup, Lu Gui had almost fully recovered from his rashes. Even if he didn't undergo any more treatment, he would recover in a few days. However, he needed to be treated for those festering wounds or his entire body would be covered with scars. Instead, the self-inflicted wounds were more serious. It would probably take him quite some time to treat them. Are you sure that the intern doctor you met is named Zhou Wen? Lu Su asked again. The officer answered with certainty. It's Dr. Zhou Wen, all right. I made sure. That's strange. Lu Su really wanted to meet Zhou Wen and ask him what he had injected into Lu Gui, but she couldn't recall having such a person in the medical team. When she returned to her office, Lu Su found the medical team's case files and saw that none of the intern doctors were named Zhou Wen. None of them had the Zhou surname. How strange. Could it be that they were really lucky to meet a deity? Lu Su was secretly puzzled. Zhou Wen was less than 200 meters from Chess Mountain's mountain pass. With his eyesight, he was able to see if there were any patterns on the mountain wall, so he didn't head forward again. Zhou Wen's gaze constantly sized up the mountain wall, and after a while, he failed to find the tiny palm symbol. Instead, he saw a strange flower. The flower was growing on the wall of Chess Mountain, and was only about 10 centimeters tall. The leaves were black, but the flowers were white. The contrasting colors resembled the rock colors of Chess Mountain. The small flower grew alone on the stone wall. There were no plants for hundreds of meters. There must be something wrong with things that happen out of the ordinary. Zhou Wen remembered that he had been taught in school that there was no lack of terrifying plants in dimensional zones. Perhaps the flower in front of him was a terrifying plant-type dimensional creature. Therefore, Zhou Wen's nerves immediately tensed up when he saw the flower. It wasn't because he was excited, but because he was wary. Plant-type powers were often rather special. Many animal-type dimensional creatures relied on brute force to achieve victory, but that wasn't something Zhou Wen was afraid of. However, most plant-type dimensional creatures didn't achieve victory through brute force. Using the knowledge he learned from school, he knew there were many flower-type dimensional creatures that killed with pollen. There were also some fungoid dimensional creatures that could give off tiny spores that could barely be seen with the naked eye. Through the respiratory tract or the gullet, or even pores, they could enter the body and parasitize humans. They treated the human body as nutrients and sucked the human to their deaths. Zhou Wen wore the truth listener earring and listened to the flow of the air, but he didn't find any tiny particles swirling over from the side of the flower. Only then did he feel relieved. Although he didn't know if the flower was a plant-type dimensional creature, 
Zhou Wen decided to stay far from it. There was nothing wrong with being careful. He didn't want to die here for no reason. He turned around and walked in another direction, hoping to stay away from the flower. However, just as Zhou Wen walked a few steps, he heard a voice from the flower. Can you hear me? It was a woman's voice. Although the sun hadn't set and the sky wasn't too dark, Zhou Wen was still alarmed. He turned to look at the direction of the voice and saw that there was neither human nor dimensional creature. There was only the flower growing on the mountain wall. Can you hear me? The flower sounded again. Strangely, the flower turned around and faced Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen shut his mouth and stared at the flower, but he slowly retreated. Zhou Wen didn't want to know why the strange flower could speak. He only hoped that the flower wouldn't cause any trouble for him. He wasn't sure if he could deal with it. Why do you want to leave? I just want to chat with you. Nothing else. The woman's voice came from within the flower again. Call me a fool if I believe you. Such lines often appear in movies and dramas. Many men say this to women to cheat them into getting a room, Zhou Wen thought to himself, but he still retreated without answering the flower. Zhou Wen had heard a story from his grandfather when he was young. He said that when walking in the middle of the night, one was not to answer or turn their head to look once they heard a stranger calling their name from behind, otherwise they would die. Chapter 412 The Flower's Powers 7 Steps If you take another 7 steps, you will die. If you don't believe me, you can continue walking. The flower's voice sounded again, dot a cold sweat broke out on Zhou Wen's forehead as he stood there, unsure if he should continue walking. Logically speaking, Truth Listener was able to nullify any evil powers, but there was no invincible power in this world. Zhou Wen still hadn't figured out what kind of evil powers Truth Listener could nullify. If the flower was just making an empty threat, Zhou Wen would be fine with leaving, but what if it was speaking the truth? Zhou Wen didn't dare gamble with his life. However, Zhou Wen wasn't willing to be frightened by the flower. Gritting his teeth, he continued retreating. One step, two steps, three steps. As he retreated, he looked at the flower on the mountain wall. The flower didn't make another sound. This only made Zhou Wen feel uneasy. For steps, five steps, six steps. Zhou Wen continued walking, but there was no reaction from the truth listener earring. Zhou Wen's heart drummed. Could it really be a hoax? Why isn't there any reaction at all? Despite having this in mind, he didn't dare to take the final step. That's right. Zhou Wen was indeed afraid of death, and there didn't seem to be a need for him to risk his life. Why aren't you walking? You have one more step to go. The flower finally spoke, but its tone was filled with mockery. We don't have any feud. Why are you making things difficult for me? If you lack fertilizer, I'll help you find it. If you lack water, I'll water you. How about that? Zhou Wen stood there and shouted at the flower on the mountain wall. Why would I want your water and fertilizer? The flower said coldly. From now on, answer the questions I ask you. If you satisfy me, I'll spare your life. Otherwise, I'll make you beg for death. Even if you die, I'll turn you into a candle. I can't stand being threatened by others. I'm leaving. What can you do about it? Zhou Wen said as he raised his foot. However, just as he raised his foot, he felt a wave of dizziness and almost fell to the ground. Alarmed, he stopped in his tracks, not daring to lift his foot to take the step. Damn it, how did this happen? Zhou Wen was appalled. He knew that the flower was speaking the truth. Why aren't you leaving? Continue walking. Where did your temper go? The flower teased. Zhou Wen thought to himself, there's no need to lose my life over a quarrel with a flower. Even truth listeners' evil nullification life soul is useless. I wonder what origins this flower has. You seem to be the only flower growing on the mountain wall. You must be very lonely and sad. I hate seeing others sad and suffer, so I'll chat with you. However, since it's a chat, it can't just be you asking questions. I should be able to ask you some questions too. Don't you agree? Zhou Wen bargained. The flower didn't refute him. Instead, it asked, What's your name? Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat. He remembered that in myths, there was a power capable of imprisoning people with a mere calling out of a name. He was momentarily unsure if he should answer. Why are you so wishy-washy? Just die, the flower said impatiently. My name is Zhou Wen. What's your name? Zhou Wen knew that it was useless even if he used a fake name. This was because the name was actually just a representation. From his mouth, no matter if it was real or fake, it represented himself. If the other party really had that ability, it would be effective even on a fake name. Call me the Darch. The flower paused before asking. Why are you here? Will you believe me if I say that I'm here as a tourist? Although Zhou Wen said that, he thought to himself, to think a flower wants to be called a Darch? Is it crazy? The flower chuckled. I believe you. Why not? Since you're here to travel, I'll do a good deed. I'll take you to Chess Mountain for a tour. 
With that said, the wall in which the flower was rooted in cracked. The cracks expanded slowly, causing Chess Mountain to shake slightly, as if the mountain was about to split open. There's no need to trouble you. I'm afraid of heights. I hate climbing mountains the most. I'll just watch the river scenery here. The beads of cold sweat on Joe Wynn's forehead increased a lot. The swaying mountain finally calmed down. The flower mocked. Are you really not coming in to take a look? There's really no need. Joe Wynn hurriedly waved his hand before changing the topic. Are there many dimensional creatures in Chess Mountain? Are there any mythical creatures? Of course, and there's plenty. Which would you like to see? I can get them to come out to meet you. The flower said with a smile. There's no need. I was just asking. Joe Wynn suspected that the flower was bluffing him with its inane claims. It was just a flower, and it grew on a mountain wall that had suffered the elements. However, its tone sounded like it was the monarch of Chess Mountain. This left him very suspicious. Are there currently many humans with strength like yours? The flower asked. There should be quite a number. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and felt that it wasn't a small number. During Jing Daoxian's era, not long after the dimensional storms, there were very few epic experts. Over the past few decades, epic experts were no longer as rare as they used to be. How many humans are there now? The flower continued asking. It shouldn't be more than 10 billion, I guess. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and replied. These weren't secrets, and there was nothing to hide. Then, people of your standard should number a few hundred million? The flower muttered. This? I don't think there's that many. Zhou Wen found it a little difficult to speak after hearing the flower's words. This was because the actual situation was too different from the flower's guesses. Although Zhou Wen didn't know how many epic experts there were in the Federation, he estimated that it was difficult to even reach six digits. It was already quite good to have tens of thousands. Tens of millions? The flower guessed again. A little fewer, Zhou Wen said helplessly. Just a few million? Are humans so weak now? There are so few people at your level? The flower said in a tone of disbelief. Something like that. I'm basically considered relatively weak. Zhou Wen couldn't tell the flower that it should reduce the number it guessed by a hundred times. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and asked. Are you very familiar with Chess Mountain? Have you seen a symbol here? It's a picture of a tiny palm. There might be something in the palm. Zhou Wen roughly described the tiny palm symbol. Since he couldn't leave, he might as well take the opportunity to find out more. Perhaps this flower really knew. There is indeed such a symbol on the top of Chess Mountain. I don't know who carved it. It irritates me. Why are you looking for it? The flower asked. Chapter 413 Climbing the Mountain Zhou Wen was overjoyed when he heard that there was the tiny palm symbol. However, when he thought of how it was at the top of Chess Mountain, a place he didn't dare head up, he couldn't help but turn sullen. I've seen similar symbols in other dimensional zones, but I don't know what the symbol means. Therefore, I've been studying them all this time, hoping to take a picture. By the way, do you know what the tiny palm symbol represents? Joe Wen asked half-truthfully. How would I know? I don't know who carved it out of boredom. It's easy if you want to see it. Once you reach the peak, you will naturally be able to see it, the flower said. Forget it. It's not necessary. Upon hearing that he was going to have to climb up the mountain, Joe Wen rejected it without even thinking. There were countless terrifying creatures in Chess Mountain. Who knew if he would be able to come out after climbing up there? However, the little flower laughed. So you don't want to climb it? Then I'll make you. If you can't reach the peak within two hours, your eyes will go blind. Previously, when the flower said that he would die within seven steps, Zhou Wen didn't pay attention. However, this time, he saw it clearly. Just as the flower's voice faded, one of its petals wilted and scattered in the air as a point of light, as though it had vanished into thin air. Zhou Wen didn't feel anything, nor did the truth listener earring react. However, he knew that he had probably been hit by some curse. What origins does this flower have? Why is its power so strange? Zhou Wen looked at the flower and asked. You said that I would die if I took seven steps. Now, you want me to climb the mountain within two hours? Doesn't this conflict? The flower said calmly. Don't worry. The first wish's wish forces have been covered by the second wish. You can walk anywhere you want now without dying. However, if you don't ascend Chess Mountain's peak in two hours, you will definitely become blind. Even a mythical primordial energy skill that can resurrect the dead won't be able to restore your vision. If you don't believe me, go ahead and leave this place. What are you really up to? Joe Wen looked up at the flower on the mountain wall and asked. If he were to go up Chess Mountain, he was afraid that he would lose his life. Being blind was better than dying. At the very least, he still had the truth listener earring. Even if he was blind, he wouldn't be completely blind. He could use his ears as a substitute for his eyes. 
He just wouldn't be able to see any colors or changes in shadows in the future. Nothing. I just find it fun. If you don't want to climb the mountain, you can leave now. However, if I'm in a bad mood one day and think about you, I might make another wish to turn you into a cripple. I believe it will be very interesting. The flower said. Jowen stared at the flower and thought to himself, Indeed, I shouldn't take risks going near dimensional zones. It's better to just stay home and game. If you wish to kill me, just do it. There's no need to go through so much trouble. Jowen said as he stared at the flower. If it wasn't for your good looks, do you think you could still stand and talk to me, Adarch? The flower said in contempt. Jowen was immediately rendered speechless. He thought to himself, You are a flower. Why would you have any idea about human looks? The flower continued. Forget it. I shall tell you another secret. There's a treasure on the top of Chess Mountain. You shall have a chance of obtaining the treasure if you can climb up there. Based on the standards of you humans, it is a mythical item. What mythical item is it? Jowen asked. You'll know when you get up there. However, I shall give you a hint. Don't think about flying up. You must climb up the mountain wall. Otherwise, you'll die. The flower said. All right, I'll climb. Jowen gritted his teeth. He knew that he had provoked this flower. Even if he were to leave now, there would be endless trouble. He might as well go take a look. If there was really a tiny palm symbol, he could snap it and download it into the game. He could then understand Chess Mountain's secret in game and think of a way to eliminate the flower's pestering. Jowen walked to the stone wall and reached out to grab the cracks on the rock before climbing up. The moment he climbed up, he immediately felt that something was amiss. A powerful magnet seemed to be situated beneath Chess Mountain. It tugged at his body, making it suddenly feel heavy. He struggled to climb up, just like ordinary people when they went rock climbing. Do you find yourself heavy? The flower's voice sounded. Why did this happen? Jowen asked as he crawled up. The Chess Mountain is a sealed place. Even those true immortals don't dare approach it. Only your human body can approach it. It won't be injured by the power of the seal, but it will still be affected by it, said the flower. A sealed place? Who sealed it? Jowen took the opportunity to gather information. If you can climb up the mountain and see that mythical item, you will naturally be able to guess who he is. If you don't climb up, it's useless telling you. The flower paused and said, Since you have already climbed up, don't think about retreating. Otherwise, you shall die. If you don't believe me, look down. Jowen looked down and was alarmed. He had only climbed up a few meters, but the bottom had turned into a bottomless abyss, as though it was leading straight to hell. Damn you, flower, just you wait. Once I download Chess Mountain's instance dungeon and find your weakness in game, I'll finish you, Jowen thought hatefully. He didn't know if it was an illusion or what was going on, but since he had come up, Jowen didn't plan on retreating. He continued climbing up. The more he climbed up, the heavier his body became. It was as though his body was covered in chains. Even with Jowen's strong physique, he found it exhausting just climbing a few hundred meters. Thankfully, Chess Mountain wasn't tall. It was only about 700 to 800 meters. If it was a mountain that was thousands of meters high, Jowen really doubted if he could scale it. The flower said, I couldn't tell. Your perseverance is not bad. It's okay. You've been at Chess Mountain for so long. Do you know who Chess Mountain's original owner is? Jowen didn't forget to fish for more information. I'm the owner of Chess Mountain. The flower said with a laugh. Jowen naturally didn't believe it. According to Insheng, Chess Mountain traced to the ancient Zhaoga city. If that was the case, there would definitely be many mythical creatures inside. There would be no lack of famous mythical existences. Even if this flower had powerful and strange powers, Jowen definitely didn't believe its claim of being the owner of Chess Mountain. Despite nearing the summit, Jowen's truth listener still couldn't hear anything from the top of the mountain. It was as though there was some mysterious force blocking the sounds, preventing Jowen from peeping at the mountain peak. Now, Jowen felt as though someone was pulling him with a chain beneath him. Every step he climbed up required him to use all his strength. He had no choice but to use the ancient sovereign life soul to replenish his vital energies. This eased him greatly. Eh? The aura of an ancient human sovereign. Do you cultivate the ancient sovereign sutra? The flower sensed the power of the ancient sovereign life soul and immediately guessed the primordial energy art Joe when cultivated. Chapter 414 Peak You know about the ancient sovereign sutra? Joe asked. The flower laughed and said, It's not like it's something impressive. Why wouldn't I know? It's no wonder you climbed up Chess Mountain so easily. It turns out that you've cultivated the ancient sovereign sutra. However, after cultivating the ancient sovereign sutra, your future will not be too easy. It will be extremely difficult to pass the mythical stage. Why would it be difficult to cultivate the ancient sovereign sutra? 
Aren't other primordial energy arts difficult to cultivate? Zhou Wen's heart stirred as he tried to get the way to advance to the mythical stage from the flower's mouth. To date, Zhou Wen had never heard of humans becoming mythical experts. If he could obtain a method to advance to the mythical stage, he might be the first mythical expert among humans. They're difficult too. However, ordinary primordial energy arts follow the order of the world. The ancient sovereign sutra works by destroying the order of the world, so naturally, the difficulty is greater. Furthermore, the founder of the ancient sovereign sutra, the strongest human sovereign of your human race, ultimately failed to change fate. The flower said. Which human sovereign are you referring to? Zhou Wen hurriedly asked. As a human and one that cultivates the ancient sovereign sutra, you don't even know your race is sovereign, swear and sure? The flower was puzzled. Only then did Zhou Wen realize that the ancient sovereign sutra was a primordial energy art left behind by swear and sure. It was the leader who had brought fire to humanity. Zhou Wen originally believed that the ancient sovereign sutra was discovered on Ebo platform. It might have something to do with Ebo he never expected it to be swear and sure's primordial energy art. When you talk about changing fate, do you mean that human sovereign ultimately failed to advance to the mythical stage? Zhou Wen thought to himself that if that were the case, it would be even more difficult to advance the ancient sovereign sutra to the mythical stage in the future. You can understand it as that too, the flower said rather ambiguously. It didn't continue the topic. Instead, it said, Once you reach the top of the mountain, you will see a stone staircase. Follow it, but do not walk around recklessly. Otherwise, don't blame your death on me. The tiny palm symbol will be engraved on the boulder at the end of the stone steps. What's that mythical item you mentioned? Joan asked. You're almost there. It's on the boulder. The flower ultimately didn't answer his question. Even with the augmentation of the ancient sovereign life soul, it still took his all to just climb up. When he finally reached the mountaintop, his fingers trembled as he held them to the ground. He looked up and sized up the mountaintop. Indeed, there was a stone staircase leading to the center of the mountain summit. There was a huge black boulder that looked like a steamed bun. Zhou Wen immediately saw the tiny palm symbol on the stone and couldn't help but be overjoyed. That flower didn't lie to me. There really is a tiny palm symbol. Zhou Wen stood up and carefully approached the bun resembling black boulder. As Zhou Wen took a few steps, he felt the mysterious phone vibrate in his pocket. Zhou Wen took it out and automatically opened the camera app. He aimed the phone at the black boulder and the camera automatically focused. It locked onto the small palm symbol on the boulder before producing a snapping sound. It turned into the downloading interface. What is that in your hand? The flower's voice came from the mountain wall. Don't you know what a cell phone is? Joe Wen realized that the mountain peak wasn't as dangerous as he had imagined it to be. It wasn't as terrifying as the flower had said. It was barren, and he felt a little more relaxed. Now that he had downloaded the game dungeon, he could research the flower's weakness when he got back. After he had researched it thoroughly, he could deal with it. As long as he didn't die here, he still had a chance to turn the tables even if he was blinded by the flower. Wait. If I'm blind, will the blood-colored avatar in game be blind? Zhou Wen suddenly thought of a serious problem. He and the blood-colored avatar shared the same vantage view. If the blood-colored avatar also became blind, and he couldn't see the screen, wouldn't that mean that he couldn't game? What is a cell phone? It doesn't look like a treasure, as it doesn't have any primordial energy fluctuations. The flower said. It's not a treasure. It's just a communication tool that we humans use to communicate across distances. There are also some functions like taking pictures. Everyone has one. Joe Wen tried his best to describe the phone as something rather common to prevent the flower from suddenly becoming interested in the phone. What does taking pictures mean? The flower asked again. It's to record down a scene into a drawing. I can take pictures of people or scenery. Joe Wen said as he put away the mysterious phone. It looked like the flower was interested in the phone. Is that so? Take a photo and let me see, the flower said. Zhou Wen was already mentally prepared as he took out his ordinary phone and took a few photos with his phone. This thing is rather interesting. The drawings are so realistic, the flower paused and said. How do you speak with this thing across distances? It's very simple. Every phone has a number. As long as you call this number, you can call another phone a distance away. However, there's no signal here, so there's no way to talk. Zhou Wen realized that there was no signal here. What is a signal? The flower asked again. I don't quite understand that either. It roughly entails humans establishing cell towers. Through these cell towers, we can transmit signals across distances. There's no cell tower here, so there's no way to use the phone to communicate. Joe Wen wasn't very knowledgeable on such matters, so he just gave a general explanation. I understand. You have two phones. Give one to me then. You don't have any objections, right? 
Although the flower was inquiring, its tone wasn't taking no for an answer. Sure, but there's no signal here. It's useless even if you have the phone, right? Besides, you don't have hands. How are you going to use the phone? Joan asked. It's none of your business. Just place your phone on the stone steps, the flower said. Joan deleted his own information on the phone. Thankfully, he didn't use it often. There wasn't much private information inside, so he deleted it in a few seconds. What's the number of this phone and the other phone? The flower asked. Joan told the flower his cell phone number before saying, I didn't get a number for my other phone. I'll only get it after I return. However, there's communication software in there that can be used for communication. It can't be used due to a lack of signal though. It's all right. Tell me how to use it. The flower was very calm. Joan told the flower how to use the communication software. He still wanted to return alive, so he agreed to any of the flower's requests. After Joan gave the tutorial, the flower claimed that it understood. It was unknown if it really understood or was faking it. After all, there wasn't any signal here and there wasn't much use for having a phone. It was the same even if it didn't understand. Therefore, he couldn't be bothered to say more. By the way, where is the mythical item you mentioned? Why don't I see it? Didn't I tell you that it's on the boulder? You can see from its side, said the flower. Chapter 415 Treasure Box The bun-shaped boulder was about a meter tall. After Joan got closer, he could see the top. There was a white jade box embedded in the middle of the boulder. When Joan saw that the white jade box didn't seem particularly outstanding, he asked, Is the mythical item that you mentioned in this jade box? No, that jade box is the mythical item, the flower said. The jade box is the mythical item? Joan sized it up but he couldn't find anything special about it. It didn't have any extraordinary luster or mythical patterns. It looked like an ordinary box made of white jade. It was about a foot long and only about four fingers wide. A real treasure is right in front of you, but you can't recognize it. You can be considered blind. Based on my personality back then, I would have dug your eyes out to quell my anger. The flower paused before continuing. That box is a mythical expert's mythical item. It has terrifying power. Even a mythical creature like a dragon wouldn't be able to withstand the power of the box. This chest mountain seal remains because of its suppression. You mean that if I take it away, the seal on chest mountain will be lifted? Joe asked in surprise. He originally thought that the flower was trying to trick him into taking the treasure here and to achieve some hidden ploy. However, the first thing the flower said was to point out the importance of the jade box. It left Joe when surprised. The flower said disdainfully, As such a weak human, you don't have the right to take it away. Even a mythical creature needs a special physique to be able to take it out. You're still far from it. After pausing for a moment, the flower continued. But if you can advance to the mythical stage in the future, you can come over and give it a try. You cultivate in the ancient sovereign sutra, so you might have a chance to take it away. Only when I'm mad would I take it away. Why would I allow these monsters to walk the land? Jowen thought to himself. The flower seemed to see through Jowen's thoughts as it said with a laugh. It's only a matter of time before the dimensional zones rule the land. Even if you don't take it, someone will take it away in the future. Even in dimensional zones, this item is a unique treasure. It has killed countless mythical creatures. If you really are that great, just pretend that it doesn't exist. Jowen was tempted when he heard that. The flower's words weren't without reason. When that truly happened, his choice of leaving it here would only benefit someone else. Although he knew that the flower was tempting him, it was a lie to say that he wasn't tempted. However, he couldn't take it now. I'll give it a try in game. If I can take it away in game, it shouldn't affect the real world, Joe thought to himself. I've climbed up the mountain and got my things. I've also given you my phone. Can I leave now? Joe asked. Up to you. The flower had no intention of stopping Joe Joe hurriedly climbed down again. It was harder to go down the mountain than up the mountain. Thankfully, Joe had cultivated for so many years, so even if he didn't fly, he was still considered agile. So, I'm really leaving, Joan said as he looked in the direction of the flower, afraid that something would happen again. Are you planning on getting me to keep you here on Chess Mountain for a meal? The flower said coldly. There's no need to be so polite. I'll take my leave now. I'll contact you when I have the time. Joan hurriedly turned around and left. The flower had an unpredictable temperament. It was best if he could leave quickly. When I find a loophole in game, I'll deal with you when I come back. After Joan left Chess Mountain, he took out the phone and saw that it had already finished downloading. There was a new game icon on the home screen. The icon was a black mountain with the name Chess Mountain. Joe and rode the mutated stone she back and immediately opened the Chess Mountain dungeon. After entering the game, 
the blood-colored avatar stood in front of Chess Mountain's wall. There was a flower growing on it. Although the cartoon-style flower looked a little different from the real world, he could still vaguely tell that it was the flower Zhou Wen had seen. Although he was in game, Zhou Wen held back and didn't attack the flower because he couldn't die yet. He headed to the underground sea every 24 hours to deliver a poison dragon palm at the black dragon to drain it to its death. If it dropped a mythical companion beast, he would have made a killing. Even without a mythical companion beast, it would be a huge gain for him to have a primordial energy skill crystal drop. After all, Zhou Wen hadn't had the ability to kill a mythical creature yet. It was very difficult to obtain a dimensional crystal at the mythical stage. Standing in front of the mountain wall and sizing up the flower, he realized it didn't speak like it did in real life. It just quietly grew on the mountain wall. Zhou Wen decided to wait until he killed the black dragon before teaching the flower a lesson. Then, he chose to leave the game dungeon. In a dark cave, a seductive woman was bound by crisscross chains. The chains with runes pierced through her bones and chained her inside the cave. She couldn't even move and could only sit on the mountain wall. Her neck and legs were chained and she couldn't move at all. At that moment, a phone was floating in front of the seductive woman. It was the one Joe Wynn had placed on the stone steps. The seductive woman's gaze landed on the phone, but there seemed to be a pair of invisible hands that grabbed the phone and quickly operated it. A cell phone is quite interesting. A strange smile gradually appeared on the seductive woman's face. Zhou Wen returned to the encampment and finished grinding the game dungeons. Having nothing else to do, he took out his books from the chaos space to read. Previously, during his battle with Jack, he had gained a new understanding of Lost Country. However, it hadn't reached the level where he could advance Lost Country to the evolved body stage. Now, he could use this period of time to study it and see if he could advance further, allowing Lost Country to become an evolved body. A life soul itself had a certain ability, but the usage of the life soul's ability required the owner of the life soul to develop it himself. Teleportation was only the most basic usage of spatial trajectory forces. After receiving inspiration from Jack, Zhou Wen thought of a different way of making use of spatial trajectories, trajectory control. After the average person's strength was projected out, it was equivalent to spending money. It was impossible for them to get it back, and they could not repeatedly use the same money to buy things. However, by using the effect of spatial trajectories, he could still control the forces he sent out. They were connected to each other via the trajectory, but this connection was different from what most people thought. It was invisible and did not physically exist. Using this trajectory connection, Zhou Wen could be like Jack. He could set up his strength as though he was burying a landmine. With a detonator in hand, he could detonate any landmines he had buried beforehand. Chapter 416 Dr. Little Show However, in contrast, Jack's light blast was more sinister. This was because Jack was detonating the energy of life itself. This meant that he didn't expend his primordial energy. All he did was rely on the energies of others. Zhou Wen's method was to expend his primordial energy to set up a landmine. It would be a lot more troublesome, and the expenditure was even more severe. However, Life Blast was just too sinister. Every strike required the lives of others in exchange. The stronger the vital energy, the stronger the explosion would be. Zhou Wen attempted to use the spatial trajectory he had figured out. Every trajectory link formed a string on his ring. If many of the trajectories connected, it would cover the ring with all sorts of lines as though they were incantations. He had been studying the effects of spatial trajectories and used it as a breakthrough point in an attempt to advance the lost country to an evolved body. Unfortunately, the advancement of a life soul was clearly not that simple. After studying it the entire afternoon, Joe Wen didn't make much progress. However, he was more familiar with the usage of spatial trajectories. Joe Wen felt uncomfortable reading in his room. Just as he got to the door with a book in hand and moved a chair to read at the door, an officer holding a wash basin saw him and immediately came up to greet him. Dr. Little Joe, so you're staying here. I really have to thank you for saving Lu Gui's life. Dr. Lu said that if you hadn't handled it in time, Lu Gui would have died. It's nothing, it's my duty. Joe Wen had treated the case as a last-ditch effort. He didn't wish to repeat it a second time. Dr. Little Joe, I've been to the river recently and have rashes on my body. Although they aren't serious and will fade in two days, they are really itchy. Do you have any method to stop the itch? The officer asked Zhou Wen. Of course. A single injection can stop the itch. Zhou Wen said without any hesitation. Dr. Darkness's fight poison with poison could restrain the rash poison. As long as the dosage was appropriate, it was easy to eliminate the rash. Really? The officer's eyes lit up as he looked at Zhou Wen with anticipation. Dr. Zhou, can you give me an injection? I can't stand it any longer. I wish I could tear my bones to pieces. All right. Come over and extend your arm. 
This was a trivial matter to Zhou Wen. Since it was simple, it was only right to help him. After all, they were stationed here and fighting dimensional creatures with their lives. This allowed the residents of the city to live in peace. The officer was overjoyed as he hurriedly rolled up his sleeves and stretched out his arm. Zhou Wen directly summoned Dr. Darkness to possess him. After using fight poison with poison, a syringe appeared in his hand. As he wasn't professional, Zhou Wen didn't use any rubber bands to make the blood vessels protrude. He directly stabbed the needle and accurately stabbed into the blood vessel, before slowly pushing in an extremely minute amount of poison. The officer's face was still full of excitement at the beginning. He thought that he finally didn't have to endure the crazy itch anymore. However, in the next second, the officer's face turned pale. He felt an incomparable pain that he had never experienced in his entire life. It instantly spread through his entire body, causing his entire body to spasm. Anyone who had a cramp in their legs would know that cramps felt terrible, but now, his entire body was cramping violently. Not only his legs, even his fingers and toes were cramping, and his organs were about to collapse. The officer fell onto the ground and convulsed on the ground like a lunatic. White foam spewed from his mouth as his eyes rolled back. At this moment, if he still had the strength, he would have slammed himself to death. This pain was much worse than the itch before. I administered a little too much? Joe and looked at the officer and muttered to himself. He wasn't worried that something would happen to the officer because the amount of dosage he had injected was already very minute. It wasn't enough to cause too much damage, just a little pain. The nearby soldiers didn't know what had happened, but they all came over with concern. Seeing that the officer was twitching non-stop, they wanted to send him to the medical team. Don't touch him! He will be fine soon! Joe and stopped the soldiers. One of the soldiers seemed to understand what was going on. He said to the other soldiers, This young man is right. This is called epilepsy. Don't touch him when he's spasming. Otherwise, he might die. Quickly place his head on the side and use something to block his tongue. Don't let him bite his tongue. He should recover in a while. Epilepsy, you as asterisk. The officer finally endured through the most painful period and sat up with a pale face. At this moment, he deeply regretted it. Thoughts of dying had run through his mind several times just now so that he wouldn't have to suffer such inhuman pain. If he had known earlier that it would be so painful, he would rather have suffered the itch. Thank you, Dr. Little Zhou. Although he felt regret, the officer still thanked Zhou Wen politely before leaving with a pale face. Zhou Wen thought nothing of the matter. It had been easy to help him. However, Zhou Wen never expected that this very simple help played a huge role that night. As usual, the officer led a group of soldiers to patrol the river. When they were patrolling a spot by the river, a strange fish suddenly stuck its head out from the river and spat out a mouthful of bloody water at the soldiers on the bank. The soldiers dodged, but the blood covered a large area like rain. Despite dodging very quickly, they were still drenched. The other soldiers immediately went into a coma from the poison. Their bodies began to break out into the red rashes. Only the officer was surprisingly fine, despite being drenched in blood. Thankfully, he hadn't fainted and was able to bring his soldiers back to the camp in time. Otherwise, if they had all fainted, no one would have realized they were dead until some time later. The officer used his companion beast to take a group of soldiers back to the camp and send them to the medical team. When Lu Su saw that the rashes on their bodies had already festered, she shook her head in exasperation and said, No, the poison has already spread to the blood in their bodies. There's no way they can be saved. The officer was stunned when he heard that. He said in disbelief, That's impossible. How can there be no hope? Dr. Lu, think of another solution. There must be a way to save them. These soldiers had always been with him so how could he not have any feelings for them? When he heard that they were about to die, he naturally found it unacceptable. They were hit by the bloody water spewed out by the dimensional creature you mentioned. The poison spread too quickly, and there's no hope for them. Thankfully, you weren't stained by the blood or you would suffer the same fate as them, Lu Su said. No, I was also stained by it. Why am I fine? Oh right, it's Dr. Little Zhou. Dr. Little Zhou definitely can save them. Last time, Lu Gui was in a worse state than them. He was treated by Dr. Little Zhou. Dr. Lu, quickly get Dr. Little Zhou here. He can treat him, the officer said anxiously. Chapter 417, he's really a doctor. Lu Su frowned and said, Our medical team doesn't have the Dr. Zhou when you mentioned previously. If there is, how could we not get him to save you all? How can that be? He's clearly from your medical team, and I've even seen his identification documents. Oh right, he's not a doctor yet. He's just an intern doctor, the officer said. There's no such person, even amongst the intern doctors. There's no one with the Joe surname either. Lu Su felt that grief had gotten to this officer's head, then he started spouting nonsense. 
If he had really been hit by the blood, how could he come back alive? He even dragged his comrades back while remaining fine. Impossible. He's clearly here. As the officer spoke, he seemed to think of something. He ran outside as though he had gone crazy. Ah! What madness! Lu Su sighed. The present era was an era that drove people crazy. Although humans possessed superpowers that they never dared to dream of, they were still burdened with unimaginable pressure. Many people couldn't withstand the impact, and this devolved into psychological problems. To Lu Su, this officer was someone who couldn't withstand the blow which resulted in psychological problems. The officer didn't have that many thoughts. He ran all the way to where he had met Zhou Wen. He remembered which dorm he was in. He came for Zhou Wen, not to prove his existence as Dr. Little Zhou, but to get him to save his comrades. Zhou Wen was reading in bed, when he suddenly heard a series of urgent knocks on the door. Then, he heard someone shouting desperately outside. Dr. Little Zhou, help, Dr. Little Zhou, are you there? Zhou Wen could tell that the officer was outside, so he opened the door. Dr. Little Zhou, I'm so glad you're here. Please save my brothers. Upon seeing Zhou Wen, the officer felt like crying. Without another word, he pulled Zhou Wen towards the medical team. As he was being pulled to the medical team, Zhou Wen asked, puzzled, What's the matter? My brothers were suddenly attacked by a dimensional creature while they were patrolling alongside the river. They were sprayed with blood and quickly fell unconscious. They have rashes on their bodies, and they are rapidly festering. The doctors are helpless. It will be too late if you don't do something, the officer said. Zhou Wen quickened his steps when he heard that. He didn't wish to see a living person die in front of him. He would do his best. Soon, Zhou Wen was pulled to the medical team by the officer. He saw six soldiers lying in a special ward with two nurses and a doctor taking care of them. However, their situation hadn't improved at all. The rashes on their faces and hands had already turned into bloody holes. From afar, they looked as if blood-colored flowers had bloomed on their faces. There was no beauty about it and only made one shudder. Dr. Little Zhou, quickly save my brothers. Quickly give them the injection. The officer said anxiously as he pulled Zhou Wen along. Are you the Dr. Zhou when they mentioned? Lu Su sized up Zhou Wen suspiciously. She was certain that Zhou Wen wasn't from the medical team. She knew everyone from the medical team, and there wasn't such a character. Furthermore, Zhou Wen looked too young. He was probably less than 20 years old. It was no wonder the officer called him Dr. Little Zhou. Usually, one would attend university at the age of 16. After graduation, they would be 20 years old. I'm a new intern doctor, Zhou Wen. I haven't reported to the medical team yet, Zhou Wen said as he showed his identification. Lu Su took the document and looked at it. It was true. He was indeed an intern. This person was not a figment of imagination fabricated by those soldiers. Can I take a look at their injuries? Zhou Wen asked Lu Su. Of course. Lu Su also wanted to know if Zhou Wen could treat the poison. If he could really treat it, Lu Su would be very grateful to him. The military wasn't a hospital. There wasn't any competition or selfishness that ordinary doctors had. Saving a soldier's life was more important than anything. Furthermore, if Zhou Wen could treat the rashes, it would be a great thing for the garrison in Chess Mountain. It would resolve a huge problem. Seeing Lu Su agree, Zhou Wen went to an injured soldier and looked at his injuries. The two nurses beside him looked up curiously. Zhou Wen looked a little younger than them, but he was called a doctor by the officer. Furthermore, he seemed to have placed all his hopes on him, making them curious as to what kind of person Zhou Wen was. They were curious as to whether Zhou Wen could really treat the soldiers' rashes. Zhou Wen could tell that they were indeed the same as the red rashes he had seen previously. Immediately, he summoned Dr. Darkness to possess him and use fight poison with poison. A syringe appeared in his hand. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen grabbed the soldier's wrist and stabbed it. Lu Su jumped in fright, but it was too late to stop him. Because Zhou Wen had delivered an injection with just one look, this made him appear somewhat unreliable. However, on second thought, Lu Su felt that no matter how unreliable he was, there was still hope. Even if Zhou Wen didn't inject the soldier, the soldiers wouldn't be able to survive, so she didn't stop him. From his two previous experiences, Zhou Wen had a general idea of the dosage needed to be injected. Therefore, he stopped after a certain amount of dosage was injected and walked towards the next soldier. There were only six soldiers in total. In just an instant, Zhou Wen had fully administered it to them all. It's done. That's all I can do. I'll have to trouble the nurses to help deal with their festering injuries, Zhou Wen said. Dr. Little Zhou, are they all right now? The officer asked nervously. If nothing unexpected happens, it should be like Lu Gui. They need to recuperate for some time. I still have matters to tend to, so I'll be heading back now, Zhou Wen said as he walked out. The officer trusted Zhou Wen very much. 
Upon hearing Zhou Wen's words, the weight on his heart was lifted. After thanking him, he ran to the beds to see his comrades. Lu Su frowned as she watched. From his attitude when he injected the patients, she could tell that Zhou Wen was extremely unprofessional. He even had problems being an intern doctor. For such a seriously injured patient, he had to observe their reactions after injecting a drug. Yet, he didn't even look at them and left after the injections. He didn't look like a doctor at all. Lu Su had no idea that Zhou Wen wasn't a doctor. He didn't know any medical skills, so it was useless staying. She wanted to stop Zhou Wen, but before she could speak, she heard a nurse cry out. He, he's reacting. Lu Su hurriedly looked at the nurse and saw her pointing at a soldier, shock filling the nurse's face. She looked at the soldier and surprise colored her face as well. The soldier grunted softly and woke up. Furthermore, his rashes seemed to have stopped festering. Chapter 418 Magical Medicinal Effects The six soldiers quickly woke up. It was fine even if they hadn't woken up, but the poison that Zhou Wen had injected was so excruciatingly painful that it jolted them awake. Lu Su quickly did a checkup on the six soldiers and discovered that the toxins and red spots on their bodies had receded. Their spirits were slowly recovering. It was unbelievable. This is unbelievable. How did he do it? Lu Su was shocked, but she didn't stay idle. She dealt with the six soldiers' wounds with the two nurses. Although the toxins and red rashes had subsided, the festering wounds had not healed. They still needed treatment. After working for half the day, when the six soldiers were deep asleep, the surprise in Lu Su's eyes intensified. It could be confirmed that the rashes on these soldiers had indeed subsided after a short period. How did he do it? Lu Su had researched the rashes for a long time, but she still couldn't find a way to treat them. It was fine if the rash didn't act up, but once it did, the patient would definitely die. However, the six soldiers today, who had already taken half a step into the jaws of death, recovered with a simple injection from Zhou Wen. It was unbelievable. What medicine is he using? Why is it so effective? Lu Su thought to herself. Thank you, Dr. Lu. The officer said to Lu Su gratefully. Although Lu Su didn't save her comrades, she had done all she could to deal with their festering wounds. This was already very precious. I'm asking you, were you really splattered by the blood? Lu Su looked at the officer and asked. That's right. If I could have reacted in time, I wouldn't have let my comrades get soaked in the blood. The officer said. Then why aren't you infected with rashes like them? Lu Su asked again. She naturally believed the officer's words. The officer thought for a moment and said, It should be this morning. I got Dr. Little Show to give me a shot. Perhaps the shot's medicinal effect is still present in my system? Now, he was very glad that Joe Wynn had given him the injection. Otherwise, they would all have been left unconscious there. By the time the other patrols discovered them, they would have been dead. In comparison, the little pain he suffered was nothing. Could it be that the medicine has lingering effects or it has created antibodies? Lu Su thought to herself. If it was the latter, the medicine Zhou Wen used would be even more precious. Lu Su planned on finding a time to have a good chat with Zhou Wen and see if there was any chance of mass producing the medicine. She believed that Zhou Wen would be reporting to her very soon. Lu Su was the in charge of the medical team, so all interns should report to her. However, Lu Su didn't see Zhou Wen the next day. Lu Su was not angered because of this. She knew very well that an intern doctor had to report to her first before their lodging and identification documents were arranged and distributed by the medical team. Zhou Wen didn't report to her, but he already had a residence and identification documents. Clearly, his identity wasn't ordinary. Furthermore, Zhou Wen could actually treat the rashes. This made Lu Su even more convinced that he didn't have a simple background. Therefore, Lu Su planned on visiting him personally. The officer often went to see his comrade, so learning where Zhou Wen stayed wasn't difficult. But when Lu Su arrived at Zhou Wen's dorm, she realized that the door was locked. There wasn't anyone inside. However, after seeing Zhou Wen's living quarters, Lu Su was even more certain that Zhou Wen wasn't an ordinary intern doctor. How could an intern doctor have a single room? Even ordinary low-ranking officers didn't receive such treatment. As the main supervisor of the medical team, she had barely managed to get herself a single room. Lu Su thought for a while and returned to the medical team, planning to visit again at night. Zhou Wen really wasn't at the encampment as his phone had been taken away by the flower. He couldn't contact his schoolmates. He hadn't requested absence of leave from Wang Lu, considering his promise to buy breakfast for her. Therefore, Zhou Wen asked for a travel pass from Qin Wufu's adjutant before heading to a nearby city to buy a new phone. He didn't have many requirements for his phone. He just needed it to work, so he bought a relatively cheap phone and got a new number. Although he could request his old number back, Zhou Wen was afraid this might cause trouble with the flower, so he decided to change his number. After finishing everything, 
Zhou Wen logged into his communications app and planned on sending a group message to inform them that he had changed his number. However, the moment he logged in, the messages kept ringing. When he opened them, he saw that many of them were from Wang Lu. Big liar, you aren't a man of your word. You're not sincere. You just held on for one day. You didn't even last to the second day. Miser stingy. Why didn't you tell me that you can't bear to pay for breakfast? Are you not daring to say a word because you know you are in the wrong? Sorry, I was hunted by someone and lost my phone. I had no time to contact you. I won't forget what I promised you. Wait for me to return. Zhou Wen replied. Zhou Wen also replied to Li Xian's and Huang Ji's messages. Finally, Zhou Wen saw a system notification. When he opened it, he saw a friend request. Zhou Wen subconsciously wanted to swipe away the message. Typically, he wouldn't randomly add friends unless he had agreed on a friend request ahead of time. However, Zhou Wen was alarmed when he saw the ID of the requester. His hand, which was about to press the delete button, froze. The arch, it can't be, it's just a coincidence. There's no signal at Chess Mountain, that flower doesn't have hands. How does it use a phone? It even knows how to add me as a friend. Zhou Wen looked at his friend request in horror, and had the urge to immediately delete it. However, Zhou Wen knew that escaping wasn't a solution, so he approved his friend request to see if the The Arch was the flower or just a coincidence. Just as he accepted the request, the The Arch sent a message. Why did you take so long to accept my friend request? Are you tired of living? Zhou Wen found it unbelievable that a flower could use a phone, but from the person's tone, it was identical to the flowers. Who are you? Zhou Wen probed. What's the matter? Have you forgotten me so quickly? Do you want me to make another wish for you to deepen your memories? A message quickly replied. Ah, oh, it's really you, the Darch. I never expected you to be able to use the phone. I didn't think there was any signal there, right? How did you get on the internet? Zhou Wen replied. It's trivial. How can it dawn me? The Thearcha's reply clearly contained a hint of smugness, but she didn't say how she did it. Since you know how to use a phone, I suggest that you check out books or television dramas on the internet. I recommend Super Gene. It's especially good. You should be interested. Zhou Wen regretted the moment he sent the message, but it was too late to recall it. All right, I'll take a look. The Darch had already read the message and quickly replied Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen was very vexed. Perhaps the flower wasn't really just a harmless flower that could survive thanks to the sun, however. If it read Super Gene and started becoming a glutton like the characters in the book, wouldn't many humans be in trouble? Chapter 419, The Darch has learned how to use the intern. The Darch was like a teenager who had just learned how to chat online. Or perhaps she had been alone for too long. She kept chatting and talked about any topic under the sun she asked Joe when all sorts of questions, giving him no time to do anything else. After returning to the encampment, the Darch was still asking him all sorts of questions regarding the internet. She appeared very excited. Just as Joe Wen was thinking about how he could send the Darch along her way, he suddenly received another message. What does it mean when the phone notifies me about a low battery? A phone is powered by a battery. If the battery's charge is used up, the phone will automatically be switched off. Only after charging it can it be used. Joe Wen was immediately amused as he thought to himself, I doubt your crappy place has any power cables. You definitely won't be able to charge it. Let's see how you can come online and bother me in the future. How do I charge it? Can I strike it with lightning? The Darch sent another message. Definitely not. A lightning bolt charge is unstable. It will overload the phone. You will need ordinary household power to charge a phone. You also need a specialized charger. You can look it up on the internet, Zhou Wen said. Zhou Wen was secretly delighted that there was no news from the Darch. He wondered if her phone had run out of battery, and he could finally be rid of her. After a while, the Darch sent another message. You need to bring me a small diesel dynamo, a barrel of diesel oil, and a phone's charger before noon tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll make a wish for you to become a limbless cripple. Zhou Wen was immediately awash with sadness. His mouth opened, unable to say a word. I'm being pursued by an enemy now. How can I have the time to do those things for you? Besides, I have to go to a nearby city to buy those things. Even if I were to go, I won't be able to return before noon tomorrow. Besides, I don't dare go since the powerful enemy is chasing me every day. Zhou Wen complained. What enemy? The Darch sent a message. Zhou Wen recounted Jack's various abilities and even embellished and exaggerated them. He deliberately exaggerated Jack's strength, as though he would be killed by Jack the moment he went out. I thought it would be some extraordinary character. So it's just a lowly character. How about this? Before evening tomorrow, bring me all the things I want. I'll give you something good so you can easily kill that enemy. The Darch said disdainfully. What is it? Joe Wynn's heart stirred. 
You'll know when you arrive. Remember, you have to deliver the items before the sun sets tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll make a wish for you to be limbless. After the Darch sent the message, there was silence. It was unknown if she was out of battery. Jowen sent a few more messages, but there was no response. She had likely run out of battery. I wonder if the flower's wishing ability can be affected from a distance. Jowen thought for a moment and felt that it wasn't worth it to bed his limbs on a diesel dynamo and some diesel oil. Furthermore, the flower had said that it would give him something good to kill Jack. Jowen felt that he could make the trip. He then left the door and rode the mutated stone chi to rush to the nearby city at full speed. He wanted to return quickly and satisfy the flower so that he could read and game in peace. The mutated stone chi was as fast as a car. Furthermore, there wasn't a need to take the main roads. Jowen headed straight for the nearby city and quickly bought all the items needed. He originally imagined that he would encounter Jack's ambush on the way, so he had been very careful, but nothing happened. Jack never appeared. It wasn't that Jack didn't wish to ambush Shouwen, but that he had no time at all. Shinyuchi had indeed given him quite a number of companion beasts, but they had owners. Shinyuchi had to think of a way to transfer their companion beasts over. Those people were all criminals from heaven prison. When Shinyuchi sent them over, he never expected them to return alive. Jack robbed them of their companion beasts one by one, spending quite a bit of time and energy. It couldn't be done quickly, so he had no time to ambush Jowen. Jowen took the mini diesel dynamo, a 20 kilogram drum of diesel oil, as well as the charger to Chess Mountain and found the flower. Just place the things besides the mountain wall. A familiar woman's voice sounded from the flower. The Darch, I've spent more than half of my savings to buy these things. You have to use them sparingly. If they're damaged, I won't have the money to buy you any more later. Jowen said, as he lamented because he didn't want the flower to get him to buy more items. Don't lie to me. I saw that the price is very cheap on the internet, the Darch said. The price is very cheap, but I don't have the time to earn money. Without an income, how would I have the money? I've almost used up all my savings to buy these things, Jowen said. The Darch seemed to think that what Jowen said made sense. She thought for a moment before saying, I have something here. Take it and exchange it for money. I'll leave it on the stone steps at the top of the mountain. Take it yourself. The thing I promised you is also there. You can use it to deal with your enemy. As long as you aren't too stupid, he will definitely die if he comes looking for you. What is it? Jowen asked. You will know when you see it. The Varch didn't tell him directly what the item was. Jowen had no choice but to climb to the peak of Chess Mountain. Indeed, there were two things on the stone steps. One was a dimensional crystal, and the other was a petite bone flute. If your enemy comes looking for you again, blow the bone flute. When the time comes, it will definitely be of use. You can exchange the dimensional crystal for money. The Thearka's voice came from the mountain wall. Jowen saw that the bone flute was very ancient and crude. He didn't know which animal's bone it was made of, but he didn't see any special aura flowing from it. It looked no different from something ordinary. The dimensional crystal was a primordial energy skill crystal. The shadow inside was in the form of a jade lute. It looked somewhat gorgeous but he had no idea what level this primordial energy skill crystal was. He could only use his mysterious phone to check when he returned. He was afraid that the flower would take a fancy to his mysterious phone if he took it out. How do I use this bone flute? Jowen put away the dimensional crystal and asked while holding the bone flute. When you see him again, use all your primordial energy to blow the bone flute. When the time comes, it will naturally be of use. However, let me tell you, this bone flute can only be used once. Don't use it randomly. The Darch said. Seeing that she wasn't willing to say more, Jowen had no choice but to put away the bone flute. When he reached the foot of the mountain, he saw that the diesel dynamo and diesel oil had disappeared. He did not know where they had gone. The flower didn't make another sound and ignored Jowen. This suited Jowen's intentions as he rode the mutated stone chi out of Chess Mountain. After he left Chess Mountain, he hurriedly took out his mysterious phone and snapped a picture of the dimensional crystal. This shocked him. The dimensional crystal was a mythical primordial energy skill crystal. Chapter 420 Mythical Primordial Energy Skill Jade Loot Crystal, Mythical These few words made Zhou Wen's heart tremble, and he nearly shouted out. However, just as Zhou Wen was about to put it into his phone, a notification popped up. Requires 41 constitution. 21 spatial stat, spatial type life providence, spatial type life soul. Insufficient stats. Unable to absorb. Not only does it have a special stat requirement, but it also has a life providence and life soul requirement. I've never seen a spatial stat before, and I have no idea where to get it, and it asks for 41 constitution. 
That also means that I basically can't master mythical primordial energy skills at the epic stage, because the highest epic experts can only reach 40 constitution. Zhou Wen couldn't help but feel depressed when he saw this. The life providence and life soul requirements were likely satisfied with his god fiend life providence and lost country, but the stats were indeed a little troublesome. The requirements were too high, but he ultimately had a chance of absorbing it. Unlike ordinary people, who didn't even have a chance. A. Zhou Wen naturally didn't plan on selling it. Since he could use it, he naturally had to keep it for himself. When he obtained enough stats, he could absorb it to gain insights into a mythical primordial energy skill. Just the thought of using a mythical primordial energy skill at the epic stage thrilled him. After putting the crystal into the chaos space, Zhou Wen looked at the bone loot in his hand. The crystal that the flower randomly produced was at the mythical stage, so it would definitely be of great use. Since she said he could only use it once, Zhou Wen didn't attempt to try it. He used his phone to snap the loot, but his phone didn't react. After putting the bone loot into the chaos space, Zhou Wen thought of something. The chaos bead had the first order of chaos in it, and he had gained a basic mastery of it. However, he didn't continue cultivating it. However, this primordial energy art was most likely spatial in nature. It was somewhat similar to the God Fiend era. Zhou Wen had too many primordial energy arts, and he really didn't have the energy to study the first order of chaos. However, now that he thought about it, having more didn't disadvantage him. Those mythical primordial energy skills had requirements on life providences and life souls, so it might be useful in the future. Of course, that was just what Zhou Wen thought. He no longer had the energy to study the first order of chaos. He needed to condense the other life souls before advancing them to the perfect body. If he couldn't break through to the mythical stage, it wouldn't be too late to study it again. Although he had taken the flower's bone loot, Zhou Wen didn't plan on using it. The flower said that the bone loot could help him against his enemy, but Zhou Wen wasn't sure what the actual situation was. If it was the key to unsealing Chess Mountain, wouldn't he be in deep trouble? Before he returned to the encampment, Zhou Wen's phone rang. He saw that it was a message from Wang Lu. The message had been sent quite some time ago, but Zhou Wen hadn't received it because he was out of reception. Do you need any help? Wang Lu's message was very simple. I can handle it. I'll return after settling this matter. Zhou Wen replied. Soon, Wang Lu replied. I'll wait for you. You need to make up for the breakfast that you owe me. How do I make up for this? Won't I be always buying? If breakfast isn't enough, use lunch to make up for it. All right. After chatting a little with Wang Lu, he realized that the Darch had actually sent a message. It looked like her phone had been charged. Zhou Wen found it somewhat odd as he thought to himself, it's just a flower. How did it use the dynamo? Opening the message, he saw that she had sent an emoji. She's really quick to learn. She can even use emojis. Zhou Wen didn't reply, afraid that she would just keep chatting with him. It would take away all his time from other matters. Seeing that Zhou Wen didn't reply, the Darch sent a series of emojis over. Zhou Wen naturally ignored her. After a while, the Darch asked, Did I use the emojis wrongly? Why aren't you answering me? Typically, people who have nothing to do will use emojis. I didn't think it was important seeing that you just said emojis. In high school, a female classmate had added Zhou Wen as a friend and would occasionally send him an emoji. Zhou Wen never replied because he had no idea what the expression meant, nor did he know how to reply. Oh, I see. The Darch suddenly understood. Now that you have an electric generator, you don't have to worry about not having enough power. You can go online to watch television dramas or something. It's very interesting. Zhou Wen hurriedly introduced a few classic comedies to her. Zhou Wen thought to himself, if she watches those television dramas and gets influenced by the characters and concepts in the television dramas, it would be great to have her turn into a clowning idiot. At the very least, she wouldn't have the thought of killing humans again. I'd have done so much good. All right, I'll go take a look. Remember to pay for my number service. If they cut off my service, you're dead. She even knows about service payments. Zhou Wen was exasperated. Fortunately, he had just received benefits from her, so he didn't care about the amount of money. Furthermore, he had saved quite a lot of money on his phone previously. As long as she didn't crazily make phone calls and use the internet, he didn't need to pay a single cent this year. It was unknown if the, the Arch had started watching a television drama or not, but she didn't send any more messages. It made Zhou when he was a sigh of relief as he sped back to the encampment. Lu Su came to look for Zhou when again in the evening, but she realized that he hadn't returned. Just as she was about to return, she saw Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen! Lu Su called out. Dr. Lu, are you staying here too? Zhou Wen walked over and asked. I don't live here. I came here especially to find you. Lu Su said. You are looking for me. What's the matter? Zhou Wen looked at Lu Su in puzzlement. 
Why didn't you report to the medical team? Lu Su asked. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and said, To be honest, I'm actually not an intern doctor. This identification is only for convenience. That's not important. Since you already have the identity of an intern doctor, you should do something that an intern doctor would do, right? I've been researching rashes all this time, hoping to solve this virus, but the progress isn't that great. Can you tell me what medicine you used? If your medicine needs to be kept confidential, you don't have to tell me the exact composition. I just want to know if antibodies will be formed after using your medicine. Are there any negative side effects? If it can form antibodies, and it doesn't have any negative effects, I hope you can produce some. I'll apply for funds to buy it as a vaccine for the soldiers. This way, it will greatly reduce the casualties, and it will be of great help for the combat situation in the future. Even if it doesn't form antibodies, I hope to buy a batch for backup. Lu Su rattled off. Chapter 421 Mythical Companion Bios Dr. Lu, I'm really sorry. I didn't use any medicine. In fact, what I used to treat those soldiers is the ability of one of my companion beasts. As for antibodies, I'm not sure either. I don't know how long the effects of the companion beast's skill last. Although I wish to help you, there's not much I can do. If a soldier suffers from such injuries, you can call for me at any time, Jowen said. Lu Su was somewhat disappointed when she heard Jowen. Companion beasts' primordial energy skills were typically temporal. They were of use at the time in question, but would not be of any use once the period was over. They also wouldn't form any antibodies. In this era, companion beasts are becoming more and more widespread in medicine. To have such a companion beast is already a good condition for becoming a doctor. Are you interested in learning some medical knowledge from me? Lu Su felt that it would be a waste for Zhou when to not be a doctor with such a companion beast. Zhou Wen shook his head and said, I'm really sorry. I still have many things to do. I usually don't have much time. Although Lu Su was somewhat disappointed, she didn't say anything else. Since Zhou Wen had the ability to heal the rashes, this was already an unexpected harvest. It could reduce many casualties. This matter didn't end there. After a few days, Lu Su would realize that the soldiers who had been injected with the poison had become immune. Even if they were stationed by the river, they wouldn't give rashes again. Although Dr. Darkness was only at the epic stage, he was no ordinary companion beast. Regardless of his background or abilities, he was very special. Zhou Wen returned to his dorm and finally had a good sleep. Once he woke up, he headed to the underground sea to deliver a palm strike to the Black Dragon. The Black Dragon already had several poison boils formed from palm imprints. Although the poison boils had yet to take its life, it was clear that the Black Dragon's mental state was no longer right. If the other eight Black Dragons were like muscular young men, then this Black Dragon was like an old man in his twilight. Its movement slowed down significantly, and it looked rather muddle-headed, as if its mind was no longer clear. From the looks of it, the poison has had a huge impact on it. However, it's unknown how long it will take to poison it to death. Zhou Wen was most looking forward to having a Black Dragon companion beast drop. This fellow had its speed, and strength greatly weakened due to its chains. Once the restrictions were removed, Zhou Wen would be killed by the Black Dragon in less than a minute. The difference was too great. If he could obtain the Black Dragon as a companion beast, he might be able to have a true mythical fighter, and not need to slowly nurture his companion beasts like Banana Fairy. Although it was somewhat fun to nurture them from the beginning, their combat abilities were indeed lacking. Furthermore, it was too slow. Tyrant Behemoth was still at the legendary stage, and it was unknown when it could advance to the epic stage. For two consecutive days, the Darch didn't send any messages. Zhou Wen could finally read and game in peace. However, Zhou Wen had almost wiped out all the mortal monsters in the game dungeons. There was no point in continuing the grinding. All he could do was continue reading. Has Jack given up? It's been a few days, but why hasn't anything happened? Zhou Wen didn't make any progress while reading, so he began thinking of Jack. To fight such a fellow was terrifying but he had a faint sense of excitement. Back then, Zhou Wen felt that his train of thought had become much clearer, and his thoughts had become more lively and spirited. At that moment, Jack couldn't control his excitement. In front of him was an elderly with a head full of white hair. The old man looked like he had dementia as he sat there motionless. However, he emitted a strange sanguine glow. His eyes shimmered with a red light. The blood hex clown possessed the old man and replaced his will to control his body. Even his memories were controlled. Jack discovered a huge secret from the old man's memories. This old prisoner actually had a mythical companion beast. He had never told anyone about it, and had paid a huge price to nurture it to the epic stage. He originally imagined that he could become an overlord by relying on his mythical companion beast in the future, but too many resources were needed to advance a mythical companion beast. He couldn't afford it, so all he could do was use his position to his advantage, and get some information. 
However, just as he nurtured his companion beast to the epic stage, his crimes were discovered. The Special Inspector Bureau secretly arrested him and imprisoned him in heaven. Because his position was special and the object of corruption was a special item that couldn't be handled openly, the Bureau had taken custody of the case. As he was only a corrupt criminal, the Bureau merely questioned him as per usual, without wasting too many resources. The Elder hung on and didn't reveal the matter regarding the mythical companion beast. This time, he had been sent to Jack by Shinyuchi. Originally, it was because he had a companion beast that could change colors for concealment. Jack had specifically asked for it. To his surprise, Jack actually discovered the biggest secret in his memories. He couldn't help but be overjoyed. What a fool. To be so easily caught by the bastards at the bureau despite having such a mythical companion beast. He's trash even with one. However, this has ended up benefiting me. Jack didn't hesitate any further as he activated the Blood Hex Clown's ability. He controlled the elder's body and made him pay with his life to transfer the companion beast to Jack. When the man fell like a desiccated corpse, a strange tattoo appeared on Jack's arm, a purple cat-shaped tattoo. Shinyuchi, you might have considered all possibilities, but you probably never expected that I would be this lucky, right? With this mythical companion beast, the restriction you left on me can no longer restrain me. After I enjoy the beauty feast, I will definitely go to the capital and kill every one of you in the bureau. Jack looked at the purple cat symbol on his arm, as the excitement on his face intensified. When Jack snatched the old man's mythical companion beast, Shouwen also wore a look of delight. After waiting for so long, the fruit on the dead man tree had finally ripened and dropped. The phone automatically vibrated as Shouwen obtained the fruit in game. When the blood-colored avatar caught the fruit, a notification popped up on his phone. Mythical companion egg, do you want to incubate it? Mythical companion egg, Shouwen was pleasantly surprised and delighted. Although he had already guessed it, Seeing a real mythical companion egg excited him greatly. He hurriedly checked the mythical companion egg stats. Chapter 422 Demonic Neonate Demonic Neonate, Mortal, Evolvable Life Providence, Child of Dimension Life Soul, Supreme True Demon Wheel of Destiny, 1 Spin Strength, 11 Speed, 11 Constitution, 11 Primordial Energy, 11 Talent Skill, Demonic Sword Companion Form, None What's Going On? Shouwen was dumbfounded, momentarily unsure of the situation. The stats of the demonic neonate were really strange. Shouwen originally believed that he could directly hatch a mythical companion beast. After all, he had Dr. Darkness as a precedent, but apparently, things didn't turn out the way he expected. From its mortal stage and evolvable postfix, it was likely the primordial state of a mythical companion beast. Even so, mythical creatures wouldn't possess a life providence and life soul at the mortal stage. They had to slowly advance before condensing them. However, the demonic neonate actually had a life providence and life soul at the mortal stage. There was also a wheel of destiny that Zhou Wen had never seen before. Although he had no idea what was going on, Zhou Wen still hatched her. After absorbing plenty of primordial energy, the purple copper companion egg transformed into a stream of light that fused into Zhou Wen's body, turning into a thumb-sized, purple-haired baby girl symbol that appeared on his arm. Zhou Wen summoned the demonic neonate. It was about 40 centimeters tall, the size of a doll. It had long purple hair. It wore purple armor while hugging an ancient purple copper sword. Zhou Wen saw that her face was no different from the fierce girl. However, her figure was much smaller, about the size of a baby. He sized up the girl and the girl also glared at him with widened eyes, as though she was sizing him up. It made Zhou Wen feel a little frightened. The companion eggs produced on the dead man tree just grew in oddness. Dr. Darkness was already shocking enough. But this recently hatched dead man tree seemed to have a mind of her own. With a thought, the demonic neonate received his order. She carried the ancient sword in her arms and walked to a table beside him. With a light leap, she landed on the table and poured Zhou Wen a cup of tea. Zhou Wen immediately relaxed when he saw that she was as obedient as the typical companion beast. He got her to do some more things and the demonic neonate did it according to Zhou Wen's instructions. Although it's a little strange, it shouldn't be a problem. Zhou Wen unsummoned the demonic neonate and took out his phone to enter the game dungeon. After some choosing, he chose the Myriad Buddha Cave in Dragon Gate Grotto. After entering, he summoned the demonic neonate. Most of the monsters in the dungeons had been killed by Zhou Wen. There were still some scattered golden warriors in Myriad Buddha Cave, which Zhou Wen couldn't be bothered to waste time finding them. Now, he could use them to test the strength of the demonic neonate. After searching for a while, he finally found a golden warrior. Zhou Wen gave the order for her to kill it, and waited to see if she could do it. The golden warrior was at the legendary stage, and its defense was astonishing. As for the demonic neonate, it was only at the mortal stage. Logically speaking, 
the baby shouldn't be a golden warrior's match. However, a demonic neonate had a life providence and life soul, something ordinary legendary creatures didn't possess. Zhou Wen brought her here to see if her life providence and life soul could be used. The demonic neonate didn't move after receiving Zhou Wen's order. She stood there with the ancient sword in her arms as she looked at the golden warrior. Is she afraid? As Zhou Wen was thinking, he suddenly saw the ancient sword in the demonic neonate's arms automatically leave the scabbard. It transformed into a purple beam that flew out. Even Zhou Wen didn't see the sword beam clearly. The golden warrior was actually split into two by the sword beam. It dropped a dimensional crystal and dissipated. The flying sword circled around before returning to the demonic neonate scabbard. What a powerful primordial energy skill. It's definitely not at the level of a mortal primordial energy skill. It's even stronger than my transcendent flying immortal. Logically speaking, it should expend a lot of primordial energy. Primordial energy at the mortal stage isn't enough to sustain such a powerful primordial energy skill. How did she do it? Shouwen was alarmed as he constantly sized up the demonic neonate. After some thought, Shouwen unsummoned the demonic neonate and entered the extremely vast Shuolu battlefield. Shouwen ran very far in game before finally finding a surviving chi, he summoned the demonic neonate and tried to get her to kill it. Although the chi wasn't as powerful as the mutated stone chi, it was still top-notch at the epic stage. The demonic neonate continued hugging the ancient sword and coldly looked at the chi that was rushing towards them. When the chi was close to her, the ancient sword in her arms automatically unsheathed itself and slashed at the chi with a purple beam. The chi let out a roar as black smoke condensed into a dragon life soul. It spat out black smoke at the purple glow, hoping to block it. Joan had seen the black smoke's might, but the purple sword beam directly split the black smoke, slicing both the life soul and chi into two. Zhou Wen was dumbfounded as he watched the ancient sword return to its scabbard. The demonic neonate held the ancient sword, still standing there expressionlessly. This fellow is really impressive. Is this still a mortal companion beast? If she continues advancing, what kind of changes will there be? Zhou Wen felt that the advancement of the demonic neonate would definitely be different from other mythical creatures. After all, she already had a life providence and life soul, so it was hard to imagine what would happen when she evolved again. Will she condense a second life providence and life soul? Or will the original life providence and life soul be enhanced? Zhou Wen was stumped. Furthermore, the Wheel of Destiny gave him an odd feeling. It's a pity, I don't have a true mythical companion beast. I wonder if all of them will have something like that after advancing to the mythical stage. Zhou Wen wondered, but he didn't have an answer. Humans had yet to advance to the mythical stage. Only the six families had some mythical companion beasts. Zhou Wen didn't have many friends in the six families nor did he have any place to ask around. However, it was now confirmed. Although the demonic neonate was still at the mortal stage, her combat strength was far stronger than most epic creatures. With just her sword, she could probably kill most epic creatures. This is for you to eat. You have to work hard in the future. Zhou Wen handed her an epic companion egg that had dropped previously. Zhou Wen couldn't bring himself to use it to feed his other companion beasts. However, he hadn't been grinding instance dungeons recently, so there hadn't been a chance for companion eggs to drop. This was one of the companion eggs he had left inside the dungeon without picking up. To his surprise, the demonic neonate only took one glance at the epic companion egg before turning her head to the side. The cold attitude left Zhou when depressed. Please go to https colon slash slash raidred slash let me game in peace slash to read the latest chapters for free. Chapter 423 I want a person. You aren't even eating an epic companion egg? Aren't you being a little too picky with your food? Joe Wen thought to himself. If it were Tyrant Behemoth, he would have run over like a pug. Yet, this fellow didn't even bother with it. The demonic neonate remained standing there with a cold expression, without any reaction. It was as though she only moved when Joe Wen gave the order. Forget it. You will eat when you are hungry. Joe Wen saw that the phone didn't give him a hungry notification and left the companion egg in the dungeon. He could retrieve it when the demonic neonate became hungry. It's not a solution if this continues. I can't grind dungeons now, but my few companion beasts need to eat, especially Tyrant Behemoth. If it wasn't for the fact that I've hatched quite a lot of food for it, and I've been rationing just to keep it alive, I would long be out of stock. Joe and failed to come up with a good solution. All he could do was wait for the Black Dragon to die before grinding. A medical report about the soldier shocked Lu Su. The soldiers who had been saved by Joe when were healed in less than two days. The scars on their bodies would only disappear after some time, however, it didn't stop them from participating in battle. Another breakout creature appeared the day before. A large number of soldiers had participated in the encirclement, attack only to have a few soldiers splashed with the bloody water. Among them were three soldiers that Joe Wen had saved. Red rashes appeared on the other soldiers, as they fainted on the spot, 
and were dragged into the river. However, the three of them were completely fine. They were lucky to have escaped the calamity. Lu Su had someone draw their blood for tests. The test results showed that they had a high resistance against the rashes. Even if the virus entered their bodies, it wouldn't cause too much damage. Instead, it would slowly die, unable to proliferate. How did this happen? It could be said that it's a coincidence if one or two of them are like that. But all of them are like that, so there's only one possibility. Zhou Wen's companion beast ability can really make their bodies produce antibodies. The more Lu Su thought about it, the more convinced she was. This discovery excited Lu Su. Although there wasn't any medicine, Zhou Wen's companion beast's ability was more effective than medicine. If all soldiers could have such resistance, their battle at Chess Mountain would become much more proactive. At the very least, they didn't need to worry about dropping into the Blood River or fighting in it. They also didn't have to worry about getting infected with rashes if they stayed on duty for too long. This way, they could send more people to strengthen surveillance. It was easier to deal with any problems that cropped up. Previously, despite having enough manpower, as the soldiers couldn't stay by the river for long, they could only divide the manpower into several groups and switch shifts. With Zhou Wen's abilities, there was no need to go through so much trouble. They could set up more guards and expand the surveillance range. This time, Lu Su wasn't in a rush to look for Zhou Wen. Instead, she went to Qin Wufu's office. Qin Wufu was handling official matters when he heard the guard say that Lu Su wanted to see him. He stopped whatever he was doing and ordered the guards to invite Lu Su in. Although Lu Su was only in her 30s and wasn't of a high-ranking position, the medical team determined the lives of more than 10,000 officers and soldiers. Qin Wufu didn't dare to be negligent. Su Su, why are you looking for me? Qin Wufu didn't have any heirs. Furthermore, Lu Su's family had some ties with him. He always treated Lu Su as his junior. Lu Su said, Uncle Qin, I want to ask you for someone. Who would be so important to have you personally make this trip? Qin Wufu asked Lu Su curiously. After Lu Su took charge of the medical team, she did not make use of his relationship to request any conditions. However, she managed the medical team well, and the soldiers all acknowledged her. This made Qin Wufu very satisfied. Now that Lu Su suddenly requested someone, Qin Wufu was curious as to who she wanted. An intern doctor, Lu Su said. Qin Wufu found it even more strange. He looked at Lu Su and asked, The medical team's personnel are all under your jurisdiction. Why are you asking for an intern doctor from me? With that said, Qin Wufu was enlightened. You want to recruit new intern doctors? It's not that I don't wish to help you do the recruitment, but there are just too few students studying medicine now. Ever since the dimensional storms, the number of people suffering from illnesses has decreased every year, and the number of people who study medicine is decreasing. Furthermore, being a military doctor requires medical skills. Uncle Chin, there's no need to hire a new doctor. I just want an intern at the encampment, Lu Su said. An intern doctor in the encampment? Chin Wufu was slightly taken aback. He knew that Lu Su wasn't someone who would cause trouble for nothing. Since she wanted this person, the person definitely existed in the encampment. He's in the encampment, but doesn't come under Lu Su's management. Qin Wufu immediately thought of Zhou Wen. He looked at Lu Su with an odd expression and asked, Don't tell me the person you want is Zhou Wen. Uncle Qin, you really know him. That's right, I just want him. I hope that he can join the medical team as an official member. Lu Su said. Qin Wufu looked at Lu Su and asked, Why do you want him? Qin Wufu found it extremely odd. He knew very well that Zhou Wen was only an ordinary college student, and he didn't study medicine. He had also randomly filled up the document for Zhou Wen, making him an intern doctor. It was mainly to allow Zhou Wen to enter the encampment and not have to undergo training with the ordinary soldiers. With him, we can resolve a problem that has been plaguing you all this while, Uncle Qin. Lu Su said calmly. Oh, what problem? Qin Wufu looked at Lu Su with piqued interest and asked. The rashes problem. With Zhou Wen around, our soldiers won't have to be afraid of the blood-colored river or rashes. They can always be on sentry. They don't have to frequently switch shifts, and they can fight in the blood-colored river. Lu Su enunciated each word clearly. What? Are you sure? Qin Wufu stood up in shock and asked Lu Su. Lu Su was right. This was indeed a problem that had been plaguing him. Due to this problem, the military had lost at least 40% of its combat strength. It also weakened the surveillance on Chess Mountain. In the past, with Yen Jin around, even though his temper was a little strange, he was able to help him resolve these problems. Although Lu Su had the same excellent medical skills, she could not resolve these strange problems. Qin Wufu was unable to contact the missing Yinjin, and there wasn't any news from the coroner, so it gave him a headache. Now, Lu Su suddenly said that Zhou Wen could solve the problem of the Blood River. 
it surprised Chin Wufu. He found it unbelievable. The soldiers that Zhou Wen saved were all previously infected with a bout of rashes. After Zhou Wen treated them, their bodies are now immune to the Blood River. This is some experimental data I gathered. Lu Su handed the information she had brought over to Qing Wufu. Please go to https colon slash slash raydread slash let me game in peace slash to read the latest chapters for free. Chapter 424 Jack's Attack After Qing Wufu read the information, his expression turned odd. Lu Su said excitedly, Uncle Qing, with Zhou Wen's ability, our strategy at Chess Mountain won't be so passive. I'm afraid I can't give this person to you, Qing Wufu said. Lu Su couldn't help but be taken aback and asked in puzzlement. Why? Uncle Qin, don't you believe me? I can guarantee you that the data is real. Zhou Wen's companion beast's ability can effectively form antibodies. It can make the soldiers immune to the blood in the river. The side effects are also very tiny. No, Su Su, you misunderstood me. I believe in your research and information, and know that Zhou Wen might have such abilities. However, I still can't give him to you. Or rather, I don't have the authority to give him to you. Qin Wufu said with a bitter smile. You are the commander-in-chief of Chess Mountain. How can you not have the power? What background does Zhou Wen have? Could he be sent by the Federation? Lu Su asked in puzzlement. No, he should be considered a member of the Sunset Army. However, his identity is a little special, said Qin Wufu. Regardless of his identity, since he's from the Sunset Army, even if he's the overseer, he has an obligation to protect the lives of soldiers. He has the responsibility to contribute. Lu Su said sternly. If he was the overseer, that would be easy. Unfortunately, he's not, Qin Wufu said. Uncle Qin, who is he? Lu Su could barely hold it in anymore. His name is Zhou Wen. The man Madame Mon married also has the Zhou surname. What kind of status do you think he has? Qin Wufu said. Lu Su's eyes widened and she said in surprise. Madame Mon actually found such a young husband. That age gap. What nonsense are you talking about? Madame Lan's husband is Zhou Wen's father. Zhou Wen is still studying at Sunset College, and he's a student. He used to study under Wang Mingyuan for a period of time, so the Bureau is targeting him and is attempting to bring him back for interrogation. Madame Lan placed him here because she hopes that we can protect him. Now, if I were to get him to treat those soldiers, how would I answer Madame Lan if one of the soldiers comes from the Bureau and something happened? Qin Wufu berated. Lu Su was enlightened. I see. However, if that's the case, he should be more willing to help because of Madame Lan, right? Nonsense. I'm saying no. And that's final. We mustn't let anything happen to him. It wasn't that Qin Wufu didn't want Zhou Wen to help. And Sheng had repeatedly exhorted him not to let anything happen to Zhou Wen or interfere with his actions. If anything happened to Zhou Wen, Madame Lan would definitely pursue the matter, and even the overseer wouldn't be able to stop her. Qin Wufu knew that Antianzua was the most filial, so there was no way he would go against his mother. Qin Wufu knew Madame Lan's temper. Even though Madame Lan was usually easy to talk to, if anything were to really touch her bottom line, she would be an unbridled bull that couldn't be stopped. Lu Su wasn't willing to give up despite being rejected by Qin Wufu. She could clearly prevent so many soldiers from dying, so why couldn't they use Zhou Wen? Lu Su felt that Zhou Wen wasn't a foppish scion. From her observation, she found him a very gentle person who was very willing to help others. He didn't have the temperament of a scion. Uncle Qin might say no, but if Zhou Wen is willing, that's a whole other matter. Lu Su decided to convince Zhou Wen herself. After Lu Su left, Qin Wufu looked at the information in his hand and couldn't help but mutter to himself, it's such a pity for Zhou Wen. If he hadn't been embroiled in Wang Mingyuan's matter, his future would have been limitless. Now that he's being targeted by the Bureau, it's hard to tell if he can live to grow. Lu Su walked out of Qin Wufu's office and headed straight for Zhou Wen's residence. Zhou Wen was reading a book when Lu Su came and informed him of her intentions. Zhou Wen waited for Lu Su to finish before looking at her and saying, Dr. Lu, if it was in the past, I would definitely have agreed to it without question. But I probably can't agree to it now. Lu Su sighed and said, I can understand. After all, you have been targeted by the Bureau. If you interact with the soldiers too much, it will give the Bureau an opportunity. Zhou Wen shook his head. I'm not worried about my safety. I'm just afraid that the soldiers will be implicated by me. Lu Su didn't say anything else. She felt that Zhou Wen's words were just an excuse. No matter how domineering the Bureau was, it was impossible for them to bring men to charge into a military camp and kill them. So how could they endanger ordinary soldiers? Lu Su believed that Zhou Wen was only saying this to save her dignity. However, Lu Su didn't find anything wrong with Zhou Wen's actions. After all, everyone only had one life. It wasn't wrong to cherish their lives. 
everyone had the right to protect themselves. Therefore, Lu Su didn't say a word. Although she was somewhat disappointed, she decided to return to try extracting the antibodies from the few soldiers that Zhou Wen had treated. Although doing so would take quite a while, Lu Su had no other choice. Dr. Lu, if there's nothing important, I hope you try not to come to my place in the future. If there is anything, it's better to send me a message. Zhou Wen felt that if Lu Su came over often, she might be implicated as well. A person like Jack was best at using someone's weakness. As long as it could achieve his goal, Zhou Wen believed that Jack would do anything. Don't worry. I won't disturb you again. Lu Su couldn't help but feel completely disappointed when she heard that. After leaving Zhou Wen's dorm, Lu Su was about to return to study the antibodies when she saw a man dressed in an officer's uniform walk over. The officer had his head lowered as he walked, his cap covering most of his face. Lu Su didn't see his face, but when he got closer, the officer looked up. When Lu Su saw the officer, she found him odd. The officer in front of her looked to be in his 30s, and his face somewhat pale. There were quite a number of Sunset Army officers in their 30s, but this officer clearly had the looks of someone from the West District. He was very different from the people of the East District. Although the Sunset Army also had officers from the West District, there weren't many. Lu Su ought to know all of them, but she had never seen this officer before. Just as she was about to ask, the officer raised his hand and pressed it against her shoulder. Lu Su wanted to dodge, but her body refused to obey. She immediately stiffened once the hand touched her shoulder. She couldn't move. When she opened her mouth, no sound came out. The officer smiled at Lu Su and asked elegantly, You just came out of Zhou Wen's room, right? Please go to https colon slash slash raidred slash let me game in peace slash to read the latest chapters for free. Chapter 425 Who's Surrounded? Zhou Wen had been wearing the truth listener earring. Although he was still in the room, he immediately discovered a problem. He opened the door and walked out, only to see Jack standing there in the officer's uniform. We meet again. Not bad. You have protected my ingredients well. Jack stared at Joe Wynn's body from head to toe, as though he was examining his food. Aren't you afraid of being surrounded when entering a military camp so brazenly? You won't be able to escape like the previous time. Or should I say, is this just another one of your avatars? Joe Wynn also stared at Jack as he sized him up. Jack gave a sinister smile. It's hard to say who's being surrounded. As for this being my main body or my avatar, you can guess. If you're right, I can let you choose how I'll cook you. Joe Wynn silently held the bamboo blade. He didn't want to guess or say any nonsense like, Release Lu Su. To a person like Jack, those words were meaningless. Life was probably inferior to an ant to him. To Joe Wynn's surprise, Jack pushed Lu Su towards him. Joe Wynn didn't help Lu Su up. Instead, he took a few steps back and allowed Lu Su to stagger to the ground. Lu Su was alarmed, puzzled about Joe Wynn's actions. Why wasn't he willing to even help her? She was just about to stand up when she heard Zhou Wen say, Sit there and don't move. Lu Su didn't know what Zhou Wen meant, but she knew that the situation wasn't right. Upon hearing Zhou Wen's words, she sat on the ground and didn't stand up. She had guessed that Jack was likely a member of the Special Inspector Bureau. Do we call for help? Lu Su asked Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen shook his head slightly as his eyes remained peeled at Jack. Jack laughed. There's no need to be so nervous. I did plant a life blast on her but I didn't plan on detonating it. In fact, it's not just her. In the entire camp, everyone except you has been planted with a life blast. As long as I'm willing, I can hold a fireworks party here at any time. Do you want to see it? When Lu Su heard the words, life blast, her body trembled. She clearly knew what the words meant. She also knew why Zhou Wen hadn't helped her up. If Zhou Wen had touched her just now, she might have already exploded. Zhou Wen, don't bother about me. Inform the deputy governor. We can't let such a person leave no matter what. Lu Su said through gritted teeth. It looks like you don't believe me. Jack snapped his fingers, and they heard continuous explosions in the encampment. Zhou Wen and Lu Su watched as a soldier walked over and exploded. Such explosions rang several times in the other parts of the military camp. Zhou Wen counted silently in his heart, and heard a total of five explosions. The entire military camp was in disarray. Alarm sounded everywhere. The soldiers were frantically rushing to the locations of the explosions. Lu Su looked at the blood on the ground not far away and was dumbfounded. It wasn't as if she had never seen a dead person. Many people died fighting dimensional creatures, but this was the first time she had seen someone die like this. Furthermore, Jack also said that all the people in the encampment, including her, had been planted with a life blast. Just thinking about how all the soldiers could explode in the same manner, Lu Su felt a chill down her spine and her body involuntarily trembled. Lu Su finally believed what Zhou Wen had said. 
He wasn't afraid that someone among the soldiers would try to harm him, but that he would implicate them. How did you do it? Zhou Wen's expression remained stoic as he asked Jack. He had done his research on Life Blast. It was similar to his poison dragon palm. It needed physical contact with a living medium to use Life Blast. Furthermore, the process was more complicated than the poison dragon palm. It wasn't as simple as a tap. Using ants and leaves as a medium was easy, but it wouldn't be that easy to use humans as a medium. Zhou Wen didn't believe that Jack had actually planted a life blast on everyone in the encampment. He felt that Jack was just bluffing. Perhaps only a few people had been planted with life blast. Jack said with a smile. If it were someone else asking this question, I wouldn't bother answering. But you are different. With that said, Jack extended his hand, and a purple cat appeared in front of him. It had short, purple fur, and its tail was curled up. However, its eyes were black. Furthermore, its eyes had double pupils that made it look extremely demonic. A mythical hexcat demon. Although it's still at the epic stage, and hasn't really advanced to the mythical stage, its abilities are extremely compatible with mine. After obtaining it, I don't have to personally plant a life blast. All I need to do is add life blast to its curses. Everyone that's cursed by it will be automatically planted with life blast. Jack said excitedly. The hexcat demon and his abilities were a perfect match, greatly boosting Jack's abilities. There should be a limit to the curse, right? It's impossible that this cat can curse whoever it wishes. Joan glanced at the chaotic military camp and continued speaking to Jack. Of course, there are restrictions. There is no power without restrictions. Although the Hexcat Demon is a mythical creature, it also has restrictions. However, this limitation isn't a problem for me. So now, everyone in this military camp, including this woman, has become my bargaining chip. If you don't wish for all of them to turn into fireworks, follow me obediently, Jack said. Why don't you curse me directly? Isn't that more convenient? Joe Wen asked again. Such a top-notch ingredient naturally can't be tainted at all. Otherwise, it will be a huge waste. Before making you into a delicacy, I won't let you suffer any damage. As Jack spoke, he saw Qin Wufu rushing over with a group of epic officers. With such strange explosions happening at the encampment, Qin Wufu immediately imagined that something had happened to Zhou Wen. If a dimensional creature from Chess Mountain had rushed out, it wouldn't have been completely silent. He could tell at a glance that the technique used was life blast. Governor Qin, don't come over, Zhou Wen said to Qin Wufu. If it was really as Jack had said, everyone would be planted with life blast. Qin Wufu and those epic officers were terrifying bombs. Exploding an epic life form's energy wouldn't be at the level of those soldiers. The entire encampment would probably be instantly flattened. Zhou Wen didn't want to be blasted to death. Is he from the Special Inspector Bureau? Qin Wufu stopped and looked at Zhou Wen and Jack, then at Lu Su sitting on the ground. Finally, his gaze landed on Jack. Although he could only see Jack's back, he was certain that he was from the Bureau. Although he was wearing a military uniform, he didn't have the bearing of a soldier at all. Please go to https colon slash slash raydread slash let me game in peace slash to read the latest chapters for free. Chapter 426 I'll leave with you. Long time no see, Qin Wufu. Jack turned around and looked at Qin Wufu. Qin Wufu saw Jack's face clearly and was immediately alarmed. Impossible. Jack, how were you released? Qin Wufu had participated in the encirclement operation of Jack. It included many of his comrades in the Federation. Back then, Qin Wufu was still in his prime. Surrounded by a group of epic experts in the Federation, he hunted the psychopath Jack. He hadn't been afraid at all. He only had the zealous ardor of getting rid of a scourge of humanity. However, as the encirclement continued, more and more of his companions were silently killed by Jack. They didn't even meet Jack at all. This made Qin Wufu realize that Jack was a terrifying devil a cunning fox, a venomous snake, and he had the necessary qualities of all evil people. He was a born devil. On Qin Wufu's back was a scar that stretched across his entire back. It was left behind by the battle. If his life providence hadn't been extraordinary, he probably would have died in that battle. Jack's name caused the faces of some middle-aged soldiers to change drastically. It was the name that their parents often used to scare them when they were young. If they made a mistake, or if they constantly pulled a tantrum, their parents would say that serial killer Jack was coming for them to eat them up. It caused a childhood trauma. Even though they had already advanced to the epic stage, hearing this name made them subconsciously fearful. An epic officer, who was about 27 years old, had clearly never heard of Jack's name. He might have heard of it before, but he had no deep impression of Jack. After all, Jack had been arrested when he was born. No matter who you are, you can't do as you please, the young epic officer said coldly. He bragged that he was a genius advancing to the epic stage at the age of 28. He claimed that he wasn't inferior to the geniuses of the six families. 
Unfortunately, he didn't know how terrifying the person in front of him was. He had also underestimated the kind of existence that left a name of devil in the history of the Federation. Jack didn't even look at him and merely snapped his fingers. Boom! The young officer's body exploded and a terrifying shockwave blasted all the nearby buildings. Although the officers reacted quickly, they were too close. Many of the officers were injured from the explosion and the surroundings were in a mess. From now on, all of you, shut up. I don't have time to waste on trash like you. Whoever dares to spout nonsense will share the same end, Jack said coldly. You he! A hot-tempered officer was about to rush towards Jack when he was stopped by Chin Wufu. Jack, what are you trying to do? Chin Wufu stared at Jack and asked. I only want him. Jack pointed at Zhou Wen and said, Follow me now. If you dare say no, I'll make everyone here turn into fireworks as the pre-celebration before my meal. Zhou Wen, listen to me. Leave this place immediately and let me handle it. Chin Wufu stared at Jack as his body shimmered. An armor appeared on him. The other officers and soldiers also summoned their companion beasts, prepared to fight at any moment. It looks like you still don't understand what's happening. Then I'll let you all sober up. Jack said as he raised his hand to snap his fingers. Jack, wait a moment, Zhou Wen said. Jack stopped and looked at Zhou Wen with interest. Why? Have you thought it through? Zhou Wen nodded and said. I understand. I'll leave with you. Zhou Wen didn't agree to leave with Jack because of Qin Wufu and company. After all, he wasn't afraid of Jack to begin with. Besides, he needed to find Jack's real body to completely eliminate him. Even if he were to attack and kill Jack, he didn't know if this was Jack's second puppet. Show when you can't. Leave here immediately, Qin Wufu ordered. Governor Qin, the entire military camp has life blast implanted in them by Jack. As the commander-in-chief of Chess Mountain, do you want everyone to die with me? Zhou Wen only wanted to leave as quickly as possible without wasting any more time. When everyone heard this, their expressions changed. If everyone was implanted with a life blast, wouldn't they explode at any moment like the young officer? That's impossible. Life blast needs contact before it can be released. We haven't seen him before. Qin Wufu said with a change in expression. You should have seen it before, right? Jack pointed at the cat at his feet. Everyone looked at the cat and their expressions changed when they saw it. They had indeed seen the cat, but they had just noticed it in passing. However, when they paid attention again, they didn't see it again. They thought they were seeing things. But now, they realized that something was amiss. Furthermore, the self-detonation of the young officer just now disheartened them. Do you want me to prove it to you? Jack said coldly. There's no need. I'll leave with you. Joan wanted to quickly escape the current situation. He had to find Jack's true body as soon as possible. How could such a dangerous fellow, who stood at odds with him, be allowed to live? This time, he dealt with soldiers who had nothing to do with him. It was hard to guarantee that the next victim wouldn't be his family or friends. Zhou Wen! Qin Wufu looked at Zhou Wen with a strange expression. Governor, please remember your responsibility. The person you need to protect isn't me, Zhou Wen, but the millions of ordinary people behind you. Zhou Wen only wanted to quickly follow Jack. If Qin Wufu were to stop him, he would only become an obstacle. All he could do was say something that pinned Qin Wufu in place, so that he wouldn't have the determination to fight to the death. However, when Qin Wufu, Lu Su, and the officers and soldiers heard this, it meant something completely different to them. Zhou Wen's image instantly became lofty in their hearts. It was like a saint sacrificing himself to save the citizens. They had no idea that Zhou Wen yearned to stay as far away as possible from them as possible. No one wanted to be with a pile of bombs that could explode at any moment. Let's go! Jack turned around and walked towards the encampment's entrance. Zhou Wen didn't hesitate to follow him. Qin Wufu gaped, but he ultimately didn't say anything. All he did was give Zhou Wen a military salute. All the officers and soldiers saluted Zhou Wen and watched him, and Jack leave the military camp. Please go to https colon slash slash raidred slash let me game in peace slash to read the latest chapters for free. Chapter 427 Slang Jack 1 I've already come out with you. Can you release the life blasts in their bodies? Zhou Wen said to Jack after leaving the encampment. Put this on. Jack handed Zhou Wen a strange chain. What's this? Zhou Wen looked at the item and felt that it resembled shackles, but it was much thinner. It wasn't as simple as simply chaining his limbs. This is the primordial trapping lock that was invented by the Bureau. It's made with primordial gold. After wearing it, it can bind all 26 spots that you might have a sea of energy. When worn, even immortals will not be able to use their primordial energy. I was locked up in one for 28 years, but this is a simplified version. The one I wore was more complicated and inconvenient to obtain. 
I've requested this from the Bureau to be specially prepared for you, Jack said. Zhou Wen looked at the primordial trapping lock and frowned. What you are doing is equivalent to making me commit suicide. Of course, you can also choose to watch a fireworks bonanza. Jack pointed in the direction of the encampment. All right, I'll wear it. Zhou Wen was actually sneering inwardly while pretending to be placed in a difficult position. This item might be useful on others, sealing their primordial energy C, but Zhou Wen didn't have any primordial energy C. If one insisted on using the concept, his entire body was a primordial energy C. Unless one directly destroyed his body, there was no way one could destroy his primordial energy C. The lost immortal sutra was one of a kind. After receiving the primordial trapping lock, Zhou Wen put it on, it was as though he wasn't wearing it. He saw chains envelop his body. In some special areas, there were 26 spots that had metal needles pierce into his body. They targeted 26 spots where primordial energy seas could be. Even the most top-notch experts in the Federation would no longer be able to use primordial energy after being bound by the primordial trapping lock. Without the circulation of primordial energy, they couldn't use primordial energy arts, nor could they summon companion beasts. Although summoning a companion beast didn't require much primordial energy, not having any made it impossible to activate the tattoo formed by the companion beast. That prevented the summoning of a companion beast. You are very strong, but unfortunately, you are restrained by the so-called morals of the secular world. You are actually foolish enough to sacrifice yourself for others. This is the only place you aren't strong enough. It's also the only thing that disappoints me. I originally imagined that you would be truly inspired by my coercion and abandon those trash to release your true self, finally to truly push your mental and physical body to the limits. I never expected you to be brainwashed by such foolish feudal ethics. It's truly disappointing. Despite seeing Zhou when put on the primordial trapping lock, Jack revealed a disappointed expression instead of joy. Isn't this what you want? Zhou Wen looked coldly at Jack. Of course not. I told you before that I wanted to see the moment when your body and mind reached their limits. Only then would you be the best ingredient in the world with no substitute. Unfortunately, your mental state is too terrible. You're extremely stupid. This gravely reduces your deliciousness, Jack said. Zhou Wen wore an amused yet angered look. He stared at Jack and said, You're such a particular person when it comes to doing evil. Should I say that you're an artist amongst evil people? Or should I say you're a jerk? It doesn't matter. I'm me. My pursuit doesn't need the understanding of others. Jack glanced at Joe and said, If I were to eat you now, it would be a waste of a delicacy. However, there's no rush. I'll soon push your mind to the limit. What are you trying to do? Joe Wen's expression changed slightly. Do you feel it? Your mind is beginning to stir. Jack looked in the direction of the encampment and continued. Now, I'll get rid of that stupid trash and stop them from being a mental obstacle for you. I'll let you recover your true self. You're a lunatic. Zhou Wen immediately understood that Jack was actually going to kill those people in the encampment to agitate him. I'm just helping you search for your true self. Jack's eyes were burning with zeal. You are a lunatic. Do you want me to become a lunatic like you? Zhou Wen stared at Jack expressionlessly. He wasn't angry, but he was judging if Jack was an avatar or the actual body. If a lunatic can be happy... Why not try going crazy? Jack said calmly, as he summoned the Hex Cat Demon. You said that you used the Cat Demon's curse to plant a life blast into everyone. It's actually fake, right? Joe asked. Why do you say that? Jack stopped and asked with interest. According to what I know, curses have all sorts of restrictions. To begin with, a curse requires a medium. And to add life blast via curse makes it even more difficult. The conditions should be even more stringent. Even the curse powers of a mythical companion beast shouldn't be so powerful that they are able to curse someone without a medium, right? Jack nodded and said, You're right. It's true that I can't curse everyone. I just curse something in the camp. Anyone who came into contact with it would be infected by the curse and have life blasts planted in them. It shouldn't be that simple. It's impossible to spread such a passive curse so easily and in such a widespread manner. Joe Wynn said with certainty. Oh, then how do you think I infected them with the curse? Jack stopped what he was doing and asked Zhou Wen with interest. You detonated a soldier before and also detonated an officer, so the item must be something touched by the soldiers and officers. Just touching it isn't enough. You need a special ritual or medium to infect them with a curse. Previously, I said that they had all been set up with life blast. You showed them the Hexcat Demon and made them believe that they were cursed by it. In fact, you had already exposed the fact that you didn't curse everyone, Zhou Wen said. Continue. Jack smiled. In the camp, there's only one thing that fulfills the conditions mentioned. After much thought, it's the logbook they sign when they hand over their duties. 
you put the curse on the logbook and all the officers and soldiers who signed it ended up completing the ritual and got infected with the curse. You said that you didn't curse me because you didn't want me to suffer any harm. In fact, it's because I didn't write my name on the logbook, so you can't curse me. You are indeed very smart. You are almost perfect. However, even if your name is on the logbook, I won't let you be tainted by the curse, Jack said. Please go to https colon slash slash raidred slash let me game in peace slash to read the latest chapters for free. Chapter 428 Slaying Jack 2 From the looks of it, I guess correctly, you are probably the real body. I never expected you to be so bold to enter the military camp with your real body. If you really detonated everyone, you probably wouldn't be able to escape, right? Joe and praised Jack. You even guessed that. How did you guess that? Jack was somewhat surprised as he asked Joan. I wasn't sure, but I'm certain now, Joan said. Jack was taken aback before he laughed. Interesting. You're really interesting. What a pity. A smart person like you actually chose to sacrifice yourself for that trash. However, it's fortunate that you did so. Otherwise, with your abilities and intellect, I wouldn't have been able to capture you. You are right. This is my real body. This is because I wouldn't be able to summon a mythical companion beast without my actual body. Naturally, I wouldn't have been able to complete those means without it. Everyone believes that I'm a despicable person who only hides in the dark. Everyone believes that I won't take risks with my real body, but I just so happen to do so. Furthermore, I came out unscathed. Isn't that very interesting? Jack was somewhat delighted. You are indeed a bold and meticulous devil. If a person like you were to live in this world, I'm afraid many people would be very uneasy. Joe inside. Others aren't within my considerations, but you should be happy. Although you will be dead, I won't let off those people who want to capture you. I'll destroy the entire bureau. It can be considered as taking revenge for you in a way, Jack said. I've been poor since I was young, so I grew up with a bad habit. I like to handle my own things by myself and don't really know how to enjoy life or enjoy being served by others. Therefore, it's best I avenge myself, Joan said. You've put me in a difficult position. I'm starving now, and I wish I could swallow a delicacy like you immediately. I can't wait that long, Jack said as he licked his lips. So I'll kill you first, Joan said as he stared at Jack. It's a pity that you've already put on the primordial trapping lock, so you don't have a chance. Jack was clearly very confident in the lock. After all, this was something that had chained him for 28 years. He had tried all possible means without a way of breaking free from the lock's imprisonment. Is that so? Showen exerted strength as the shackle that bound him instantly shattered, turning into flying shards. Jack's expression changed as he attempted to snap his fingers to kill all the people who had been cursed. He wanted to deal a mental blow to Showen. However, just as he raised his hand, he saw a flash. It was unbelievably fast as it chopped off his hand. It did not stop as it continued towards Jack's body. As Jowen had been chained by the primordial trapping lock, Jack wasn't prepared at all. He was just too close to Jowen, and Jowen was just too fast. There were probably few people who were faster than him at the epic stage, and Jack wasn't as fast as Jowen's blade. Jack suddenly turned into a shadow and escaped, but the bamboo blade in Jowen's hand was even faster. He slashed at the shadow. With a spurt of blood, a tiger-shaped companion beast was sliced into two by Jowen. The tiger-shaped companion beast's corpse and blood exploded suddenly. The strength of the explosion was much more terrifying than the full-powered attack of an epic creature. Clearly, the tiger-shaped companion beast was at the epic stage. Die! Jack dodged to another spot. In his spot, more than ten epic companion beasts appeared at the same time and were set off by Jack. A terrifying force exploded within a radius of a few hundred meters, forming a huge blast of light that shot into the sky. It could be seen from tens of kilometers away. Inside the encampment, Chin Wufu and the others saw the terrifying blast of light. They felt the ground shake as their expressions turned nasty. Something might have happened to Zhou Wen. Let's go take a look. Chin Wufu immediately led his men in the direction of the explosion. It was in the direction where Jack had taken Zhou Wen. As for the terrifying blast, it wasn't something not at the epic stage could match. Zhou Wen definitely couldn't produce such immense power. Therefore, there was only one possibility left. Jack was unleashing his powers. Lu Su rushed in the direction of the explosion with the rest. She was extremely depressed. She still remembered that she had written Zhou Wen off as being afraid of death when he said that he didn't wish to implicate the soldiers. However, in order to preserve their lives, Zhou Wen chose to leave with a serial killer like Jack. His outcome was obvious. Lu Su knew that there was hell ahead of them. A youth who was still schooling had bravely chosen to walk towards hell for the sake of these soldiers. 
This made Lu Su feel ashamed and touched. Zhou Wen, don't die. This was Lu Su's heartfelt prayer, as well as the heartfelt pleas of many chess mountain soldiers and officers. The moment Zhou Wen left with Jack, Zhou Wen was no longer an ordinary name in their hearts. Jack glared at the spot of the blast. He was extremely conflicted. He didn't wish for Zhou Wen to die just like that. From his point of view, this was a waste of good food. However, at that moment, he really felt that his life was under a serious threat. He had subconsciously used all his strength. Compared to delicacies, his life was more important. Jack stared intently at the spot where the blast had gone off. Although more than 10 epic creatures self-destructed at the same spot, and the might was enough to kill any epic creature, Jack was still worried. He couldn't feel at ease without seeing Zhou Wen's corpse. Boom! A figure rushed out from the blast, emitting light and heat into the air. It was like the sun. He held a huge sword in his hand and slashed down from above. The sword being cleaved down like a wheel of sunlight. The light was unbelievably domineering. Is this fellow a monster? The detonation of more than 10 epic companion beasts failed to kill him? Jack was alarmed, but his eyes burned with zeal. At that moment, he no longer wished to escape. Now, the thought of eating Zhou Wen burned even more. It almost devoured him. He extended his hand, and the hex cat demon transformed into a ring that appeared on his finger. Wearing the ring, Jack didn't escape and instead punched Zhou Wen's sword beam. This was clearly not Jack's style, but Zhou Wen's sword beam still slashed without any hesitation. Crack! Jack's cat demon ring and his arm were severed at the same time. Jack was sent flying, but he wore a crazy smile on his face. Curse of blood. Life change. Sanguine light burst out from Jack's body, transforming into blood-colored hex patterns. His life soul, blood hex clown, appeared on Zhou Wen's body, and immediately, Zhou Wen's body was enveloped by sanguine light as he fell from the sky. Let's see who has a more hearty life. Jack's long hair flared in the wind. The blood hex on his body rose, as he was about to activate his curse. Chapter 429, I have to make them feel the pain. Just as Jack was about to release his curse, a purple beam slashed across his back. Jack's movement froze as his raised hand stopped in midair. A head flew into the air with a splattering blood. Not far behind Jack was a doll-like girl wearing purple armor. She was standing there with a purple copper scabbard in her arms. Thud! Jack's beheaded corpse fell, and the ancient sword returned to the sheath in the demonic neonate's arms. However, Zhou Wen didn't dare let his guard down. He continued staring intently at Jack's corpse, afraid that it would turn into a puppet. Thankfully, the thing he was worried about didn't happen. Jack's corpse didn't turn into a doll. Instead, his mysterious phone vibrated. Zhou Wen took out his phone and saw the dead man tree automatically appear on the screen. He snapped a picture of Jack's corpse with the phone and his corpse and blood vanished. The blood hex clown also transformed into a red stream of light that was sucked into the phone. On the crown of the dead man tree, an additional sprout appeared. When Qin Wufu brought his men over, he saw a huge crater a few hundred meters in diameter. Zhou Wen stood in the huge crater, but there was no sign of Jack. Zhou Wen! Are you alright? Where's Jack? Lu Su asked Zhou Wen in surprise. He probably doesn't exist in this world anymore. Zhou Wen stuffed his phone into his pocket and said casually. Qin Wufu, Lu Su, and the other epic officers were shocked. What Zhou Wen said was very obvious, but they found it unbelievable. However, the reality was right in front of him. Even Qin Wufu found it difficult to produce the results of such an intense battle and explosive strength. In such a battle, there was naturally one survivor. Since Zhou Wen could stand here unharmed, Jack's outcome was self-evident. Lu Su and company were alarmed when they saw Zhou Wen standing in the crater. They found it unbelievable that an infamous, bloodthirsty murderer like Jack would be killed by a college student like Zhou Wen. Even though they didn't know how powerful Jack had been in the past, Jack had barged into the military camp alone and killed so many soldiers and officers while he chatted casually. However, they could do nothing against his ferocious might. They acutely knew how powerful he was, but he had been killed by a student like Zhou Wen. It was truly difficult to accept the truth. After returning to the encampment, Lu Su strongly requested Zhou Wen to have a physical checkup, but she found him completely uninjured. Zhou Wen's deeds became legends in the Chess Mountains encampment. The soldiers discussed his achievements, his bravery, prowess, and excellent medical skills. In Chess Mountain's encampment, Zhou Wen became synonymous with omnipotent. He was revered by many soldiers and officers. Even when Qin Wufu reported it to Antianzhua, he had used the most exaggerated words of praise, causing Antianzhua's expression to turn odd when he heard the report. Overseer, it's such a waste for such a talent to stay on campus. Please make sure Zhou Wen stays in Chess Mountain. I hope he can become the captain of the special unit. 
Xin Wufu directly voiced his request through the video call. Do you think that with his age and experience, people will acknowledge him as captain of the special operations unit? And Tianzhu asked. Don't worry, overseer. I've already asked for their views. Their opinions are unanimous. They accept no one to be their captain but Zhou Wen. Qin Wufu said immediately. And Tianzhu's expression became even odder. He pondered for a moment and said, I can't make the decision on this matter. His surname is Zhou Nanan. I'm not in charge of him. Besides, your suggestion might not even be approved by my Empress Dowager. Qin Wufu sighed when he heard that. That's true. Madame Lan probably won't let him take the risk, but it's too wasteful to let such a talent stay in school. As long as he trains for a few more years, he will definitely be able to preside over a region in the future. And Sheng stood by the side in all seriousness, but for some reason, and Tianzhu felt that he was holding back his laughter. Only after Qin Wufu hung up did and Tianzhu turn to glare at Sheng. What are you so happy about? Don't you know how many soldiers were killed? Overseer, I'm not laughing. And Sheng said solemnly. Humph, does the Bureau really think that ANS are dead? How dare they kill the infamily soldiers inside our military camp? They have to pay for this, said Tianzhu coldly. Overseer, how do you want them to pay? And Sheng's eyes turned cold. It's time to nudge the nail you buried in the Bureau, said Tianzhu. Yes, I understand what I need to do. And Sheng's eyes lit up as he said in excitement. Go ahead. Don't let them wait too long. Also, clamp down the news that Zhou Wen killed Jack. Don't let any news on Chess Mountain spread, said Ntianzhua. Even if word gets out, no one will believe that Jack was killed by young Master One, right? And Sheng said. Jack naturally wasn't killed by a student, said Ntianzhua. And Sheng immediately understood what Ntianzhua was getting at. Overseer, don't worry. Jack's death has nothing to do with young Master One. He was shot dead by our and family's army. Did I say so? And Tianzhu glared at him. No, Overseer has never said anything about that. However, if others were to think that way, you can't stop them. Anyway, this has nothing to do with young Master One, and they won't be able to pin it on him. And Sheng said in all seriousness, It's none of my business whether he's investigated. It's good if a troublesome fellow ends up dying. And Tianzhu said with a snort, Overseer, do you mean to let him stay at Chess Mountain or let him return to school? And Sheng asked, Don't ask me about his matters. Ask the person at home yourself. And Tianzhu was said without looking up. With Jack's death, Zhou Wen felt a lot more relaxed. However, his mind didn't stop working. The Bureau had actually used people like Jack to capture him. It was no different from taking his life. Although Zhou Wen's present strength was insufficient to confront the Bureau head-on, wouldn't it mean that they could bully Zhou Wen as they wished if he didn't do anything? Wouldn't they send even more people without any scruples? No, I have to think of a way. I have to let the Bureau feel the pain. Although I can't face the Bureau head-on, I don't necessarily have to fight them head-on. Just like Jack, I might be able to do something. Joe Wynn's mind raced. Joe Wynn didn't like arguing with others, nor did he like to hold grudges with others. He even found quarreling troublesome. However, he had his bottom line and temper as well. Chapter 430 Entering Chess Mountain Joe Wynn had a limited understanding of the Bureau. He couldn't do anything even if he had the intention. Therefore, he made a phone call to Nsheng and asked him for information regarding the Bureau. Young Master One, although Jack was very strong, he was locked up for so many years. His strength alone was far inferior to the Bureau's. And Sheng paused before saying, Don't worry about this. The Yin family definitely won't let this matter rest. They will definitely make the Bureau pay for it. We are already taking action. I just want to know more about my enemy. Zhou Wen didn't explain further. That's true. You will definitely have to deal with the Bureau in the future. Indeed, you should have a detailed understanding of them. Why don't you give me some time? I'll organize the information and send you a copy. It won't be appropriate passing some of the materials over the internet. And Shun said, All right. Zhou Wen wasn't in a rush. He hadn't thought of what to do either. Did you really kill Jack? And Shun asked curiously, as there were no traces of Jack's corpse on the spot. I don't know what to say. In theory, he should be dead. Zhou Wen said, then does that mean there's still a chance of survival? And Sheng asked. You don't have to worry about Jack's problem. Zhou Wen said with certainty. The reason he didn't say that Jack was dead was that he had vanished in this world because the companion eggs produced by the dead man tree were different from ordinary companion eggs. They carried things from their past lives, making them a type of clone. Zhou Wen was still very expectant of the companion beast transformed by Jack. If he could have the ability to produce life blast, it would be of great help to Zhou Wen in his future battles. Although he could use spatial trajectories to achieve the effect of a life blast, it was much less practical. It wasn't as easy or convenient as life blast. Furthermore, 
Jack was an expert in shadow escape and various curses. The only thing Joe Wynn wasn't sure of was the number of techniques he could retain after Jack transformed into a companion beast. Beep! Beep! A message came through the phone. Joe Wynn took out his phone to take a look and realized that it was a message from the Larch. I need these things! Buy them for me! A long list followed the message. Joe Wynn took a look and realized that they were all equipment, instruments, and materials related to chemistry. What do you want these things for? Joe Wynn found it odd. He remembered that he hadn't introduced television dramas related to chemistry to the Darch. For learning. The Thearka's answer was very simple. Learning chemistry? Joe Wynn was alarmed as he asked. Have you watched the television dramas I introduced? They're too fake. Too boring. The fake stuff you humans cook up is useless. Only stuff like chemistry and technology is interesting. Hurry up and buy them. I want to see those things before tomorrow's sunset. That's impossible. Many of the things you want need to be purchased in a large city. I can't get them in a small city at all. If I go to a big city, I'll take half a month to return. Showen was telling the truth. It was possible to buy something like a beaker in a typical small city, but it was impossible to buy those instruments. The Darch seemed to have learned a lot about the Federation from the internet. She probably knew that Joe Wynn wasn't lying. After some silence, she sent another message. I want you to enter Chess Mountain once. Get something inside. The Darch, you also know how weak I am. If you let me enter Chess Mountain, won't that kill me? Joe Wynn immediately sent a message rejecting the request. As long as you do as I say, absolutely nothing will happen. If you don't go, I'll make a wish to sever all your limbs. The Darch said. What do you want me to go in for? Joe Wynn frowned slightly. If the Darch wanted him to enter to break the seal, that would be a huge problem. To take a treasure from inside. With that treasure, in the future, you can pass things to me directly through the treasure. There's no need to run around again. You can save a lot of time, said the Darch. There's actually such a treasure? What is it? Joe Wynn was delighted when he heard that. From the current situation, the Darch really needed him to do errands, so it didn't make sense for her to harm him. If he could enter Chess Mountain to take a gander at the situation inside, it would be helpful when he had to clear the Chess Mountain dungeon in the future. Furthermore, there were treasures that he could take. The Darch said, It's nothing special. It's just a flower. However, that flower is growing inside Chess Mountain. You have to enter the belly of the mountain to take it out. I can't help you take it out. Is it really not dangerous? Showen was still somewhat hesitant. Chess Mountain is indeed very dangerous, but as long as you follow my instructions, there won't be any danger. Unless you have a death wish and choose not to listen to my orders. The Darch paused and said, You don't have the right to choose. Show yourself at Chess Mountain in an hour or else. Got it. All limbs severed, right? Showen added. Although he was unwilling, Showen still had to go. He had seen the Thearka's strength before. The wish force was too terrifying. Even Truth Listener's evil nullification couldn't resolve the problem. He really had to go. It's indeed bad to take risks. I won't randomly go to unfamiliar dimensional zones in the future. Joe went packed and rushed to Chess Mountain. When he saw the flower again, the Darch didn't say anything to him. He saw that there was a crack on the mountain wall from where the flower was rooted. It could probably allow someone to squeeze in. Come in! The Thearka's voice came from within the flower. Joe went gritted his teeth and crawled into the crack by turning sideways. The crack was narrow, so all Zhou Wen could do was slowly walk sidewards. The further he went in, the darker it became. Soon, it was pitch black. Thankfully, Zhou Wen had truth listener, so he knew of the surrounding situation. It wasn't that terrifying. After walking for quite some time, the rift finally opened up. Zhou Wen realized that in front of him was a huge space. Zhou Wen was in the middle of the mountain belly. And at the bottom of it, there was a massive, strange building. Joe Wynn had seen quite a number of ancient architectural maps, but this was the first time he had seen such a building. It had layers that resembled stairs, but they were extremely huge. Each layer was similar to a huge square. At the very top was an ancient building. There was a rainbow-colored treasure halo that surged up into the sky, illuminating the interior of the mountain belly. Chapter 431 Treasure Trove The seven-colored treasure glow surged up from within the ancient building, but at its foundation, blood like liquid seeped out. The underground river flowed through the foundation and brought away the blood like liquid, immediately turning into a blood-colored river. Now, Joe Wynn finally knew why the river outside was blood-colored. It was because of this strange building. Upon closer inspection of the foundation of the buildings. Bleeding. Joe Wynn's expression changed slightly. The bottom of the foundation was actually made of countless skulls and bones. It was as if countless skeletons had been poured into cement. Just looking at it made his scalp tingle. 
crawl down while keeping close to the mountain wall. Remember, don't ever leave the mountain wall or fly. You have to keep your feet on the ground. The Fiarka's voice sounded, but it wasn't a real voice. Instead, it sounded in Zhou Wen's mind. Don't tell me that the flower you mentioned is in that ancient building? Zhou Wen whispered as a probe. As expected, the Darch heard what he said. That's right. After you reach the bottom of the mountain wall, you can swim into the river. Remember not to take the staircase right in front. Swim to the left. There's a hole there. You have to enter from there. There shouldn't be any strange creatures in the river, right? Joe Wen looked at the blood-colored river beneath the ancient building, feeling a little uneasy. Of course there are. You haven't used that bone flute yet, am I right? When you enter the water, bite the bone flute with your teeth and swim forward. No matter what you see or feel, don't panic or speak. You just have to follow my instructions and swim forward. What else is there to take note of? Can you finish it in one go? Zhou Wen said gloomily. That's all. You can go now. The Darch said straightforwardly. Zhou Wen took out the bone flute and bit it with his teeth before climbing down. Although the river was blood-colored outside, color was the only thing it had in common. There was no smell of blood. However, things were different inside. The more Zhou Wen crawled down, the stronger the smell of blood. It was almost intolerable. When he reached the bottom, the smell of blood almost made him want to vomit. After taking a look at the river that resembled blood and the skeleton foundation that was bleeding in the distance, Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and jumped into the water. He had high poison resistance and had injected himself with Dr. Darkness's poison several times, so he wasn't afraid of being poisoned by the river. Even so, Zhou Wen felt his skin itch after entering the water. Although he had already put on the mutated stone she armor, the armor still had some gaps. It couldn't stop the blood like water from seeping in. Thankfully, other than the itch, there was no other reaction. Only then did Zhou Wen feel a lot more at ease. He sped up and swam to the left of the building. As he swam, Zhou Wen suddenly felt something float up from beneath the blood-colored river and approach him. That thing was a massive object. Its entire body seemed to be trembling with some kind of power. Truth Listener could hear its existence, but it was affected by the tremors. It couldn't hear its exact appearance, but it felt humongous. Don't stop, don't speak, continue swimming. Don't panic, unless you want to die. The Thearka's voice sounded in his mind again. At this point, Zhou Wen could only continue swimming forward, but he kept his ears pricked up. He felt that the thing underwater was just beneath him. The thing was unimaginably huge spanning a probable hundred meters in length. He didn't know what it was. The asterisk am in you flower, don't you harm me. Zhou Wen thought to himself. He felt like the thing was about to touch his body. Furthermore, many things like seaweed or tentacles had already touched his body. Don't stop, continue swimming. Ignore it. The Fiarka's voice rang again. Zhou Wen could only listen to her and continue swimming forward, but soon, he realized that there were many red things tearing out of the water around him. The things were the thickness of a thumb. They resembled seaweed or tentacles that crawled out from the water, occupying the hundred meter long river. When Zhou Wen's body touched the items, he found it soft and sticky. He had no idea what it was. Continue swimming and don't worry about them. It doesn't matter even if you touch them. The Thearka's voice sounded in Zhou Wen's mind again. Zhou Wen felt his entire body itch. He knew that it definitely wasn't harmless as the Darch had said. At the very least, these things were definitely poisonous. It was only because his poison resistance was high enough. If it were someone else, they would have sunk to the bottom of the river long before now. He swam in the red objects with the bone flute in his mouth. This wasn't swimming anymore. He felt like he was crawling on the red objects. Thankfully, other than feeling itchy, the objects didn't attack him. Zhou Wen crawled all the way to the left of the ancient building and crawled a few hundred meters, but he didn't see the hole that the Darch had mentioned. You're there. About three meters down. Dive in from here, the Darch suddenly said. Holy sh asterisk t, I definitely won't come again even if I'll get all five limbs severed. Zhou Wen gritted his teeth and peeled away the red seaweed-like objects. He swam through the blood which had a smell that made him feel like vomiting. The red objects kept trembling, severely affecting truth listeners' hearing. Zhou Wen dived through the red seaweed and searched for a while before finally finding the hole that the Darch had mentioned. The cave was about the same size as a dog hole. Zhou Wen's head was just able to enter, so he barely managed to squeeze in. There was a tunnel behind him that was flooded by the river. Thankfully, the red seaweed wasn't here. Truth listener could probably hear the situation inside. Don't surface yet. Just swim underwater according to my instructions. You have to be careful now. You have to stick to the stone slab right below. If those things outside discover you, you're dead. The asterisk am in it. Zhou Wen had the urge to curse. But since things had come to this point, 
there was no other way. All he could do was carefully swim forward while keeping close to the stone slabs at the bottom. The tunnel below was connected in all directions. Joe and swam forward according to the Thearca's instructions. At the same time, he remembered the path he had taken, making it easier for his next venture here. He definitely wouldn't come back in person. However, he still could continue exploring in game. Thankfully, Joe had learned the Nine Dragons art. His ability to hold his breath underwater was far greater than the average epic expert. If it were an ordinary epic human, not only would the poison in the water prevent them from swimming underwater for so long, but they would probably have already surfaced to catch their breath. All right, there's a stone staircase up ahead. Just go up with the stone staircase. After swimming for quite some time, he passed through many flooded tunnels. Just as he needed to take a breath, he finally heard the arch telling him to leave the water. Joe had rushed out of the water along the stone stairs, gasping heavily for his breath. However, while panting, he couldn't help but hold his breath when he saw the scene in front of him. At the end of the stone steps was a stone platform. On it was a small mound of dimensional crystals that glittered like a mountain of treasure. Chapter 432 Dear Terrace Pavilion He didn't use his phone to take a picture, but from the terrifying fluctuations emitted by the crystals, he knew that they were definitely not ordinary. Walk around the treasure platform and head behind it. The Thearca's voice rang out in his mind again. Can I take some of the crystals here? If I need to buy anything in the future, I don't have to ask you for money again. Joe Wynn asked as he swallowed. Even he couldn't help but feel his heart race as he faced the mountain of high-level crystals. If you don't want to live, go ahead and take them. If you want to stay alive, stay away from them and don't touch them, the Darch said. Stingy. Joe Wynn muttered as he circled around the mountain of crystals. When he walked to the back of the crystal pile, he saw a strange creature sprawled on the crystal pile. Its body was curled up as though it was sleeping. The creature was golden in color and looked like a pangolin, but it seemed different. What dimensional creature is that? Joe Wynn asked as he looked at the pangolin sprawled on the crystal pile. Since the Darch hadn't warned him to be careful, there shouldn't be any danger. In the words of you humans, it's a mythical creature. It's called a wealth conserver. It devours any greedy creature that tries to take its wealth, the Darch said. Mythical creature, why didn't you say so earlier? Joe Wynn's expression changed slightly as his voice deepened. As long as you don't touch those crystals, it won't wake up. Why would I talk about it? The Darch said matter-of-factly. Joe Wynn was secretly alarmed. If he hadn't listened to the Darch and had greedily taken the crystals, he would have been in big trouble. Behind the treasure platform was a stone staircase. Joe Wynn walked down the stone steps and entered a hall. He saw many strange stone sculptures of various strange beasts in the hall. They were ancient and majestic, but there was nothing special about them. However, they all had different colored eggs in their mouths. Are those our companion eggs? Zhou Wen looked at the two rows of stone sculptures on both sides of the hall. Each stone statue contained a companion egg in their mouth. That's right. In your human words, those are mythical companion eggs, said the Darch. Mythical companion eggs? What kind of place is this? Why are there so many treasures here? Zhou Wen asked in surprise. There were at least ten stone statues and all of them had mythical companion eggs in their mouths. This made it a little terrifying. Didn't you go to school and learn the history of the East District? The Darch said in disdain. What does this have to do with me learning history? Joe Wynn asked. Since you studied history, you should be able to recognize Dear Terrace Pavilion when you see it. This is a unique building in the world. The Darch said. Dear Terrace Pavilion? The Dear Terrace Pavilion that a tyrant built after expending all his country's resources and oppressing the citizens? Joe Wynn was terrible at history. He only studied to deal with the examinations, but he had also heard of Deer Terrace Pavilion because it was just so famous. Back when the tyrant built Deer Terrace Pavilion using the entire nation's strength, he had hidden countless rare treasures in it. He reveled in eating, drinking, and having fun in it. It was excessive extravagance and debauchery. It even left Joe when somewhat envious. That's right. This is the legendary Deer Terrace Pavilion. However, the effect of the Deer Terrace Pavilion isn't as simple as storing treasures as you humans say. Then what's it for? Joe Wynn asked. The Darch gave a strange laugh and said, You must have seen the movies and films regarding the Deer Terrace Pavilion, right? One of them talks about a fox demoness that invited immortals to descend to the mortal world to drink and eat at Deer Terrace Pavilion with the tyrant, right? I've seen that, but they weren't actually immortals. They were all manifestations of demons that the demoness invited. Joe Wynn said after some thought, Although the plot isn't very realistic, it's still slightly relevant. The Deer Terrace Pavilion's usage is related to dimensional creatures, so it can also be considered as inviting demons, the Darch said indifferently. Can I take these companion eggs away? 
Zhou Wen asked as he stared at the companion eggs. They were all mythical companion eggs. Any one of them could be sold at an astronomical price. Even if he didn't sell them, he could use them himself. What do you think? The Darch asked. Forget it, I can't take it. Zhou Wen said helplessly. Then why aren't you speeding up? There's a flower pot on the right side of the hall. That's the thing you are here for. The Darch urged. Zhou Wen followed the location that the Darch had mentioned and indeed saw a flower pot in the corner. It looked very inconspicuous, a shiny clay pot. There was a flower planted inside. It lazily grew two leaves and a flower. The flower looked like a morning glory flower. It drooped listlessly as though it was malnourished and was about to wither. What are you waiting for? Why aren't you taking it away? The Darch urged again. Zhou Wen had no choice but to pick the flower pot up. He wasn't in a good mood as he could only bring out the flower pot despite seeing so many high-level crystals and mythical companion beasts. The Darch, it's not easy to make a trip here. Do you have anything else for me to bring out? I don't want to make another trip again. Zhou Wen asked, unwilling to give up. There are dimensional creatures guarding the Deer Terrace Pavilion. If you have the ability, go ahead and take whatever you want. I will not stop you, the Darch said disdainfully. Upon hearing that, Zhou Wen dismissed the thoughts of taking anything else. As he walked back with a flower pot, he asked, What's the use of this flower? Don't underestimate it. This flower has the ability to teleport. In the future, when you buy something and put it in the flower, you can teleport it to me. It's only a fixed point teleportation device? Zhou Wen was immediately disappointed. You don't have to be disappointed. In the future, if I have something to give you, I can also transfer it to you through it. It's much more convenient than your human phones. It's probably about the same as the quantum transportation device that you humans are researching without any results. The Darch said after some thought. Joe enforced a smile, but he could only hope that he could obtain benefits from the Darch in the future. Otherwise, this would be a wasted trip. He didn't benefit other than the flower pot. Joe would indignantly sized up his surroundings and saw that there was a strange nine-tailed fox's portrait engraved on the wall in front of the hall. He couldn't help but size up the portrait and said, Is this the legendary true form of the fox Demonis? That's right. If I were you, I wouldn't continue looking at her, the Darch said coldly. Why? Just as Zhou Wen asked, he felt his lost immortal sutra react as its circulation began to slow down. Almost at the same time, Zhou Wen saw the nine-tailed fox's eyes emit an evil light. Chapter 433 Demon God Bloodline Catalog Aren't you going to close your eyes? Why are you, a human, staring at the demon god catalog for so long? Do you plan on becoming a half-demon? The Darch coldly shouted. However, Zhou Wen didn't retract his gaze because of the Thearcha's admonition. He continued to stare at the nine-tailed fox symbol on the stone wall. The lost immortal sutra in him automatically circulated again. This feeling was too familiar to Zhou Wen. He had had the same feeling when learning the small perfection of Wisdom Sutra and the other primordial energy arts. Zhou Wen watched as the nine-tailed fox statue transformed into a strange black tiger. It didn't take long for it to transform into a winged cow. Then, Zhou Wen saw the stone statue on the stone wall constantly changing, producing many statues that Zhou Wen had never seen or heard before. Stop looking. It doesn't matter if you're tempting fate, but who will buy my things? The Darch was very anxious. Although she could also talk to someone on the internet, it wasn't easy to trick others into coming to Chess Mountain. There was probably no one who dared to come. Even if someone dared to come, there would be troops stationed outside. Outsiders wouldn't be able to get close to Chess Mountain. Taking another step back, even if one could get close to Chess Mountain, it would probably not be easy to find someone who could enter Chess Mountain without dying. After the Darch went online, she realized that humans were much weaker than she had imagined. Zhou Wen was already considered one of the strongest humans. Zhou Wen ignored the Darch and kept staring at the stone wall. The transformation on the stone wall had run through thousands of demon beast symbols. Zhou Wen felt that the demon beasts had different charms and auras, but he didn't see anything special. However, the lost immortal sutra kept circulating at an increasingly slower pace. When Zhou Wen couldn't remember how many demon beast stone statue symbols he had seen, the lost immortal sutra finally stopped circulating. In the next second, lost immortal sutra circulated crazily. However, the path and mode were completely different from before. It once again became a brand new primordial energy art. This primordial energy art was extremely bizarre, giving Zhou Wen a strange feeling. When he circulated the primordial energy art, his flesh trembled as though it was producing a dragon's roar. His tendons and bones roared collectively like wolves and tigers as his hair stood up like a hedgehog's spine. It ended up making him look like a dandelion. Impossible. How can a human gain basic mastery of the demon god catalog's legacy? This is impossible. In her cave, 
The Thearka's eyes widened in surprise, as though she had seen something extremely unbelievable. As Zhou Wen circulated the new primordial energy art, he obtained the information that the primordial energy art was called the Demon God Bloodline Catalog. However, Zhou Wen had only gained basic mastery of the primordial energy art. He was still far from condensing a life providence. After Zhou Wen retracted his gaze and heard the Thearka's voice ringing in his mind. Strange, why isn't there any demonization when you cultivated the Demon God Catalog? Are you not a human to begin with? It's just a casual look. How could I become a demon like that, right? Zhou Wen said indifferently. He hadn't really mastered the Demon God Bloodline Catalog. It had just been simulated by the Lost Immortal Sutra. Therefore, he didn't suffer the harm that the Darch mentioned. The Darch didn't say anything else. All she did was urge Zhou Wen to leave Deer Terrace Pavilion quickly. Zhou Wen put the flower pot into the Chaos Bead before following the path back. He walked all the way out of Chess Mountain until he emerged from the crack, only to let out a long sigh of relief. Return and buy everything I need as soon as possible. Then, send them to me through the Void Flower. The Darch instructed. After Zhou Wen returned to his dorm and camp, he heaved a sigh of relief. He decided not to risk venturing to unknown dimensional zones again. Should I think of a way to deal with the Thearka's wishes? Otherwise, I'll always be asked to do this and that. It's really troublesome. Zhou Wen thought about it but failed to come up with a good solution. In the next few days, Zhou Wen went to a nearby city to buy some common chemicals and equipment. He then attempted to teleport the items to her with the Void Flower. The Void Flower was really useful. As long as he said, open, to the flower that resembled a morning glory, its flower would form a miniature spatial portal. All he needed to do was throw the items in. The Darch was temporarily placated, but she urged Zhou Wen to hurry to a big city and buy everything she needed. Although Zhou Wen agreed, he wasn't in a rush to return to school. He spent a few more days in the military camp. He let the soldiers get infected with the rashes before injecting them with the poison to give them the antibodies. Without needing to fear the Blood River, their combat strength also increased significantly. Now, the officers and soldiers were calling Zhou when Dr. Zhou the moment they saw him. They didn't even need to say, Little. Clearly, they showed him deep respect. However, Zhou Wen wasn't used to it. He clearly didn't know any medical skills, so every time he was addressed as Dr. Zhou by the soldiers, he found it odd. And Sheng's men finally came and brought with them information about the Special Inspector Bureau. Many of them were confidential documents. And Sheng repeatedly exhorted Zhou when to immediately destroy them after he had read them. He couldn't let anyone else see them. Zhou Wen carefully studied the thick stack of information, including the detailed explanations of the Bureau's various departments. It had fine details about every department and office. Only after reading it did Zhou Wen realize that the Special Inspector Bureau had a very large range of authority. It was almost the same as the Embroidered Uniform Guard, a secret police that served the emperors in ancient China. However, the information also mentioned many of the Special Investigation Bureau's accolades. Many vile devils had been captured by the Special Investigation Bureau. They had lost many lives in the process. The initial establishment of the Bureau was to target those unscrupulous devils, as well as some Federation officials and local rich families, who secretly carried out a variety of nefarious deeds. However, as times changed, its power grew without any restrictions. The Bureau also gradually changed. There were a total of 15 branches in the Special Investigation Bureau. They were stationed in 15 important cities in the Federation, and were responsible for the intelligence and supervision of the nearby areas. There were a total of 15 ministers that handled a branch, like Xiao Siyuan, and all of them were experts at the epic stage. Furthermore, they had their own strengths, making them incomparable to ordinary epic experts. That was not all. There were even more experts in the headquarters of the Bureau. There was no need to mention Shinyuchi. Although no one had ever seen him attack, everyone who wanted to harm him had disappeared from this world. To date, there had been no known instances of anyone successfully dealing him harm. Back when Jack killed the son of the former Director General of the Special Inspector Bureau, the former Director General nearly went mad and used excessive means to capture Jack. However, due to his anger, he made a few irrational decisions and almost caused the Bureau to be destroyed by Jack. Under orders, Shinyuchi designed a plan to capture Jack and re-establish the authority of the Bureau. At the same time, he also recruited many talents, such as Chiao Siyuan. Apart from Shinyuchi, there were also the four censors from the Bureau. Every one of them was extremely terrifying as there were also some epic experts. After carefully studying the information, Zhou Wen realized that it wasn't an easy task for him to touch the Bureau. Small-scale skirmishes didn't affect the Bureau at all, nor would he make them feel pain. Chapter 434 Primordial Crystal Mine Zhou Wen felt that there was no need for a man to waste time on trivial matters, 
But once he decided on what he wanted to do, he had to be ruthless. He had to strike to kill. If death wasn't possible, he had to drill the pain into their bones and figuratively strike fear into their bones. Showen found cursing, making harsh threats, smashing things, and face slapping meaningless. Even if he were to kill two of the Special Inspector Bureau's men, even if one was a minister, it would be considered a trivial matter for the Bureau. They could just hire someone else to be the branch minister. Showen didn't have the strength to storm the headquarters of the Bureau and destroy it yet. Even an arrogant person like Jack had been locked up by the Bureau for 28 years. After he came out, he didn't immediately seek revenge on the Bureau, but followed orders to capture Zhou This proved how terrifying the Bureau was. Zhou studied it for a long time before a piece of news caught his attention. The Special Inspection Bureau was very powerful, but it was different from typical rich families. They were only a department in the Federation and were given a salary by the Federation. Although it was very easy for a department like the Bureau to earn money, Shin Yuchi had strictly forbidden corruption. At the moment, there were no cases of any such misdeeds. Zhou Wen really admired Shin Yuchi in this aspect. To be able to control such a department to this level was not something anyone could do. However, relying on the Federation's funds alone was clearly insufficient for the Bureau to operate. The Bureau's main income came from two sources. One was the sponsorship from various major corporations, and another was a primordial crystal mine. According to the information Nsheng had given him, 60% of the Special Inspector Bureau's income came from this single primordial crystal mine. Zhou Wen was no stranger to the primordial crystal mines. In the back cave, there was quite a lot of primordial crystal Oregon. As he couldn't take it out, he didn't pay much attention to it. He went to the back cave mainly to hunt poison bats. He hadn't respawned the instance dungeon recently, so all the poison bats inside had long been wiped out by him. He hadn't visited the back cave ever since. However, after reading the information on the primordial crystal mine, Zhou Wen was pleasantly surprised. The effects of primordial crystals were similar to primordial gold. They could be used to make primordial crystal weapons, and they could even create laser weapons. That type of lasers had a certain level of lethality to dimensional creatures. The value of the primordial crystal was even higher than that of the primordial gold. However, the primordial crystal deposits were usually not as high as the primordial gold deposits. The few discovered primordial crystal mines only produced a few tons every year. Zhou Wen estimated that the production of a primordial crystal mine for a year was about the same as the primordial crystals in the back cave. The Special Inspector Bureau's primordial crystal mine had rich deposits. After digging for several years, the number of primordial crystals produced was still very stable. It would probably not be a problem to mine for another 10 to 20 years. Due to the tight protection of the primordial crystal mine, there was only this little bit of information. There wasn't any specific production or storage information, but it was estimated to be quite substantial. Every time the Bureau needed money, a large number of primordial crystals would be sold. What really piqued Joe Wynn's interest was a footnote. Some earth or stone type dimensional creatures treated primordial crystal ores as food that could catalyze their evolution. When Joe Wynn saw the footnote, his eyes lit up. Without any hesitation, he took out his phone and switched to the Zhuolu Instance dungeon. He quickly arrived at the poison bat cave and looked at the primordial crystal ores that resembled stars. Zhou Wen summoned Tyrant Behemoth. Standing at 3 to 4 meters tall, Tyrant Behemoth was already like a monster. When it saw the primordial crystal ores, its eyes lit up. It let out a roar and charged forward, clawed the stone wall, and bit down. Zhou Wen was stunned when he saw Tyrant Behemoth swallowing the rocks mixed with primordial crystals into his stomach like candy. Tyrant Behemoth had no intention of stopping at all. It bit down on the nearby primordial crystal ores without end. It even chewed and swallowed many rocks. It wasn't picky at all. This fellow is indeed a monster that can eat a thousand mountains daily. Zhou Wen couldn't help but marvel. Although they were also mythical creatures, banana fairies and truth listeners' appetite was much smaller than it. As for demonic neonate, she had never eaten anything since she was born. Tyrant Behemoth was like a drilling machine. Wherever it went, it bit off a wall. He had indeed been starving Tyrant Behemoth recently because he didn't have any dungeons to grind. In order to save food, Zhou Wen waited until it was extremely hungry before giving it some food. During this period, Tyrant Behemoth hadn't even eaten half its fill. Needless to say, it had never been satiated. Now that there was food, it wasn't willing to give up. It ate crazily across the back cave. After half a day, it had devoured all the primordial crystal ores inside. Its stomach ballooned. This fellow. I really can't afford to raise him in the future. If it wasn't for the game dungeon and the primordial crystals in the back cave, Zhou Wen would have the urge to strangle Tyrant Behemoth to death. He had to kill it before it became a glutton prodigal, lest it brought disaster to the world. Suddenly, Zhou Wen saw Tyrant Behemoth burping from its satiation. Then, 
a black glow emitted from its body before it completely enveloped its body. Is it about to evolve into the epic stage? Shouwen was immediately overjoyed. If he had known that the primordial crystal ores would have such a great effect on Tyrant Behemoth, Shouwen would have brought it here a long time ago. What a waste of all those bat caves he grinded in the past. After advancing to the epic stage, should Tyrant Behemoth be able to eat even more? Shouwen's eyes flashed with excitement when he thought of the primordial crystal mine that the Bureau owned. Tyrant Behemoth kept evolving. Shouwen didn't know when it would finish evolving. However, the bat cave in game was relatively safe, so he left it there. Shouwen continued studying the information regarding the Bureau, especially the parts regarding the primordial crystal mine. The primordial crystal mine wasn't in Holy City or the capital. Instead, it was in a dimensional zone in the wilderness. However, the Bureau had already sealed off the dimensional zone, and one of the four major Bureau inspectors, Kaijin watched over it with other men. It wouldn't be easy for him to enter the dimensional zone to find the primordial crystal mine. After Zhou Wen did some studying, he realized that there were many people who had their sights on the primordial crystal mine, but none of them succeeded. The main reason was that the dimensional zone itself was very odd. The Bureau greatly relied on this oddity. The average person would die without knowing why as soon as they entered. According to the information, and Sheng and company had definitely sent people there. However, the results weren't good. There were many people sent in, but only two made it out alive. Not long after the two of them came out, they also encountered problems. One of them went mad, and the other committed suicide. The only information that the Yin family had on hand was provided by these two people. After Zhou Wen read the information, he revealed a look of delight. The place was indeed odd, but he could give it a try. Chapter 435 Stone Saver Zhou Wen carefully studied the information and Sheng had brought over, believing that the power there was likely a curse. As for truth listener, it had very strong restraints against curses. However, I still have to verify the actual situation before I can be certain. It's best if I can find a tiny palm symbol and download the dimensional zone into my phone. Zhou Wen didn't plan on immediately heading to the primordial crystal mine. Tyrant Behemoth was still evolving, so it was useless even if he went there. There was no way he could dig to mine himself. Even if he were to enter now, it wouldn't be of much use and he couldn't take too many of the primordial crystals. According to usual practice, Zhou Wen first went to the underground sea. The black dragon now had more than 10 palm imprints. Apart from the palm imprints, other parts of its body also began to produce poison boils that showed some festering. After Zhou Wen descended into the sea, the other eight black dragons attacked him, but the black dragon was in a stupor. It was as though it had almost lost consciousness from its groggy state. From the looks of it, it should be soon. Zhou Wen was delighted, hoping that something would drop after the black dragon died. After escaping the underground sea, Zhou Wen didn't immediately leave the game. Instead, he observed the sapphire-like sky, but he didn't discover anything. Previously, he had approached it only to suddenly die. There was probably a terrifying creature in the sapphire-like sky, but to date, he had failed to discover its existence. Just as Zhou Wen was about to exit the game, he suddenly saw a blue light flash across the distant sapphire sky. It was like a signal from an electrocardiogram as it flashed across the sapphire sky. The blue light came and disappeared quickly. He waited for a while, but he didn't see the blue light appear again. I wonder what it is. It should also be a mythical creature, right? Zhou Wen knew that it was useless even if he knew what it was. With his present strength, killing a chained black dragon was already so difficult. He had no chance of killing an unrestrained mythical creature. It was unknown when Tyrant Behemoth, who was in the midst of evolving in the Bat Cave, would complete its evolution. After quitting the game, Zhou Wen received a call from Insheng. Young Master One, there's a piece of good news for you. Our plan against the Bureau is about to come to fruition, Insheng said. Zhou Wen was naturally delighted to hear that the Bureau was about to be in trouble, but he wanted to personally send them to hell. Ah Sheng Jack is dead. I wish to leave Chess Mountain, Zhou Wen said. Of course you can. The Bureau likely doesn't have time to deal with you for now. I'll get someone to take you back to school tomorrow, Insheng said. There's no need. I'll head back myself. Before that, I wish to return to my hometown. Jowen said. That's fine. Even Jack isn't your match, so it's not going to be easy to find someone to protect you now. You can decide on your own. And Sheng paused before asking. What are you going back to Guide City for? You don't have any relatives there, right? There are some things at home that I want to bring back. By the way, can you obtain an entry pass to Guide Ancient City? I want to take a look when I'm back. Jowen said. That's easy. Just head there straight away. I'll make a call to arrange it. And Sheng said straightforwardly. After hanging up, Zhou Wen packed up his things and went to tell Qin Wufu about his departure. 
Not only did he want to return to Guide City, but he also had to head to the Special Inspector Bureau's primordial crystal mine. The reason he wanted to head to Guide City first was that he wanted to see if there was a stone saber in the furnace on Fire God platform in reality. In game, the stone saber was just an illusion. He couldn't touch it no matter what, so he wanted to take a look while on the way. Are you really leaving? If you are willing, you can stay here. I'll let you be the captain of the Special Operations Unit and be in charge of those people. I'll be in charge of explaining to the overseer. Chin Wufu wanted Zhou Wen to stay behind. He felt that it was a waste for Zhou Wen to return to school. Overseer, I'm still a student after all. I should still focus on my studies, Zhou Wen said. Fine then. There are indeed some impressive figures in Sunset College, especially Chancellor Lung. Calling him the strongest person beneath the mythical stage isn't an exaggeration. It'll be beneficial for you to learn more from him, Chin Wufu said. Zhou Wen nodded slightly. Then I'll be leaving now. That fast? Qin Wufu was a little surprised. There's no point in staying another night. I still have some matters to do, Zhou Wen said. All right then. However, you have to say farewell to those guys. Otherwise, they will definitely eat me up, Qin Wufu said with a smile. After leaving Chess Mountain, Zhou Wen headed straight for Guide City on the mutated stone chi. Back when he left Guide City, he was only a mortal stage youth. Now, in less than a year, he had advanced to the epic stage. He was very different from before. When he arrived at Guide Ancient City again, Zhou Wen recalled the matter of him participating in the combat test with Li Xian. It felt like something that had happened a long time ago. After entering the ancient city, he saw scattered instances of people fighting the skeleton soldiers. Zhou Wen circled around them and headed deeper into the ancient city. Although he had only visited in real life once, he had grinded the game countless times. He was very familiar with Guide Ancient City, so he arrived at Fire God Platform quickly. The firebirds on the Fire God platform naturally couldn't hurt Zhou Wen. Zhou Wen walked up the stairs, and they flocked towards him. As Zhou Wen circulated the ancient Sovereign Sutra, the firebirds automatically flew back. When he arrived at the top of Fire God platform, it wasn't much different from the game. The layout was identical, except that it was cartoonish in game. It looked cuter and more ancient in real life. There were flames burning in the mottled stone furnace, as well as a stone saber. It looked a little cruder than the one in game it was probably handmade. There were pits and natural stone patterns on the blade. Only the edge of the blade looked fine and sharp. This could be considered a partially man-made stone saber. Zhou Wen circulated the ancient sovereign sutra and summoned the ancient sovereign life soul to attach it to him before reaching his hand into the stone furnace. The flames in the furnace seemed to sense something as they automatically separated. Without burning Zhou Wen's palm, they revealed the stone saber in the furnace. Zhou Wen held the stone saber with his palm and immediately felt the roughness unique to stone. It was a little cold to the touch. He had clenched it firmly. I gripped it. The stone saber really exists in real life. Zhou Wen was alarmed. Chapter 436 Don't Cry Valley The moment he gripped the stone saber, Zhou Wen immediately felt an ancient aura emitting from it. It left his mind reeling as he involuntarily clenched the hilt. With a gentle tug, he began to pull out the stone saber. Zhou Wen immediately felt the whole of Guide Ancient City quake. Flame spewed out from the furnace as though countless lives were roaring inside. Zhou Wen's expression changed slightly, as he immediately pressed the stone saber back. Only then did the terrifying feeling vanish. This stone saber. Don't tell me it's like the jade box on Chess Mountain. It's an item that seals the dimensional zone? Zhou Wen released the stone saber, afraid to touch it. Although he didn't know the consequences of pulling out the stone saber, Zhou Wen chose not to touch it. Only when he got off the fire god platform did Zhou Wen realize that something was amiss. The skeleton soldiers had been most common in Guide Ancient City, with skeleton generals being in the minority. Now, Zhou Wen saw more than ten skeleton generals nearby. He hadn't seen them when he came in. Clearly, they had just appeared. Indeed, there are effects from my pulling the stone saber. Zhou Wen continued walking out and discovered that there were indeed many skeleton generals. It was already impressive enough to encounter one or two skeleton generals in Ancient City, but Zhou Wen ended up seeing more than fifty along the way. He had no idea how many he had missed. The appearance of so many skeleton generals delighted the garrison. They were only able to kill skeleton soldiers most of the time, but now there were so many skeleton generals. The increased drop rates naturally excited them. Zhou Wen was somewhat worried. Based on the present situation, if the dimensional zone seal was removed, the situation would be worse than he imagined. After returning to his old residence and staying the entire night, Zhou Wen set off for the Special Inspector Bureau's primordial crystal mine the next day. The dimensional zone where the mine was located was named. Don't cry, Valley. Legend had it 
that it was a very beautiful valley with a young couple living in it. The woman planted flowers in the valley, while the man went up the mountain to hunt. They led lives like an immortal couple. Once, the man didn't return after heading up the mountain to hunt. The woman waited bitterly for his return, but he did not come back. After that, the nearby villagers continued to hear the sobbing noises coming from the mountain valley. It almost never stopped. Some of the villagers were bold and entered the valley in the day. Then, they realized that the woman had been dead for a long time. Her body had dried up, and there was a knife in her abdomen. It looked like she had committed suicide. The villagers buried the woman's body and changed the name of the valley to Don't Cry. They hoped that the woman could rest in peace and stop crying. However, they could still hear the female crying coming from the valley at night. Of course, these were just legends. There was no crying inside Don't Cry Valley, but ever since the dimensional storms, cries sounded from the valley, but it wasn't from that woman. Anyone who entered the valley would involuntarily cry. No matter how hard they tried, they couldn't control themselves. If they went too deep, they would die for no reason amidst their crying. The Bureau had clearly grasped the secret of Don't Cry Valley, so they could move about freely without being affected by the mysterious force. However, the other factions had sent quite a number of people to find out the secret of Don't Cry Valley and snatch the primordial crystal mine inside. They returned without any success and many people died. This included the people from the Infamily. Only two survived Don't Cry Valley, and it was thanks to them that the Infamily obtained the information. Zhou Wen suspected that the sobbing power was similar to the power of a curse. Truth Listener was effective against curses. Therefore, Zhou Wen decided to try entering Don't Cry Valley. If he could really restrain Don't Cry Valley's powers, he would have a chance of entering the primordial crystal mine. Of course, Zhou Wen didn't take the risk to enter. Firstly, Tyrant Behemoth hadn't finished evolving. Secondly, he wanted to find the tiny palm symbol outside. If he could find it, he could give it a try in game. That would bolster his confidence. In the family of Luoyang, and Tianzhu frowned and shung and said, What do you mean that you lost contact with the brat? When he went to guide Ancient City, he still remained in contact with me. However, after that, there was zero news. It's been four days, and there hasn't been any news of him. He hasn't returned to Luoyang or guide City. There's no news of him at Chess Mountain either. And Sheng said, Then where is he? And Tianzhu asked. And Sheng pondered for a moment before saying, Overseer, I think he might have gone to the Bureau. Nonsense. What can he do in the Bureau? Does he really think that he can become an enemy of the Bureau just because he killed Jack? And Tianzhu placed the teacup on the table heavily. And Sheng said with a bitter smile, Young Master Wen might look gentle and mild-tempered as if he doesn't care about anything. However, he's extremely obstinate and unyielding like you. The Bureau keeps bullying him, so young Master Wen definitely won't let them off. He asked me for information regarding the Bureau before. He must have gone to find trouble with them. What nonsense. Becoming arrogant and conceited just because of a little achievement? He really has an exaggerated opinion of his abilities. Does he think he's invincible just by killing a Jack? And Tianzhu said angrily. Overseer, I don't think young Master Wen is a rash person. I think he has his own ideas, and he might really do something. And Shun said, What can he do? Let's not talk about Shinyuchi whom I have to be wary of. However, none of his four sensors are weaker than Jack. They are extremely difficult characters. It would be fine if he just wanted to vent his anger and kill a few of the lackeys, but if he really dares to head to the Special Inspector Bureau's headquarters, he will definitely die. And Tianzhu paused before saying, If he only kills a few lackeys to vent his anger, he would be a stupid pig. Doing something like that won't help him at all. It will only make the Bureau target him even more. Young Master Wen isn't a bloodthirsty person. He naturally wouldn't kill someone to vent his anger. And Sheng thought to himself, It's probably you who likes to kill people, right? Humph, who knows what nonsense he will do. Bring him back, said Ntianzua. Overseer, didn't you say that you don't care about him? And Sheng asked. Of course I don't care about him. It's best if he's dead. I'm just afraid that he will be arrested alive by the Bureau. Wouldn't that cause the one at home to flip? And Tianzhu glared at Nsheng and said, Go immediately. No matter what you do, you have to bring him back. Yes, I'll head to the capital immediately. And Sheng replied, Chapter 437 True Blood Demon Dragon Shinyuchi had been in a bad mood recently. One of the officers in the bureau had betrayed the bureau and stolen many secret files. The secret files contained some of the Special Inspector Bureau's operations, but these operations were held to target certain members of the six families. The exposure of these secret files immediately made the Bureau become a public target. The Bureau was originally the watchdog for the six families. For it to attempt to bite its master, the outcome was palpable. Shinyuchi was already in a terrible fix. The only thing he could rejoice about was that the inspector's rank wasn't high enough. 
The files he had stolen were only a very small part of the collective, and it did not involve any core secrets. Although the file only contained some of the less important members of the six families, Shinyuchi was still being questioned and forced to explain to the six families. For this, the Bureau had also paid a huge price. The Cape family, who Liz was part of, provided huge amounts of financial aid to the Bureau every year. In fact, the six families gave the Special Inspector Bureau the same amount of funding, but this funding was cut by all six families just before the transfer was supposed to be made. Although the excuses used were different, Shinyuchi knew very well that this was just a small warning from them. It wasn't just that. Some of the inspectors who investigated the six families had also encountered some problems. Although no one had died, Shinyuchi knew that it wouldn't be so simple if something like this happened again. And Tianzhua, your revenge came really quickly. Shinyuchi had already guessed who had done all this. Apart from Tianzhua, there was no one else. Even Jack had failed. This in family is getting more and more thorny. Just as Shinyuchi was deep in thought about what to do next, he heard a knock on the door. Director General, Northern Eye City has already agreed to our deal. This is the schedule of prices they offered. The secretary handed the document to Shinyuchi. Shinyuchi carefully looked at the schedule of prices and frowned. Why is it 30% more expensive than what we discussed previously? Northern Eye City said that the Aurora Pit produced on their side has been decreasing, so they want to increase the prices. This is the lowest price they can accept, the secretary said helplessly. What do they mean by decreasing? It's clear they know that we are urgently in need of Aurora Pit. It's just an exorbitant demand. Shinyuchi snorted coldly, but he felt somewhat helpless. He had to obtain the Aurora Pit. It was needed for the advancement of mythical companion beasts, so he had to obtain it no matter how expensive it was. After the companion beast advanced, it would be the most powerful trump card in the Bureau's hands. This was a huge matter that couldn't be delayed. However, the Bureau's current financial situation was terrible. They had originally been hoping for the funding from the six families, but now that the funding had been cut, it would be difficult for the Bureau to operate normally, much less by the expensive Aurora Pith. It looks like we could only use the primordial crystals in the reserves. After much thought, Shinyuchi could only come up with this solution. The quantity of the primordial crystal mine in the Special Investigation Bureau exceeded everyone's imagination. Even Shinyuchi didn't expect such a massive amount of reserves when he first started mining. However, Shinyuchi was not in a hurry to cash out the primordial crystal mine. Every year, he only sold a few tons. As for the large number of primordial crystal ores, they were stored in the warehouse under the mine. If he were to take out all the primordial crystal ores, the future bureau wouldn't have to worry about funding for decades. Of course, Shinyuchi would definitely not let anyone know that the Special Inspector Bureau had such a large sum of wealth. Even the six families thought that the primordial crystal mine was only an ordinary mine. Continue discussing with Northern Ice City. Try to lower the price as much as possible, Shinyuchi said to his secretary. Even though he had money, he definitely couldn't waste it. Those primordial crystals would be of great use in the future. Unless it was a last resort, Shinyuchi didn't want to use a single ounce. Yes, Director General, the secretary replied. Shinyuchi picked up the investigation report from Luoyang and read it for a while. He couldn't help but frown and say, Even Jack couldn't bring Zhou Wen back from the Yen family. So who should I send? For a moment, Shinyuchi was unable to think of a good candidate. It was even more difficult to get someone from the uncrowned king of Luoyang, the Yen family. He had imagined that Jack would be able to resolve this matter, but Jack had failed. Let's think about it carefully again. Shinyuchi had no intention of giving up. Although Jack had failed, Wang Mingyuan's matter was very important. The six families had given him an order that had to be obeyed, so he had to investigate it thoroughly no matter what. Even if he was willing to give up, the six families wouldn't. Zhou Wen slumped over a hill's peak as he observed the valley not far away with his binoculars. The valley was the legendary valley. Don't cry valley. From the outside, the entrance wasn't very big. It was probably enough for three to four trucks to pass. There were checkpoints built and patrolling details. However, these weren't key. The patrols were carried out by ordinary inspectors who were only at the legendary stage. It wouldn't be difficult for him to charge into Don't Cry Valley. In fact, many people had rushed in before, but there weren't many who left alive. The Bureau clearly didn't focus the defense on the outside. The primordial crystal mine was likely their core defense. One of the four sensors, Kai Jin, was likely stationed there. Zhou Wen wasn't too familiar with Kai Jin, but the information Sheng had given him had mentioned this person in detail. He kept a very low profile, the lowest amongst the four sensors. There wasn't much information on him other than that he was good with the saber. However, since Shinyuchi was willing to hand over such an important primordial crystal mine to him, he could tell that this person was not simple. 
drones flew past from time to time, so Zhou Wen had to hide in the shadows as he continued observing the situation in Don't Cry Valley. The distance is still too far. I can't see if there's a tiny palm symbol there. I have to get closer. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and summoned Truth Listener. He hid in the grass of the peak and let it take a look. Truth Listener was only the size of a finger, a relatively small target that the average person couldn't see. Ordinary radar wouldn't discover its existence. Truth Listener quickly ran through the grass and forests, and soon, it approached the valley's entrance. Zhou Wen's order was to let it search for the tiny palm symbol. Truth Listener didn't go anywhere near the checkpoint. Under the cover of the grass, it circled around the valley's entrance, but failed to discover anything. Since I can't find the tiny palm symbol, I have to go in myself to give it a try. Just as Zhou Wen was pondering how he should enter, his phone vibrated. Taking it out to take a look, he discovered a notification popped up in game. Killed a mythical creature, True Blood Dragon. Discovered Dimensional Crystal. Chapter 438 Demon Dragon True Body. True Blood Demon Dragon? What's that? Zhou Wen was first stunned for a second. When he realized what was happening, he was immediately overjoyed. He hurriedly took out his phone and entered the Zhuolu Battlefield Dungeon, controlling the blood-colored avatar to run towards the underground sea. The crystal that the black dragon dropped won't be swallowed by the other black dragons, right? Zhou Wen was slightly worried, but he realized that it was a game, not reality. It was unlikely that the black dragons were that intelligent. He ran to the underground sea and plunged in. Soon, he saw eight black dragons pulling the war wagon over. One of them was gone. I wonder where the black dragon died. Zhou Wen felt a slight headache, but it was likely nearby. Zhou Wen didn't dare let the blood-colored avatar die. If it died, whatever had dropped would be gone. He controlled the blood-colored avatar to turn around and draw the eight black dragons out of the water surface. Then, he took them on a merry chase and led them to a spot close to the coast. Only then did he use teleportation to shake them off and circle back from another direction. When Zhou Wen returned to the spot where he had encountered the eight dragons, he didn't spend much time searching. He saw a treasure glow at the bottom of the sea. He dived over and saw a pearl that looked like a dragon pearl at the bottom of the sea. Inside the pearl was a black dragon shadow. It was a primordial energy skill crystal. Zhou Wen didn't have the time to look carefully when he obtained the primordial energy skill crystal. He first controlled the blood-colored avatar to leave the underground sea in case he ended being chased by the eight dragons. Now that he didn't have the ability to teleport, it wouldn't be easy for him to escape the eight dragons if he were to be entangled by them. After returning to the back cave, Zhou Wen carefully sized up the True Blood Demon Dragon's Primordial Energy Skill Crystal. True Blood Demon Dragon Crystal, Mythical. Requirement, Strength 40, Poison 21, Constitution Raising Life Providence, Constitution Raising Life Soul. I've already obtained 40 points of strength. Although I don't know why there's a poison stat requirement, it has also reached the requirement. I wonder if the Ancient Sovereign Sutra can be considered as a constitution raising life providence and life soul. Zhou Wen found a secluded cave and prepared to attempt it. He switched his primordial energy art to the Ancient Sovereign Sutra before letting the Ancient Sovereign Life Soul fuse with him. When Zhou Wen attempted to absorb the True Blood Demon Dragon Crystal again, the Dragon Pearl-like crystal immediately emitted a blinding light. Wisps of black gas seeped out from the crystal and into the blood-colored avatar's body. Zhou Wen immediately felt a terrifying force roaring in his body, as though it was about to rupture. Soon, Zhou Wen realized that something was amiss. His muscles were expanding, and his bones were growing, as he grew taller in a short period of time. He was about two meters tall. Furthermore, there were scales growing on his body. However, the scales weren't black. Under the reflection of the ancient sovereign body, the scales looked like blood crystals. Zhou Wen felt his entire body ache, and the top of his head felt as though it was about to be pierced through. His spine hurt terribly, as though a blade was slicing at his flesh. Zhou Wen endured the pain until the crystal's energy completely melted into his body. Only then did he feel a lot better. However, using the phone's selfie camera function to take a look at himself, he realized that he was like a humanoid dragon. Apart from the lack of a dragon's tail, he had grown horns on his head. Dragon fins had also grown on his back. His body was covered in scales too. He didn't look like a person at all. He hurriedly stopped the primordial energy skill he had just acquired. Then, Zhou Wen felt his body deflate like a balloon. He immediately shrank to his original size, as the dragon scales and dragon horns vanished from his body. Only then did Zhou Wen heave a sigh of relief. He hurriedly looked at the stats in game, and saw that the game had already popped up a notification, Absorb True Blood Demon Dragon Crystal. Attain Mythical Primordial Energy Skill, Demon Dragon True Body. Although it's a mythical primordial energy skill, this image is a little too odd. 
Zhou Wen attempted to use the Demon Dragon True Body again and discovered that this mythical primordial energy skill could only be used when he used the inverse ancient sovereign life soul. He couldn't transform when using other primordial energy arts. After activating the Demon Dragon True Body, Zhou Wen looked at himself through the camera and couldn't recognize that it was him. In the sun like glow stood a blood red humanoid dragon. As the light was too strong, he could only see a blood colored human dragon silhouette. It looked odd no matter how he looked at it. The demon dragon true body lasted for about 10 seconds before Zhou Wen found his primordial energy depleted as he automatically returned to human form. The ancient sovereign sutra doesn't provide unlimited primordial energy. This demon dragon true body can only last for about 10 seconds. I wonder how powerful it is. Zhou Wen didn't dare try it out in reality, so he returned to the game and first grinded some primordial energy crystals to replenish his primordial energy before heading to the underground sea. As he had restarted the game dungeon while grinding primordial energy crystals, he once again encountered nine black dragons when he arrived at the underground sea. Seeing the nine black dragons charge at him, Zhou Wen activated his demon dragon true body before charging at the nine black dragons in the form of a humanoid dragon that emitted terrifying light. About ten seconds later, Zhou Wen felt as though he had become Superman. His body's strength and speed could actually clash head-on with the black dragon. He wasn't at a disadvantage at all. He was like a humanoid dragon. Ten seconds later, Zhou Wen returned to his original form. It didn't take long before he was killed by the nine black dragons. What a pity. If I could use demon dragon true body while in slaughterer state, I could storm into the bureau and destroy the bureau's headquarters, wiping out its existence. Zhou Wen felt full of regret. However, ten seconds was enough for Zhou Wen to do a lot of things. He just couldn't use any other primordial energy skills in that ten seconds. If his primordial energy was expended, the demon dragon true body would automatically stop, preventing him from lasting even 10 seconds. It's not that I can't use the demon dragon true body for long. I can just grind some primordial energy crystals in game. After the demon dragon true body ends, I'll find a place to absorb primordial energy crystals. However, in that case, I'll still need some buffer time. Zhou Wen was quite satisfied with the demon dragon true body. Mythical strength and speed were as true as it got. Even if he didn't use any primordial energy skills, he could easily kill an epic creature with his strength and speed. It's time to make that arrogant flower pay the price. Zhou Wen excitedly opened Chess Mountain's instance dungeon and prepared to teach the flower a lesson. He wanted to find her weakness and never be bullied by her again. As Tyrant Behemoth hadn't successfully evolved, Zhou Wen could only hide in a cave and wait for it to complete its evolution before heading to the Dunkrai Valley. He had nothing else to do other than gaming. Chapter 439 Returning to the Deer Terrace Pavilion The blood-colored avatar came in front of Chess Mountain's mountain cliff. Zhou Wen had nothing to be afraid of in-game. He straightened his back and summoned Overlord Sword. With one move, he slashed out with the demonic astral wheel that went against the heavens. The blood-red light wheel of light immediately tore out and slashed at the flower on the mountain wall. The flower petal silently fell. The demonic astral wheel immediately shattered the petal upon impact. Zhou Wen wanted to know what tricks the flower had up its sleeve, when he suddenly saw the blood-colored avatar collapse to the ground. The game screen also went black. Zhou Wen felt his body turn cold. Thankfully, he hadn't had too much conflict with the arch, otherwise, he would already be a rotten corpse. How did I die? I only saw a petal drop before dying, Zhou Wen thought to himself. It was obvious that the flower's power of wishes didn't share the same system as curse-related powers, but it could also kill. They clearly kill people the same way, so why wouldn't the power of the wishes be restrained by the evil nullification life soul? Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. Dripping a drop of blood to revive, he came in front of Chess Mountain Cliff. Zhou Wen used every attack technique he knew, as well as all sorts of companion beasts, but the outcome was the same. As long as the flower dropped a petal, the blood-colored avatar would immediately die. There was no chance of survival. Zhou Wen had also tried letting the demonic neonate attack with her ancient sword from a distance away, but before the ancient sword arrived, the petals fell, and the blood-colored avatar collapsed to the ground once again. The game was over. What kind of crappy flower is this? Does it give five others a chance? After Zhou Wen's repeated deaths, he had the urge to smash his phone. No matter how strong the other dimensional creatures were, he could at least see some possibilities. He couldn't kill them now only because he lacked strength. When he had enough strength in the future, he naturally would have the chance to kill them. However, this flower didn't provide him any hope at all. If a petal fell, he would die no matter what. Zhou Wen calmed down and began considering the problem regarding the flower. It's obvious that the flower in the game isn't intelligent, much less capable of interacting with others. It's just a flower without any level of sentience. It will only react automatically when I attack it by dropping a petal. 
This is completely different from the Varch I met in real life. Is it the difference between the game and reality? Or is there another reason? Jowen had a nagging feeling that the Arch wasn't as simple as a flower. Perhaps this flower was only a tool the Arch used to transmit her voice. The Arch was actually someone else, but Jowen didn't know who or what she was. He entered the game again, and this time, Jowen didn't attack the flower. He attempted to ignore it before climbing up the mountain wall. However, to his surprise, when Jowen didn't attack the flower, the flower wouldn't attack him either. It continued growing silently on the mountain wall like an ordinary wildflower. Zhou Wen already had experience climbing Chess Mountain, so he did the same in game. It had an extremely powerful force that pulled at his body, making it extremely difficult to climb higher. After struggling to reach the peak, he found a stone staircase that led to the top of the mountain just like in reality. There was a huge boulder that looked like a steam bun. There was a snow-white jade box embedded in the center of the boulder. Zhou Wen controlled the blood-colored avatar to touch the jade box, but he failed. His palm passed through the jade box as though it was a phantom not something real. As expected, this jade box is similar to that stone saber. It suppresses dimensional zones, so it's impossible to touch in game. It can only be obtained in real life. Although Zhou Wen was greedy, he knew that many people would be killed if a dimensional zone's restrictions were removed. He couldn't take it no matter what. When he descended the mountain, Zhou Wen saw the flower on the mountain wall. Suddenly, an idea flashed in his mind. Previously, when the Darch got me to enter Chess Mountain, I didn't go by the mountain pass, but a crack near the flower's roots. Could it be that this flower is the key to entering Chess Mountain? Is this a secret tunnel? But how can I get the flower to open the passage to Chess Mountain for me? I wonder if begging it is useful. Zhou Wen thought to himself as he tried. After all, it didn't take much effort. Little flower, the flower, can you help me open the path to Chess Mountain? Zhou Wen asked the flower. However, the flower didn't react at all. It didn't seem to have any intention of bothering with him. It doesn't work? Zhou Wen thought of using the Void Flower. Since the two of them were flowers and might even be connected to each other, he decided to shout at the flower in the language that the Darch had taught him. It meant, Open! Rumble. As a flower petal fell, the entire chess mountain shook. A mountain rift opened up near the flower's roots. It really works. Then all those earlier deaths were for nothing. Zhou Wen was somewhat depressed. However, when he thought of the mountain of high-value crystals, and the dozen or so mythical companion eggs in Chess Mountain, Zhou Wen stopped worrying about it. He controlled the blood-colored avatar to rush in. Everything was the same as when the Darch led him in. Not long after, he arrived at the Deer Terrace Pavilion in the Mountain Belly. Zhou Wen still followed the previous method and climbed down the mountain wall before jumping into the river and swimming towards Deer Terrace Pavilion. After swimming for a while, he felt that something huge was approaching the blood-colored avatar. Zhou Wen was already experienced and didn't bother with it. However, very quickly, the red tentacles or water grass wrapped around him and pulled the blood-colored avatar into the river. Before Zhou Wen could do anything, the game screen went black. Holy sh asterisk t, what's going on? Zhou Wen felt depressed. He had done everything according to the previous method. However, without the bone flute in game, there was no way for him to get the blood-colored avatar to bite the bone flute when entering the river. This was probably where the problem was. Since the method doesn't work, I have to force my way in. Zhou Wen had no way of getting the bone flute into the game, so he had no choice but to give up on his previous path. Summoning the stone armor, he held the overlord sword in his hand. He also wore the truth listener earring. With the banana fan in his other hand, he rode the white shadow of poison and flew towards Deer Terrace Pavilion. Before he could get close, he saw a black gas rise up from the ancient building, condensing into the image of a black nine-tailed fox. It rested above the ancient building and its tail, condensed from nine black gases, was swaying. Its pair of demonic, enchanting eyes were staring at the blood-colored avatar. Chapter 440 Immortal Two beams shot out of the fox demon's eyes and arrived in front of the blood-colored avatar in a blink of an eye. They were so unbelievably fast that Zhou Wen wasn't given any time to react. Zhou Wen subconsciously used ghost steps and dodged to the side. However, White Shadow of Poison didn't react quickly enough. After the beam hit it, it immediately disintegrated and vanished. What terrifying strength! Zhou Wen was alarmed, as he saw the fox demon's eyes constantly shoot out beams at the blood-colored avatar. Zhou Wen was best at movement techniques, but under such speedy beams, dodging a few times quickly exhausted him. Desperate, he could only draw his sword and slash it at the fox demon's eyes. However, the beam didn't seem corporeal as Overlord Sword sword beam pierced through the beam as it illuminated Zhou Wen and the Overlord Sword. Zhou Wen watched the scene of Overlord Sword and the blood-colored avatar being disassembled into points of light before the game's screen went black. 
I'm afraid the fox demon's gaze is about to reach the speed of light. How can it be dodged? Zhou Wen was somewhat helpless. No matter how good his movement technique was, it was difficult for him to dodge. From the looks of it, this won't work. I can't take the river path. The sky has the fox demon as an obstacle. I can't afford to provoke any of them. Zhou Wen realized that he couldn't enter Deer Terrace Pavilion. Is there a way to enter? Zhou Wen suddenly recalled how he had looked at the stone wall inside Deer Terrace Pavilion and simulated a primordial energy art known as the Demon God Bloodline Catalog. He wondered if it was of any use. Dripping a drop of blood to revive, he entered Chess Mountain again. This time, since they were useless, Zhou Wen didn't hold so many weapons. In fact, he decided not to take anything. All he did was switch his primordial energy art to the Demon God Bloodline Catalog, which he had gained basic mastery, one that didn't even have a life providence. After he was done, Zhou Wen hesitated for a moment before choosing to jump into the river. After all, this was a path that he had taken once. If he were to take another path, he didn't know what other problems he would encounter. If the Demon God Bloodline Catalog really worked, he could directly reach the place where the mythical companion eggs were placed. Just like the last time, the blood-colored avatar didn't swim far before strange blood-colored tentacles appeared under the river. However, the blood-colored tentacles didn't pull him into the water. They danced in the water like swaying seaweed. Is the Demon God Bloodline catalog really useful? Joe Wen was delighted as he spread apart the tentacles and continued swimming forward. Soon, he arrived beside Deer Terrace Pavilion. Surprisingly, nothing happened. Joe Wen searched the left side of Deer Terrace Pavilion for quite some time, but he failed to find the hole that he had previously used to enter. No way. That crappy hole isn't in game? Joe Wen searched back and forth a few times. There was no mistake about it. There really wasn't a hole there. Left with no choice, Joe Wen could only swim to the front of Deer Terrace Pavilion and climb up the stone stairs. There were three levels to the foundation of Deer Terrace Pavilion. It was like a pyramid. Further up was the ancient building. Previously, Joe Wen had swum underwater. According to his estimates, after entering, he was probably at the bottom of the foundation. There were no doors to the three levels. He could only walk up the stone stairs and reach the ancient building's entrance. While carefully controlling the blood-colored avatar, he nervously walked up the stone stairs. Although he had the Demon God Bloodline Catalog protecting him, it was only a basic mastery. It didn't even have a life providence. When Zhou Wen walked to the foundation at the bottom, he suddenly saw a mist spew out from the platform transforming into many fairies and immortals that cast their gazes at the blood-colored avatar. Zhou Wen's heart skipped a beat. He saw that these fairies and immortals were rather beautiful, but he felt an indescribable seduction. He thought of the demoness in the legend who summoned many demon spirits, who could transform their appearances. They disguised themselves as immortals to drink with the tyrant. Although they were only demon spirits, they were all figures in myths and legends. It wasn't impossible for them to have strength at the mythical stage. The fairies and immortals looked at the blood-colored avatar and sized him up before ignoring him. They held alcohol flasks and glasses as they focused on drinking. There were even fairies dancing as they drank. Their dancing styles were tacky. This demon god bloodline catalog is actually so useful. Doesn't that mean that I can freely enter dimensional zones in the future without needing to worry about being attacked? Joe Wen thought to himself, but he didn't stop walking. He continued walking up the stairs. When he arrived at the second floor of the foundation's platform, he saw many fairies and immortals. They were similar to the previous level. They only sized up the blood-colored avatar for a moment before ignoring him. Zhou Wen walked up all the way to the third level's platform, which was also the level where the ancient building was. He saw some more fairies and immortals, but the outcome was the same. No one paid him any attention. Zhou Wen controlled the blood-colored avatar to walk towards the ancient building's door. The door was open. He looked inside and saw six fairies and immortals drinking and enjoying themselves. However, they were different from the ones outside. They sat on both sides of the hall. Each of them had a short table in front of them. On the table were fine wine, fruits, and delicacies. The moment the blood-colored avatar entered the hall, a fairy sitting close to the door looked at him. With just a glance, her expression changed as she shot out a rainbow beam. No good. I've been discovered. Zhou Wen dodged and retreated, but the rainbow beam kept chasing after him like it had a life of its own. It drew an arc in the air like a rainbow. Zhou Wen continuously changed directions and dodged a few times, but he was ultimately caught up by the rainbow beam. Helpless, he could only draw his sword and slash it. Boom! The overlord sword struck ruthlessly. The rainbow-colored beam was actually cleaved apart by the overlord sword. However, the blood-colored avatar's body was sent flying as it tumbled down the stone steps. As such, the concealment from before had also lost its effect. 
The fairies and immortals on the platform charged ferociously at the blood-colored avatar. Realizing that he was exposed, Zhou didn't hide anything. He switched back to the lost immortal sutra and took out his banana fan. He fanned at the charging assailants. Boom! The sky was filled with immortals as they were sent flying by the fan. They either slammed into the wall or fell to the ground. They spat out mouthfuls of blood and looked seriously injured. Some of them directly revealed their true bodies. Most of them were foxes, night cats, pheasants, etc. So these guys aren't at the mythical stage. Joe was relieved as he fanned the fake fairies and immortals. After sending them flying everywhere, some died upon hitting Deer Terrace Pavilion. Chapter 441 Tyrant's Evolution Completed Killed Epic Creature Ancient Tomb Fox Demon Discovered Dimensional Crystal Killed Epic Creature Three-Eyed Cat Demon Discovered Dimensional Crystal Killed Epic Creature Ancient Tomb Fox Demon Matching the banana fan with Slaughterer's infinite primordial energy, his ability to kill in mass was virtually unparalleled at creatures' level. After fanning a few times, he killed many fake fairies and immortals. Jowen saw the dimensional crystals that dropped and was about to pick them up when he saw a rainbow beam fly down. It was none other than the fairies sitting at the end of the grand hall. Jowen struck out with a granding wind at the fairy. With a wave of her hand, a rainbow beam met the granding wind, diverting it aside. Jowen immediately knew that the fairy was most likely at the mythical stage. Although the granding wind was strong, it wasn't at the mythical stage yet. He would definitely be at a disadvantage against a mythical creature. Jowen turned around and ran down the stairs. The fairy chased after him as she released rainbow beams with both hands. They combined into a single rainbow beam that enveloped the blood-colored avatar like thousands of rays of light. The colorful rays seemed to have a life of their own, so no matter how Jowen dodged, they continued chasing him. The colorful light came from all directions, and Jowen had no room to move. He gritted his teeth and switched to the ancient Sovereign Sutra. At the same time, he used the demon dragon true body to fend off the rainbow beams with his powerful physique. Boom! The rainbow beams landed on Jowen, causing him to feel like he had been struck by hammers. However, the rainbow beams failed to tear through the scales on the blood-colored avatar's body. Instead, they shattered. What an amazing demon dragon true body! Jowen was overjoyed as he pounced at the fairy like a beast. The fairy's body phased away, leaving behind afterimages. At the same time, it constantly emitted rainbow beams from her hands. Although the demon dragon true body wasn't afraid of the rainbow beams, he was repelled every time. He failed to approach her. Seeing that time for his demon dragon true body was running out, Jowen turned and ran downstairs. The fairy chased after him and constantly attacked. However, after Jowen left the third level and returned to the foundation's second level, she didn't chase after him again and returned to the ancient building. The fake fairies and immortals on the second level charged forward. Although Zhou Wen's time in his demon dragon true body had run out due to having zero primordial energy, he wasn't afraid of them. He switched back to Slaughterer and his primordial energy immediately returned to full. Combining the Overlord Sword with Transcendent Flying Immortal, he killed all the fairies and immortals that rushed at him. Zhou Wen realized that no matter how he killed on the second level, the dimensional creatures inside the palace didn't come out. I can't enter the palace, but it's not a bad idea to grind these epic creatures. Zhou Wen summoned the baby tiger and killed all the fairies and immortals on the second and first levels. A few dimensional crystals dropped, along with one primordial energy skill crystal. Jowen didn't head back up to the third level. He couldn't even deal with a single demoness. There were five of them inside, so it was useless even if he went up. Could the arch be one of the six demons in the hall? Jowen thought. Jowen hid in the cave and kept grinding. Although the demons who pretended to be fairies and immortals at Deer Terrace Pavilion weren't very capable, the dimensional crystals they dropped weren't bad. High-value dimensional crystals would often drop, so Zhou Wen took the opportunity to raise his various stats. Tyrant Behemoth has succeeded in evolving to the epic stage. After two days of grinding, Zhou Wen suddenly saw a notification appear in-game. He couldn't help but feel delighted. It's finally done. Zhou Wen hurriedly opened the Companion Beast column. Among the epic Companion Beasts, there was indeed Tyrant Behemoth. In the game, he summoned Tyrant Behemoth and saw a majestic black monster appear on the game's screen. He couldn't tell how big it was in-game, but when he compared to the blood-colored avatar, he realized that the blood-colored avatar was only the size of its palm. This fellow was like a small mountain. I wonder how much this fellow will eat in the future. Can I really afford it? Joe Wen thought to himself. Looking at the Tyrant Behemoth's stats, Joe Wen immediately threw away his worries. Tyrant Behemoth, Epic, Evolvable. Life Providence, Extreme Strength. Life Soul, Violence Crown. Strength, 41. Speed, 41. Constitution, 41.
primordial energy. 41. Talent skill, mountain consuming. Companion form, boxing glove. It's finally at the epic stage. It's time to begin operations. Shouwen switched off his phone and walked out of the cave. He sneaked in the direction of Don't Cry Valley in the darkness. Unfortunately, Jack's companion egg hadn't grown. Otherwise, with Jack's shadow escape ability, he would have been able to enter Don't Cry Valley without a sound. Now, Shouwen had to force his way in. Thankfully, the Bureau didn't place its key defenses here. It wasn't difficult to charge in. The mysterious force in Don't Cry Valley that made people cry was the best defensive barrier. Shouwen wore the mutated stone chi armor and wrapped his entire body inside. Without even showing his face, he switched to his godfiend life providence and charged at a checkpoint. The personnel from the bureau saw a figure fly over. Before they could react, it flashed past the checkpoint and disappeared into Don't Cry Valley. They almost thought they were seeing things. I think something rushed in, right? One of the inspectors looked at another inspector and asked with uncertainty. It seems so. I didn't see it clearly. Another inspector wasn't too sure either. Should we report it? Let's take a look at the surveillance cameras. The two of them checked the surveillance footage and slowed down many times before they saw a person wearing stone armor rush into Don't Cry Valley. Quickly report to the sensor. The two quickly sent people into Don't Cry Valley to report to Kaijin. After Zhou Wen rushed into the valley, the truth listener earring on his ear began to heat up. At the same time, a surge of primordial energy surged into his body, delighting him. This meant that the truth listener earring had shown its effects. Don't Cry Valley wasn't a dangerous land for him. He scanned his surroundings before flying in a certain direction. As no one reached the primordial crystal mine alive, Zhou Wen didn't know its exact location. All he could do was search the valley. In the large valley, there were bamboo forests everywhere. After the wind blew through the bamboo forest, there was a rustling sound. It sounded very strange. Although it didn't look big from the outside, the valley's space became huge after it had become a dimensional zone. In the endless bamboo forest, Zhou Wen rapidly moved in search of the possible location of the primordial crystal mine. The deeper he ventured into the valley, the more primordial energy surged into his eyes. Clearly, the mysterious force was gradually strengthening. However, to the truth listener earring, the mysterious force became beneficial, allowing Zhou Wen to replenish his primordial energy even when he used other primordial energy arts. Chapter 442 Tunneling The interference in Don't Cry Valley prevented all kinds of equipment from working normally. Zhou Wen wasn't worried about cameras here, but he still needed to pay attention to things like companion beasts. Some people like to use worms, mosquitoes, and other companion beasts for reconnaissance purposes, making them harder to defend against than electronic equipment. This was because few people would notice them, so they were especially useful in dimensional zones. Zhou Wen used the truth listener earring to pay attention to every movement around him, to ensure that any dimensional creatures could be discovered the moment they appeared. Suddenly, Zhou Wen sensed the existence of a dimensional creature. It was a green bamboo viper. It was sprawled on a bamboo joint, sharing the same color as the bamboo leaves, making it difficult for ordinary people to discover its existence. However, the truth listener earring had discovered its existence from afar. Zhouin didn't know if the bamboo viper was a native dimensional creature of Don't Cry Valley, or it was manually placed there. Regardless of which one it was, Zhouin didn't plan on alerting it. He circled around it, and continued deeper into the bamboo forest without letting it discover him. Zhou Wen found quite a number of dimensional creatures along the way. He circled around them without alerting any of them. He hoped that he was heading in the right direction. As he walked forward, more and more dimensional creatures appeared. There were bamboo vipers, mantises that resembled withered leaves, and a frog hiding in the fallen leaves. These companion beasts weren't very powerful, but they were distributed very regularly. It was difficult for one to dodge their line of sight no matter where one went. Zhou Wen wasted a lot of time to circle around these dimensional creatures. After passing through the bamboo forest, he saw a building resembling a blockhouse erected on the mountain wall. It was obvious that the building was man-made. It was highly likely to be the entrance to the primordial crystal mine. However, there was only one entrance without any windows. It was completely sealed. If one wanted to rush in, one had to break open the door and clash with the people from the bureau. This was the economic lifeline of the bureau. It had one of the four sensors, Kaijin, guarding it. According to Ensheng, Kaijin was as strong as Jack. With the help of other epic experts, and with them having the terrain advantage, Zhou Wen didn't think it was a good idea to forcefully barge in. After observing the surrounding terrain, Zhou Wen infiltrated from another side of the canyon and found a low depression. He summoned Tyrant Behemoth. The epic Tyrant Behemoth was more than 10 meters tall. It was like a small black mountain. In reality, it felt majestic and terrifying when he looked at it. He felt like it could pierce through a mountain with a single punch. 
Tyrant, can you dig diagonally down in that direction? Be careful not to make too much noise. Show when pointed in the direction of the mine. Tyrant Behemoth could devour extremely hard primordial crystal ores, so it shouldn't be a problem for it to deal with ordinary rocks. Tyrant Behemoth took action after hearing the order. It lowered its head to the ground, and the two horns on its head spun like a huge drill, tearing open a huge hole. Zhou Wen saw mud splatter, and hurriedly crawled in behind Tyrant Behemoth. Tyrant Behemoth was like a super drilling vehicle that violently drilled through rocks, and kept proceeding underground. As there was nowhere to dispose of the rock and mud, the back of the tunnel was quickly blocked, just leaving a space slightly bigger than Tyrant Behemoth. The place Zhou Wen had chosen was still more than a thousand meters from the entrance to the mine. He was originally worried that Tyrant Behemoth would take too long to enter, but he had clearly underestimated Tyrant Behemoth's strength. This was a fellow who was known to be able to eat a thousand mountains every day. Although it hadn't advanced to the mythical stage and couldn't eat a mountain, it wasn't difficult for it to dig a hole. After following Tyrant Behemoth for more than an hour, Zhou Wen guessed that he should have arrived at a stop under the mine, but he hadn't seen any primordial crystal ores appear. Strange, why haven't I seen any primordial crystal ores? Logically speaking, if there's a mine here, I should be able to see primordial crystal ores nearby. Why aren't there any? Zhou Wen found it odd. Crack. As he was thinking, he heard the sound of rocks cracking above him. He looked over, and saw that there were several cracks above the tunnel that Tyrant Behemoth had dug open. There was faint light passing through the cracks. But for some reason, Tyrant Behemoth didn't advance further. It looked up at the cracks. Eh. Could it be that Tyrant Behemoth went too deep down and missed the mining area? Joe Wen made Tyrant Behemoth stop. He stood on Tyrant Behemoth's body and leaned close to the crack to take a look inside. There was light inside, but all he could see was the ceiling. Using Truth Listener's ability, a huge warehouse appeared in Joe Wen's mind. Rows of metal chests were placed inside. The entire warehouse was around a thousand square meters. There were plenty of metal chests in there. This place. Could it be their warehouse to store the primordial crystal ores? Joe Wen's heart stirred as he carefully observed using Truth Listener's powers. He soon discovered that there were quite a number of mini companion beasts hidden in the warehouse. One of them, a cricket like companion beast, was staring at the crack as though it had sensed something. Zhou Wen knew that he couldn't alarm them. Otherwise, Kai Jin and the other inspectors would immediately be alarmed. After some thought, he summoned some blood threadworms. These blood threadworms were obtained from the Zhuolu battlefield. They were finer than hair. It was very difficult to notice a few of them with the naked eye. He let the blood threadworm crawl into the warehouse and carefully approached the companion beast in the warehouse before letting them burrow into their bodies. The companion beasts were ordered by their owners to remain motionless. This made it easier for Zhou Wen to take action. The blood threadworms crawled into their bodies and immediately affected their nerves. Although they wouldn't immediately die, they fell into a state of dementia. Without any hesitation, Zhou Wen got Tyrant Behemoth to drill a huge hole into the warehouse. The man and pet crawled inside. Zhou Wen raised his hand and chopped open a metal chest's lock. He lifted the lid and immediately, a blinding light emitted from the box. All the boxes were filled with primordial crystals. Holy sh asterisk t, aren't there thousands of metal chests in this warehouse? If the items inside are all primordial crystals, Zhou Wen didn't dare imagine what would happen. As for Tyrant Behemoth, he was already salivating at the box of primordial energy crystals that Zhou Wen had opened. Chapter 443 Let Loose and Yay. Eat. Let loose and eat. Eat however much you can. Zhou Wen ordered Tyrant Behemoth. Tyrant Behemoth let out a roar and swallowed the chest of primordial crystals that Zhou Wen had opened with a single mouthful. After chewing a few times, it swallowed it. It wasn't afraid of indigestion. The Tyrant Behemoth didn't even look. It opened its mouth and bit down on the metal chests one by one, then chewed them to pieces. Its crushing bite was simply too astonishing. It ate metal and primordial crystal was like it was eating jelly beans. Zhou Wen didn't idle either. He opened the boxes and saw that they were filled with primordial energy crystals. He directly put them into his chaos bead, throwing chest after chest in. These were all worth money. Zhou Wen was used to being poor, so he had never seen so many valuables before. He just kept moving them into his chaos bead. It wasn't that he had never seen anything good, but all the good things were in game. He couldn't take them out no matter how good they were. These primordial crystals were good stuff that could be used in the real world. He could also sell them for a good price. He didn't have to waste time grinding for any companion eggs or primordial energy skill crystals. Now that he had money, he could buy them directly. Previously, Zhou Wen didn't know that there were so many primordial crystals stored here. He imagined that he would need to get Tyrant Behemoth to dig for ores, but to his surprise, the Bureau had already dug them out and placed them there in chests. If he had known this would happen, Zhou Wen would have come long ago. 
Why would he need to wait for Tyrant Behemoth to evolve? He could have emptied the area alone. Tyrant Behemoth ate one chest after another, while Zhou Wen moved chests into his chaos space. Both of them were busy at work. Zhou Wen suddenly thought of a famous saying from a great person. The people of labor are the most glorious. Zhou Wen didn't know how many chests he had stored in the chaos bead. In any case, apart from the ones he had moved into the chaos bead, the remaining were devoured by Tyrant Behemoth. He didn't know what its stomach was made of, but after eating nearly a thousand boxes of primordial crystals, its stomach didn't even swell up at all. Seeing Tyrant Behemoth looking at him longingly, Zhou Wen subconsciously tightened his grip on his chaos bead. Then, he looked at Tyrant Behemoth and said, This is a primordial crystal mine. There must be many more unmined deposits of primordial crystal ores outside. Let's head out and eat the ones outside. You can eat as much as you want. Tyrant Behemoth seemed to understand what Zhou Wen was getting at. His eyes were as bright as light bulbs. With a roar, he slammed his head against the ground. No matter how excited you are, you shouldn't be hitting your head? Foodies really lack brains, Zhou Wen thought. However, to his surprise, Tyrant Behemoth crashed into the ground of the warehouse. The horns on his head spun, opening a huge hole in the rock before burrowing down. Zhou Wen hurriedly followed it. Tyrant Behemoth drilled for some time before it suddenly widened its mouth. It began to directly bite down on the rocks. Only then did Zhou Wen realize that the surrounding rocks had already shown signs of primordial crystal ores. They looked like sparkling stars. Zhou Wen had never seen Tyrant Behemoth use the mountain-consuming skill in combat. Now, he had truly witnessed it for himself. The skill wasn't used for fighting, but for eating. Tyrant Behemoth's mouth was like a black hole as it swallowed the rocks mixed with the primordial crystal ores. It was like a miniature black hole. Zhou Wen was already satisfied with obtaining so many primordial crystals, so he allowed Tyrant Behemoth to devour the primordial crystal ores. Shin Yuchi was currently in Kai Jin's office. The primordial crystal mine was the economic lifeline of the Bureau. Shin Yuchi had told Kai Jin that no one could take a piece of the primordial crystals from here without him being here in person. In order to purchase the Aurora Pith, he had to use some of the primordial crystals in the reserves. It just scratched the surface of the reserves, so Shin Yuchi was not worried about any future financial problems. With the primordial crystal mine backing him, even if he couldn't obtain any funding for 10 years, the Bureau could still lead a comfortable life. Furthermore, the six families definitely wouldn't stop funding the Bureau next year. After all, many descendants of the six families were working there. Even if he didn't want their money, they would definitely give it to him in the future. Kai Jin, it's been hard on you to guard the primordial crystal mine for all these years. Shinyuchi had always thought highly of Kai Jin. Although he wasn't the most powerful of the four sensors, he was the most reliable one. He was meticulous and had been guarding the primordial crystal mine for so many years without any mistakes. He was very cautious and professional. Director General, you're too polite. This is simply my job, Kai Jin said in neither a supercilious nor obsequious manner. He knew Shinyuchi's temper. If he acted overly proud and arrogant, it would probably earn Shinyuchi's displeasure. Yes. Wait for another two years, and the position of Deputy Director General will be open. I plan to recommend you to take over the position, Shinyuchi said. Thank you for your grooming. Kai Jin was truly happy. The four censors were very famous, but in fact, they were working under Shinyuchi. However, becoming the Deputy Director General was different. That put him in the ranks of having actual authority. Just as Shinyuchi was about to say something, an inspector suddenly knocked on the door and entered. He reported, Sir, there's news from the guards at the canyon entrance that someone has infiltrated Don't Cry Valley. Do you know who it is? Kai Jin's expression didn't change much. Over the years, various factions had sent many people to try to pry into the situation of the primordial crystal mine, but all of them failed. He had seen such situations aplenty. I don't know. That person was too fast, and they weren't able to see him clearly. However, the surveillance camera captured the person. They printed the photo and brought it here. As he spoke, the inspector handed a few photos to Kai Jin. After Kai Jin received them, he directly handed them to Shinyuchi with both hands. With Shinyuchi around, he naturally had to let him see them first. Shinyuchi looked at the photos and saw that the person was covered in stone like armor. He couldn't see his face clearly at all. However, the stone armor looked a little familiar to him, but he couldn't recall where he had seen it before. Kai Jin, what's your take? Shinyuchi pushed the photo in front of Kai Jin. He still trusted him immensely. After taking a look at the picture, Kai Jin couldn't tell who the person was, but he didn't panic either. He said with a smile, I've planted a lot of companion beasts in the bamboo forest. Those companion beasts were dimensional creatures that dropped in Don't Cry Valley. They aren't influenced by its mysterious powers. They are also difficult for the average person to notice. 
Even if someone discovers a few, it'd be impossible to find all 300 of them. As long as a companion beast discovers them, I'll sense them and be able to confirm his location. Now, none of the companion beasts have reacted. It means that the person hasn't gone deep into the bamboo forest. Or should I say, he might have already died under the mysterious forces of Don't Cry Valley. Chapter 444 Vomiting Blood Shin Yuchi was very satisfied with Kai Jin's answer, but he still said calmly, What if the enemy can pass through the bamboo forest and reach the mine? Don't worry, Director General. The mine also has many stone-type companion beasts planted. They aren't easily discovered. Needless to say in the warehouse, the companion beasts that are planted there were personally selected by me. They have extremely powerful concealment and reconnaissance abilities. Furthermore, their spots are adjusted every week to prevent any problems from arising, said Kai Jin. Good. Shin Yuchi was very satisfied with Kai Jin's answer. The most important aspect when working for the Bureau was to be meticulous. If any oversight were to happen, even a small problem might result in a chain reaction that would cause great trouble. Just by looking at Kai Jin's layout of the mine cave, he knew that this person was very meticulous. He was, indeed, of good caliber. Endure another two years. Then in two years, we'll conquer the world together. Shin Yuchi patted Kai Jin on the shoulder and said. Kai Jin respectfully said. Your humble servant is willing to follow you for life, Director General. Heh. Shin Yuchi did not comment. Instead, he smiled and patted Kai Jin on the shoulder. Let's go! Let's go to the warehouse to get some primordial crystals. The purchase of the Aurora Pith is very important, so we have to use the reserves. Kai Jin led the way, and as they walked he asked, Director General, can the Aurora Pith really advance the Holy Light Angel to the mythical stage? Shin Yuchi nodded and said, those experts have already verified it many times. As long as there's sufficient Aurora Pith, there's an 80% chance that the Holy Light Angel can advance to the mythical stage. It will be great if it succeeds. Our Bureau will have an additional trump card. We will no longer need to take into account the whims and wants of those families, said Kai Jin. Don't speak nonsense. Our Bureau is a subordinate organization under the Senate. We naturally have to obey orders from our superiors. Besides, it's only a mythical companion beast. Do you really think that it can compete with them? Shin Yuchi said indifferently. I apologize for my words, but they're ultimately words of hope, said Kai Jin. The primordial crystal mine is our only hope. With it, we can exchange crystals for the resources we need. In the future, we will have a chance to nurture mythical companion beasts. Watch it carefully. This is our lifeblood, Shin Yuchi said seriously. Don't worry, we will prevail with the mine in existence. Kai Jin issued a military order. Just as Shinyuchi was about to say something, he saw an inspector running over in a panic. What are you so flustered about? What did I teach you? Kai Jin frowned and reprimanded the inspector. Shinyuchi hated people who were so flustered when they encountered something. Usually, Kai Jin didn't see his subordinates being so crude. However, he had shown his fluster with Shinyuchi around. Wouldn't that make Shinyuchi think that he was incompetent at handling his subordinates? The inspector did not calm down because of Kai Jin's reprimand. He continued speaking in a panic. Sir, something happened in the mine. What happened? Kai Jin's heart skipped a beat. He suddenly had a bad feeling that something bad had happened, precisely when Shin Yuchi was here. The lower levels of the mine have collapsed. The mine below is blocked. Our men can't head down. We don't know what's going on below. The inspector gave a summary of the situation. A large-scale collapse? Kai Jin breathed a sigh of relief. If it was just a collapse, it wouldn't be a serious problem. At most, he could just spend some time digging it out. Get the men to fortify the mine before digging out the collapsed area to see what's going on, Kai Jin instructed. Kai Jin made the necessary arrangements before turning around to speak to Shin Yuchi. Director General, let's head to the warehouse first. Shin Yuchi nodded and continued walking towards the warehouse with Kai Jin. He was quite satisfied with Kai Jin's way of handling things. The unexpected always happened and there was no lack of accidents. As long as he had the ability to handle it, it was fine. Very quickly, the two of them passed through many checkpoints and arrived outside the warehouse. The door could only be opened when both Kai Jin and Shin Yuchi were around. Director General, after you. Kai Jin opened the door and gestured for him to enter. However, before Shin Yuchi could enter, his gaze landed on the warehouse and his expression immediately changed. Kai Jin, what's going on? demanded Shin Yuchi with an extremely livid expression. He glared at Kai Jin with a ferocious gaze. What do you mean? Kai Jin looked into the warehouse and was stunned. The warehouse was originally full of rows of metal chests, but none of them could be seen. The huge warehouse was empty, except for two huge holes on the ground. Director General, I really don't know what's going on. 
The companion beasts that are planted here are still there. Why wasn't there any reaction? I even saw them through the observation hole yesterday. The primordial crystals were all here. Kai Jean stammered. He knew that he was in big trouble. These primordial crystals could be said to be the entire assets of the Special Inspector Bureau. Now that more than a thousand chests of primordial crystals were gone, that was a serious fault. Shin Yuji wore a sullen expression and didn't say anything. His figure moved like a shadow as he entered the warehouse and stepped into one of the holes. A sword beam shot out from his finger, splitting apart the rubble in the hole as he rushed deep inside. Kai Jin reacted and followed after him. When he caught up with Shin Yuji, the scene in front of him left him stunned. The massive underground primordial crystal mine had a huge space dug out by something. It was as if the mountain had been emptied out. Only a few rocks supported the upper layer, while the other primordial crystal ores were gone. This area was obviously an area that had been explored by them. It was the area with the largest deposits. No! Impossible! Seeing that the top floor was collapsing, and how rocks kept falling from above, Kai Jin was dumbfounded. Such a massive endeavor would take at least a year to complete even if he were to poach epic experts to be miners. However, if someone really went all out to dig for such a long time, it was impossible for him not to have noticed anything. Director General. I... I really don't know anything. Kai Jin felt his entire body turn cold. This was a terrible disaster. He didn't know how Shinyuchi would deal with him. Shinyuchi ignored him, as he stared intently at the collapsing underground hole. After a while, Shinyuchi suddenly opened his mouth and spat out a mouthful of blood. His face turned pale, as he trembled. Director General. Kai Jin became alarmed. He hurriedly went forward to support Shinyuchi. At that moment, Zhou had long left Don't Cry Valley. He originally wanted Tyrant Behemoth to eat more and leave the Primordial Crystal Mine with nothing. However, to his surprise, Tyrant Behemoth showed signs of evolving as he ate. Zhou was afraid that it would evolve in the mine and, since he could dig, he would be trapped when the time came. All he could do was get Tyrant Behemoth to dig him out again. Not long after he entered the Bamboo Forest, Tyrant Behemoth began evolving. It had eaten too many Primordial Crystals and its body constantly emitted crystalline light, turning it into a companion egg state once again. Chapter 445 Not That Much Overseer, this matter is a little odd. Although we exposed those documents and dealt a certain blow to the Bureau, the Bureau seems to have gone mad recently. It's like a rabid dog that's biting people everywhere. Their reaction is much worse than we expected. And Shung said, as he read the latest intelligence. And Tianzhuo was also looking at the information. He had similar views to in Shung. It seemed odd that the Bureau had gone to such great lengths. And Sheng was about to say something when his phone suddenly rang. And Sheng looked at the caller ID and said to Ntianzhua, The informer I left on campus says that Zhou Wen is back. And Sheng had previously gone to the capital, but had failed to find Zhou Wen. He was certain that Zhou Wen hadn't been there, as he had no idea where Zhou Wen had gone. Without any leads, and Sheng had no choice but to return to Luoyang. And Tianzhua looked at Sheng without saying a word. And Sheng understood what Ntianzhua was getting at and answered the call. After a while, and Sheng hung up and said to Ntianzhua, Zhou Wen has returned. Should I call him and ask him? That's your business, and Tianzhua said coldly. And Sheng called Zhou Wen. Young Master Wen, where have you been the past few days? Madam has been very worried about you. Zhou Wen thought for a moment and said, I visited Don't Cry Valley and got some things from there. He had caused too great a stir, and Zhou Wen knew that he couldn't hide it. Even if the Bureau couldn't figure out that he was the one behind it, and Sheng and company would figure out something in the future. After all, the time he went missing coincided with it. Rather than waiting for them to find out, he might as well say it himself. Don't cry, Valley. Wait. Are you talking about the Special Inspector Bureau's primordial crystal mine? And Shung said in surprise. The mineral deposits are a gift from the land. If the Bureau can take it, I should be able to take it too, right? Zhou Wen said with a smile. Did you really enter Don't Cry Valley's primordial crystal mine? How much did you get? And Shung immediately asked. Not that much. I just took some of the reserves and dug a little more, Zhou Wen said. And Sheng's expression turned odd. Zhou Wen made it sound simple. But the recent crazy actions of the Bureau made in Sheng realize that it wasn't as simple as Zhou Wen it claimed. About how much did you take? And Sheng asked. I'm not too sure of the number. There are probably a few hundred chests. One chest weighs about a ton, Zhou Wen said. And Sheng gaped in disbelief. After a long while, and Sheng came to his senses and exhorted Zhou Wen. Stay on campus and don't go anywhere. Don't touch the primordial crystal ores you have. Don't let anyone know about it. He then hung up. Zhou Wen stole the primordial crystal ores from the bureau. It's a massive amount. And Sheng said to Ntianzhua. I heard that. 
and Tianzhu's expression was somewhat odd. Even he found it unbelievable that a person had snatched hundreds of tons of primordial crystal ores from the Bureau. It's no wonder the Special Inspector Bureau has gone mad. A few hundred tons of primordial crystal ores. This isn't about stealing ores, it's about killing the Bureau. Young Master Wen really is gutsy, and he actually did it. It's hard to imagine how he managed to do it alone. It looks like he's growing faster than we expected. And Sheng praised. And Tianzhu wasn't in the mood to bicker with Sheng as he said with a sigh. Go deal with the aftermath and try to find out more from the Special Inspector Bureau to see what's going on. Yes. And Sheng also knew that this wasn't the time to say these words. He had to seize every moment to wipe away the traces that Zhou Wen might have left behind. He couldn't let the Bureau know that it was Zhou Wen who had done it. Half a day later, a piece of information was placed in front of Tianzhu. After he had finished reading it, his expression became more complicated. And Sheng also wore an odd expression as he looked at Tianzhu and said, According to the intelligence, Kai Jin has already been transferred back. Quite a number of experts from the primordial crystal mine have been transferred back as well. Very few people remain behind. Young Master Wen didn't steal from them. He clearly uprooted the Bureau's finances. And Tianzhu burned the document and threw it into the trash bin. Do what you need to do. Just take it that nothing ever happened. Yes. And Sheng answered solemnly. That punk is really daring. When Tianzhu was the only one left in the office, he looked at Zhou Wen's information on the computer and muttered to himself with an odd expression. After Zhou Wen returned to school, he took a nap before continuing his grinding. With the demon dragon true body, Zhou Wen could finally attempt to challenge a mythical creature. Although he only had 10 seconds, Zhou Wen no longer died so easily when he went to the temple in the ruins. However, against the mythical creature guarding the temple, Zhou Wen still needed to use some primordial energy skills in addition to the demon dragon true body to prevent himself from being killed. In fact, he didn't last 10 seconds. Although switching to Slaughterer could restore his primordial energy, switching back to the ancient Sovereign Sutra, and then using the Demon Dragon True body required time. This was enough time for the mythical creature to kill the blood-colored avatar. Although he could only last for a few seconds, Zhou Wen finally wasn't slaughtered without any resistance. At least in these few seconds, he could face the mythical creatures head-on, giving him a chance of discovering their weaknesses. Of course, this required repeated deaths. If Zhou Wen wasn't in a hurry to enter the temple to find the former principal, there would be no need for him to be in such a rush. There were two temples, the left and right. The creature in one of the temples resembled a wolf or tiger. It had wings on its backs, and it was unbelievably fast. Zhou Wen had to use Go's steps when in demon dragon true body form to keep up with it. He couldn't last long against it. In the other temple, the mythical creature resembled a huge snake that could spew out large amounts of poisonous gas but its speed was much slower than another mythical creature. Zhou Wen could barely keep up with its speed in the demon dragon true body without using Go's steps. Hence, he placed his focus on the snake. Zhou Wen's poison resistance and the augmentation of the demon dragon true body couldn't withstand the snake's terrifying poison. He could clearly sense the symptoms of poisoning. However, he would be killed before the poison could take effect. Therefore, the lethality of the poison didn't matter for now. Apart from the poison, the snake still had several abilities. Some of them were alright, Zhou Wen could at least understand them. As long as he could understand them, he had a chance of cracking them. However, Zhou Wen didn't understand one of the snake's powers. Every time the snake's eyes turned into a mirror, the blood-colored avatar would reflect in its eyes before dying. No matter how fast Zhou Wen's movement technique was, it was impossible for him to be so fast that the snake couldn't see the blood-colored avatar. Therefore, every time the snake used this skill, the blood-colored avatar died. Zhou Wen tried many times but he failed to figure out what was going on. Chapter 446 The Sword Needs to Kill Before It's Unsheathed When he woke up the next morning and had breakfast, Zhou Wen bought some breakfast for Wang Lu. You're back? Wang Lu opened the door and asked in surprise. I came back yesterday. Zhou Wen entered and placed the breakfast on the table. Has the matter been resolved? Wang Lu asked. Pretty much. Zhou Wen felt his mood elevate, but he didn't know if the bureau would back down or not. That's good. Let's settle our scores now. You owe me a lot of breakfast. You need to make it up with lunch. Wang Lu very seriously listed down the number of breakfasts Zhou Wen owed her. After taking Wang Lu's breakfast, Zhou Wen went to the Xianwen Club. Old Zhou, why are you always going missing? Can't you let me tag along if there's anything interesting happening? Li Xian said with a smile. I got into some trouble, so I went into hiding. What's so fun about that? Zhou Wen shrugged his shoulders helplessly. As the two of them spoke, they saw Feng Qiuyan, Ming Xiao, and a girl walk in. Zhou Wen knew Ming Xiao, but didn't know why he had come to the Xianwen Club. 
he wasn't a member of the Xianlin Club. However, Zhou Wen still felt a little guilty towards Ming Xiao. After all, he was his student tutor, but he had not done anything since he had come. Zhou Wen, you're finally back. Are you free now? Ming Xiao's eyes lit up when he saw Zhou Wen. What's the matter? Zhou Wen felt that if Ming Xiao had any questions, as his student tutor, he should provide some level of help. I've recently practiced a set of sword techniques. I want you to give me some pointers, Ming Xiao said. Although he had asked Zhou Wen for pointers, Ming Xiao was very confident in his sword techniques. Ever since he saw Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal, Ming Xiao had gained inspiration and had been studying the sword techniques left behind by his father. After repeatedly improving and practicing it with Feng Qiuyin, Ming Xiao felt that his sword techniques were rather perfect. They were in no way inferior to Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal. All right. Zhou Wen nodded in agreement. Feng Qiuyin was also very interested. He knew that Zhou Wen had already advanced to the epic stage. If it was a life and death battle, Ming Xiao was definitely no match for Zhou Wen. However, sparring was different from a life or death battle. They only fought to determine whose sword technique was better, and not one's strength and speed. Therefore, Feng Qiuyin felt that Ming Xiao probably had a chance. During this period of time, he had been training with Ming Xiao. He knew that Ming Xiao's sword techniques had improved significantly. Apart from his lacking level, just his sword technique alone was as good as his saber techniques. When Ming Xiao fought Zhou Wen, he could also watch from the side and figure out how much Zhou Wen had improved. Everyone went to the training ground and the two changed into combat uniforms. They held their training swords and faced each other. Tian Jinjin asked nervously, Feng Qiuyin, what do you think of Ming Xiao's chances of winning? Ming Xiao's sword techniques had improved significantly but Tian Jinjin had a nagging feeling that they were too simple. It was unlike Zhou Wen's transcendent flying immortal, which was domineering and magnificent. I don't know. Feng Qiuyin shook his head. If it were the sword techniques that Zhou Wen had used in the past, and with Zhou Wen's lack of understanding of Ming Xiao's sword techniques, Feng Qiuyin felt that Ming Xiao would have a chance of winning. However, Zhou Wen definitely wouldn't stop improving while he and Ming Xiao improved. Therefore, Feng Qiuyin couldn't determine the outcome. However, deep down, he believed that Zhou Wen would definitely win. However, Feng Qiuyin couldn't say it without any evidence. That goes without saying. No one can beat old Zhou. We just need to see how many strikes Ming Xiao can last under old Zhou. However, Li Xian was confident about Zhou Wen. TCH, how would you know if they haven't fought? I think Ming Xiao will definitely win. Tian Jinjin immediately retorted. Please guide me. Ming Xiao held the training sword and took on an elegant stance. Then, he sheathed the sword back into the scabbard. Please! Zhou Wen didn't hold a scabbard. He only held the sword in his hand as he pointed it diagonally to the ground. Ming Xiao's expression didn't change. However, his aura became increasingly calm. He seemed to fuse with the air. If one didn't look at him with their eyes, one wouldn't be able to feel his existence. A sword flash appeared, an extreme movement after extreme stillness. After the practice sword was unsheathed, an earth-shattering strike that was fast and powerful appeared. It looked as if it would tear through the skies and passed through the nine firmaments. It was unlike Feng Qiuyin's swift saber. Although Feng Qiuyin's swift saber could exceed its limits, it did so with temperance. Particular attention was needed regarding control. However, Ming Xiao's sword technique wasn't the same. It was as if he would explode with all the light of his life in this single strike. It squeezed every ounce of his strength. Every cell seemed to unleash all their energy. There was only one survivor. The sword didn't return once it struck. There was no control, no hesitation, and no way out. It was as if he had staked his entire life on this one strike. Although it wasn't brilliant, it had the determination to destroy everything. Even though it was only a single strike, it went all in. It couldn't be controlled, nor was there any need to control it. The sword lived with the person and died with the person. Either the enemy or himself fell. When Li Xian saw the strike, his expression turned solemn as he muttered to himself. Is it worth it to stake his life on this strike? Zhou Wen stared at the earth-shattering strike, but he didn't move his practice sword. He could sense Ming Xiao's determination from the sword. Ah! Tian Jinjin exclaimed in shock when she saw Zhou Wen did not react to it. It may be a special rubber sword that was used for training, without any edge or sharpness, even to the point of being curved, but under the augmentation of Ming Xiao's sword technique, even a practice sword could pierce through flesh and blood. Feng Qiuyun's and Li Xian's expressions changed as well. They didn't know what was wrong with Zhou Wen. He had failed to react. As the sword flew like the wind, the practice sword in Ming Xiao's hand brushed past Zhou Wen's neck, almost touching the skin on his neck, but ultimately, it didn't injure him. Why didn't you fight back? Ming Xiao asked Zhou Wen with a frown. 
Why should I fight back when you aren't stabbing at me? Zhou Wen said casually. Ever since he had sensed the power of spatial trajectories, he had a keen sense of trajectories. Others might not be able to distinguish the minute difference due to Ming Xiao's sword being too fast, but Zhou Wen could see it clearly. That strike wouldn't hurt him at all. Upon hearing Zhou Wen's words, Ming Xiao was stunned. He looked at Zhou Wen in a daze and didn't say a word. After a long while, Ming Xiao's eyes gradually became resolute. He slowly retracted the sword that was sitting beside Zhou Wen's neck and sheathed it. He bowed slightly at Zhou Wen and said seriously, Coach, I understand. I won't randomly strike in the future. The sword needs to kill before it's unsheathed. With that said, Ming Xiao turned around and left. Zhou Wen was somewhat taken aback. He didn't know what had gone wrong with Ming Xiao. First, he didn't stab him, and next, he left for no reason. Chapter 447 Continue Working Hard Ming Xiao, what's going on? Why are you leaving without fighting? Tian Jinjin chased after him and asked. We're done, Ming Xiao said. Done? How is that possible? Didn't you only stab him once? Why are you done? I understand now. Zhou Wen was unable to dodge your attack, so he lost, right? Tian Jinjin rattled on. Of course not. I lost. Feng Xiao Yan is right. Coach is no longer in existence on the same level as us. He could see through my weakness with a single glance and tell me my weakness through actual actions, said Ming Xiao. What weakness? Tian Jinjin didn't understand what Ming Xiao was saying. All she saw was Zhou Wen standing there without doing anything. As it was a sparring match, I deviated a little when I struck. I was afraid that I would really harm him, but Coach saw through my hesitation at a glance, so he didn't strike at all, Ming Xiao said. That's normal. Just continue sparring. Why did you admit defeat? Tian Jinjin still didn't understand. Ming Xiao shook his head and said, There's no need to continue. If Coach had been an enemy, he would have seen through my hesitation. If he were to strike back then, I would have already been defeated. He didn't attack to tell me that since I staked my life on this strike, I should be certain that I really want to kill the person before I deliver it. If I'm not even sure myself, then I shouldn't attack. If I have doubts in my heart, I will definitely lose when I strike out. If I can't strike out without any hesitation, I shouldn't draw my sword. But aren't you sparring? Isn't it normal to show mercy? Tian Jinjin asked. This is where coach is better than others. It's obvious that he's telling me that there are no drills in life. The past is the past. There's no chance for a redo. Since I've staked my life on the sword, how can there be any sparring? I have to risk my life when I strike. There's no chance for me to do it again. My sword doubt cultivation is indeed not enough. To think that I actually wanted to spar with coach. In fact, I'd already lost when I had this thought. From today onwards, unless I confirm that I want to kill my enemies, I will definitely not draw my sword again. Ming Xiao said seriously. From the looks of it, coming to Sunset College was right. You've really grown a lot. Tian Jinjin said as she looked at Ming Xiao. Yes, it's my good fortune to be able to meet Coach. Unfortunately, we only have three months here. I can't learn more from Coach. Ming Xiao nodded. Zhou Wen didn't know what Ming Xiao was thinking. He was somewhat puzzled. He originally wanted to see what Ming Xiao's sword technique was like. But to his surprise, Ming Xiao ran after stabbing at him. However, Ming Xiao's strike was truly stunning. The sword technique of seriously betting everything had a shocking feeling to it. In a battle, only bravery won. Ming Xiao's sword technique was the easiest way to win against a strong opponent, but it was also the easiest way to die. What Ming Xiao learned from Zhou Wen was about questioning himself and not striking out. It greatly reduced the chances of him dying. Only then would this lead to Ming Xiao becoming a stunning swordsman in the future. Zhou Wen realized that his strength and speed were stronger than Ming Xiao's, and his sword techniques weren't inferior to Ming Xiao's, but no matter how he attacked, he wasn't as decisive as Ming Xiao. Even if he used all his strength, he could only maximize it. He didn't have that kind of determination. Feng Qiuyan took his saber and said to Zhou Wen, Coach, since we're already here, why don't you spar with me? He didn't use a practice saber because he already had absolute confidence in his saber techniques. No matter how intense the battle was, he wouldn't accidentally injure Zhou Wen. All right. Zhou Wen felt that he had no choice. Feng Qiuyan had requested to spar with him, so he didn't refuse and slashed down with his sword. Zhou Wen hadn't really practiced his sword techniques before. With Transcendent Flying Immortal, coupled with his movement techniques, he was basically able to subdue the enemy with one strike. He didn't need that many techniques. One strike was enough. This was actually the same as Ming Xiao's. The two of them didn't usually attack with their swords, but when they did, they would use their full strength. However, due to the difference in their personalities, their techniques split into two very different branches. Zhou Wen's movement and sword techniques were so fast 
that even Feng Xiuyan couldn't keep up with him. All he could do was passively slash his saber to block. Ming Xiao and Tian Jinjin, who were outside the door, heard the sounds from the training grounds. Knowing that Zhou Wen and company were sparring, they walked in again. Upon seeing the two of them fighting, Tian Jinjin said in surprise, Feng Qiuyan has been suppressed to the point of only defending? She had never seen Feng Qiuyan use a defensive stance. Feng Qiuyan often sparred with Ming Xiao, so no matter how strong Ming Xiao's sword techniques were, Feng Qiuyan would choose to attack him without losing out. But now, Feng Qiuyan didn't even have the chance to counterattack under Zhou Wen's sword techniques. Ming Xiao watched as he said, Coach's sword techniques are indeed much faster and stronger than mine. Furthermore, he still has more strength he's holding back. It's unlike mine. Once I strike, I use all my strength and am completely unable to control myself. He hasn't used all his strength yet? Tian Jinjin was alarmed. If he had suppressed Feng Xiuyan to this extent without even using his full strength, how powerful would he be when he used all his strength? Zhou Wen kept using Transcendent Flying Immortal. Although it was only a single move, it created different effects due to the angle of attacks when combined with the variation in movement technique. However, Feng Qiuyan's saber technique was like a turtle shell, completely impenetrable. Just a sword technique alone couldn't break through his defense. Although he could suppress Feng Qiuyan, he was unable to defeat him. Feng Qiuyan was also suppressed to the point of not having the ability to counterattack. After exchanging more than a hundred blows, Zhou Wen felt that he couldn't freely engage in battle as he wished. He found it boring, so he retracted his sword and retreated. It's boring. That's it. It's because I'm not strong enough that coach can't enjoy it. Don't worry, I'll continue working hard. Feng Qiuyan said seriously. Then continue working hard. Zhou Wen placed the sword back on the rack and left the training grounds with Li Xian. Old Zhou, you've already advanced to the epic stage. What's the point of going to school? Have you considered what you will do after graduation? Li Xian asked Zhou Wen casually as they walked through campus. Something related to dimensional zones. It's best if it's an easy job. It's best if I can game at work. Zhou Wen said without any thought. You will only be 20 when you graduate and an epic stage at that. Although not everyone will dare to hire you because of Wang Mingyuan, many people in Luoyang will definitely be willing to hire you. Your request isn't a problem, but do you really plan on spending the rest of your life like this? Li Xian asked as he looked at Zhou Wen calmly. Chapter 448 Missing I think it's good this way. Why can't I? Zhou Wen wasn't someone who liked to go too far. His greatest goal now was to rescue the former principal and find a safe place to live his life before raising his strength. Even if the dimensional zone seal failed in the future, he could still protect himself and his friends and family. You definitely know that the occurrences of breakout creatures these days are increasing in frequency. The breakout creatures that appeared in our school previously destroyed the library. There was also the sky spiders that nearly destroyed Luoyang City. In the future, this world will only become more and more chaotic. What kind of job can you find to lead a peaceful life? Li Xian asked. Zhou Wen thought that it made sense. When the world turned into a monster amusement park, there wouldn't be jobs that could allow him such an idyllic life. Then what do you want after graduation? Zhou Wen asked Li Xian. I wish to build a city myself and gather many powerful humans. I want to build an impregnable castle. The city will be filled with my friends and family. I want to be able to protect them. Li Xian said. If you have such thoughts, you are no different from me. Zhou Wen said with a smile. How is that the same? I'm proactively attacking. You are just passively getting beaten up. Li Xian said disdainfully as he cast a glance. All right, let's make an agreement here. You can leave me a room when you build the city so that I have a place to stay. Zhou Wen said. Then you will have to wait. It's impossible to build a city without the standards of a top epic. I haven't even come close to the epic stage. Who knows when I can become a top epic? Li Xian said with a smile. I believe you will definitely reach it. Zhou Wen said seriously. All right. That's an agreement. In the future, I'll build a city and leave the best compound for you to comfortably stay in. Li Xian said heroically. The two of them chatted as they walked. However, most of the time, Zhou Wen listened to Li Xian's voice out his future ideals. As for himself, he didn't seem to have many pursuits. The only time he felt a sense of achievement was when his level increased and his abilities improved. Today is my father's birthday. Why don't you join me? Just treat it as a free meal. It's a waste not to eat it. Li Xian dragged Zhou Wen out of the school. Although Li Xian greatly disliked Li Mabai, it wasn't likely he would fall out with him in front of his father. Apart from Li Xian and Li Mabai, Old Master Li had also adopted many godsons and goddaughters, so the rich and famous in Luoyang came to congratulate him. Even in Tianzue had sent someone to deliver a gift. The Li family was especially lively today. 
I really don't have to buy a gift. Zhou Wen had been dragged over by Li Xian. He hadn't bought any gifts and went to the Li family empty-handed. What else are you going to give me? You coming is already giving me face. Now, everyone knows that you are Ouyang Lan's favorite son. Even in Jing isn't as doted on as you. Li Xian pointed at the buffet table and said, Eat anything you want, drink whatever you want. As long as you don't get drunk and go crazy. That won't happen. I don't drink, Zhou Wen said. I'll take a look over there. Get something to eat first. Call me if there's anything you need, Li Xian said as he went to the other side. Zhou Wen didn't know anyone, so he didn't need to worry. He took the food and beverages and minded his own business by eating. Zhou Wen, we meet again. Have you considered the matter I told you about previously? Li Ma Bai walked over and said to Zhou Wen with a smile. Didn't I already give you an answer? Zhou Wen said indifferently. Don't you think about it anymore? Li Ma Bai asked with a smile. There's no need. Zhou Wen answered with certainty. That's such a pity. Li Ma Bai shook his head slightly before walking away. After Li Ma Bai left, Zhou Wen didn't take the matter to heart as he continued eating. Zhou Wen and Li Xian had agreed that the two of them would return to school after the birthday banquet ended. However, Zhou Wen never saw Li Xian again. When the banquet was almost over, he didn't see Li Xian, nor did he pick up his phone. Could something have happened to Li Xian? Zhou Wen couldn't help but feel his heart skip a beat. However, with this being the Li family, who could touch Li Xian? Even Li Maobai didn't have the guts to touch Li Xian in front of old master Li, right? However, Zhou Wen felt uneasy. He immediately used Truth Listener's earring to search the Li family manor, hoping to find Li Xian. At this moment, in a secret chamber, Li Xian woke up groggily. His vision gradually cleared as he realized that he was chained up with some strange metal. His body was bound to a metal chair while Li Ma Bai was standing in front of him. Li Ma Bai, what are you trying to do? Aren't you afraid that the old man will know that you dared to attack me here? Li Xian glared fiercely at Li Ma Bai. I think you're really not fully awake. Do you want me to help you recall how you came here? Li Ma Bai's expression remained unchanged as he smiled. Didn't you? As Li Xian spoke, his expression changed. He gradually recalled what had happened before he came. He was supposed to be at a banquet, but Li Weiyang had called him and said that she was at the back door of the Li family residence. As she was an illegitimate daughter, Li Weiyang didn't even have the right to attend the family birthday banquet. When Li Xian went out to meet her, she said that she had a gift for old master Li, but since it wasn't convenient for her to give it to him, she asked him to deliver it for her. Li Xian naturally agreed, but after he received the gift from Li Weiyang, who he wasn't wary of, he fainted and woke up to find himself here. What's wrong with you? Sis Wei Yong? Li Ma Bai, if you dare touch her, I'll kill you. Li Xian glared at Li Ma Bai and said fiercely. Li Ma Bai laughed and pinched Li Xian's face with one hand. Li Xian, Li Xian, you're still so stupid. You don't know the dangers of this world. I originally thought you were playing the pig, but from the looks of it, you are really a pig. As he spoke, Li Ma Bai released Li Xian and reached out to press the button on the remote control. Then, Li Xian saw the wall in front of him gradually turn transparent. It turned out that it wasn't a real wall, but a mirror. After the motorized curtain lifted, he saw the room opposite. Li Xian's gaze landed on the room across him, and immediately saw Li Wei Yang inside. Chapter 449 Life Snatching Goo Li Ma Bai, what are you trying to do? Li Xian gritted his teeth and asked. Nothing much. After all, you are my brother. Even if you die, you have to understand why. Li Ma Bai picked up a walkie-talkie and said, Li Wei Yang, you did well on this matter. Li Wei Yang clearly couldn't see the room. Upon hearing Li Ma Bai's voice, she immediately looked around in panic. She realized that the sound came from a speaker, and she said agitatedly, I've already done what you asked me to do. Please remove the poisonous goo from my body. Li Ma Bai glanced at Li Xian and continued, Li Xian usually treats you so well, yet you handed him to me. Don't you know what happens when he falls into my hands? Li Xian had planned on speaking, but he fell silent when he heard Li Ma Bai's question. He looked through the mirror on the wall at Li Weiyang. Li Weiyang turned pale. I know I let Li Xian down, but I just want to live. There's nothing I can do. He's your younger brother, Li Ma Bai said mockingly. There's nothing I can do. I'm just an illegitimate daughter, but he's the third scion of the Li family who's high and mighty. We don't belong to the same world to begin with. He treats me well, but it's just a farce to show to others. It's just pity, Charity. Li Xian's face turned pale when he heard that. He had always treated Li Wei Yang as his sister, but he never expected her to say something like that. Although she was saying it with her life under duress, the words were still unacceptable to Li Xian. Li Mo Bai didn't say a word. All he did was look at Li Xian. However, Li Wei Yang grew anxious. I've already done what you asked me to do. 
You said you will remove the poisonous goo from my body. Quickly remove it. Li Weiyang slammed the table in annoyance, her voice sounding agitated with a hint of pleading. Of course, I will keep my promise. However, you still have to do one last thing for me. After doing this, you can regain your freedom, Li Mobai said. What else do you want me to do? Li Weiyang asked loudly. Li Weiyang, you should know that there's no absolute secret once someone else knows it. If I release you now, one day, you will tell everyone that I killed Li Xian, Li Mobai said calmly. No, no, no. I definitely won't say anything. I won't say anything. You have to believe me. Li Weiyang waved her hand in panic, fear written all over her face. I don't like having my fate controlled by the hands of others. It's easy for me to let you go. You just need to personally kill Li Xian. That's the only way I can let you go without worries. I don't have to worry about exposing the secret because the first one to die will be you, Li Mobai said. No, no, no. I can't do that. Li Weiyang shook her head as she retreated. Of course, you have the right to choose, but if you don't, I can only let you die here. Only dead people keep secrets, Li Mobai said. You can't do this to me. Li Weiyang's face warped as she appeared conflicted. Ah! Suddenly, Li Weiyang held her stomach as she collapsed to the ground in pain. The poison has already taken effect. You don't have much time left, Li Mobai said expressionlessly. I, I, I promise you, Li Weiyang said in pain. Li Xian felt as though he had been struck by lightning as his expression turned extremely nasty. Sorry, you took too long to agree. I've changed my mind. Dead people are still better at keeping secrets. As Li Mobai spoke, he rubbed the ring on his finger. Li Weiyang immediately spasmed. In just a moment, she rolled her eyes and spat out white foam. She was quickly dying. Stop! She has already agreed to it. Why are you still killing her? Li Xian shouted. Li Mobai said indifferently. Because I never planned on letting her out alive. Only dead people can truly keep secrets. This world is just that cruel. With that said, Li Mobai extended his hand in front of Li Xian. A strange bug was in his palm. It looked like a centipede, but it had a scorpion's tail. It had four transparent wings on its back, and its head looked like that of a cricket. It looked very strange. Do you know what this is? Li Mobai asked with a smile. Seeing Li Xian stare at him with those blood-red eyes, Li Mobai continued. It's a special companion beast. Its name is Life Snatching Goo. However, don't worry. It won't really kill you. The life it snatches is your life providence. Then it can transfer it to me and make me have dual life providences. You want my life providence? Since you want my life providence so badly, why don't you cultivate the invincible Kane divine art yourself? Li Xian stared blankly at Li Ma Bai. Li Ma Bai revealed a strange smile. Because cultivating the invincible Kane divine art requires one to be a virgin. If I were to cultivate it, the Li family wouldn't have any successors. But you are different. You've cultivated the invincible divine art, and once I snatch your life providence from you, I don't need to maintain my virginity. Although it's not as impressive as cultivating the invincible Kane divine art personally, it's still enough. Without waiting for Li Xian to speak, Li Mobai continued. My talent is better than yours, and I'm stronger than you. The old man made you cultivate the invincible Kane divine art because he prepared you for me. Impossible. You are lying, Li Xian said loudly. I'm lying? Everyone knows that once one cultivates in the Invincible Kane Divine Art, one can't have descendants. Even the original owner of the Invincible Kane Divine Art, the Xia family, didn't cultivate it. Yet, the old man made you cultivate it. Do you think this is something a father would do? Li Mabai said with a smile. I was the one who wanted to cultivate in the Invincible Kane Divine Art. It has nothing to do with the old man, Li Xian said. Was it really your intention? Do you remember when you were young? Who told you how powerful the Invincible Kane Divine Art was? How impressive the Xia family's patriarch was? Li Ma Bai continued with a smile. Ever since you were young, everyone told you that the Invincible Kane Divine Art was great and awesome. It suddenly influenced you into thinking that it was nothing to be a virgin your entire life just to cultivate in such a primordial energy art, right? Li Xian wanted to retort, but it did seem like this had been the case when he was young. Including the old man, Everyone had told him that the Invincible Kane Divine Art was powerful and invincible. Once he mastered it, he would become a hero of the world. Therefore, from a young age, he felt that cultivating the Invincible Kane Divine Art was an act of a hero. Now that Li Ma Bai had pointed it out to him, Li Xian felt his body turn cold. Impossible. The old man can't do this to me. I'm his son. He can't possibly do this to me. Li Xian seemed to be trying to convince himself. If you were really his son, of course he wouldn't. Unfortunately, you aren't. You always thought you were his biological son, 
But that's not the case. You are just a tool that was prepared for me. It's been hard on you. After all these years, your mission is completed. Li Mabai said, as he placed the life-snatching goo on Li Xian's face. The life-snatching goo automatically crawled into Li Xian's nose. In its wake, Li Xian felt as though it was slicing his body with a knife. Soon, the pain reached his heart. At the same time, he felt a strange force spread throughout his body. My good brother, thank you for all your years of arduous cultivation. I'll treat your life providence well. When my name becomes famous, your life providence will become famous alongside me. As my younger brother, you should be very happy, right? Li Ma Bai's finger slid across Li Xian's forehead, emitting a strange light as though it was stabbing into Li Xian's head. The asterisk starred. You are a B asterisk starred. Li Xian felt like countless steel needles were stabbing into his head, as though they were trying to suck his brain away. Li Xian struggled with all his might, but the metal chains had a strange effect. They didn't only seal his body, but it also blocked his primordial energy circulation. Don't use profanities. The Li family has raised you for so many years, so you should be grateful. Li Mabai continued. By the way, you still have a very good classmate called Zhou Wen, right? You're quite pitiful too. You can't get close to women, so you ended up liking men. Whatever, I'll kill him with your life providence in the future and get him to accompany you. Li. Xiao. Bye. Like the straw that broke the camel's back, Li Xian's eyes turned blood red. All his primordial energy spewed out like blood flames that burned crazily. His bones and muscles swelled as his hair stood on end. A blood-colored carapace appeared over him, forming a strange armor. For transparent blood wings spread out from his back like a supernatural being. On him, a red beam of light condensed, resembling a devil that came from ancient times. It attached itself to Li Xian. Crack! The metal chain that sealed his body and primordial energy broke inch by inch, no longer capable of binding his body. Li Xiaobai, I'm going to kill you! Li Xian's blood-red eyes stared at Li Mabai, roaring angrily. The blood-red projection around him roared as well, like a devil had possessed him. He didn't even call out Li Mabai's name, directly calling him by his actual name, Li Xiaobai. Come on, let me see what capabilities you have to kill me! Li Mabai said, as his eyes shimmered with zeal. Die! Li Xian's eyes burned with killing intent as blood-colored light exploded from his body. The devil behind him roared as he struck Li Ma Bai with a punch with bloody flames. Boom! The blood-red light exploded in the secret chamber, reducing the entire secret chamber to ruins. Chapter 450 Evil King Gu Li Mo Bai's eyes widened as he leaned against the cracked wall. Li Xian's fist brushed past his head, slamming into the wall. The terrifying power caused the metal walls of the chamber to shatter. Everything looked like ruins. Pa! Li Ma Bai slapped Li Xian in the face and said in disdain. You're still so cowardly and useless. Even at this stage, you still don't dare kill me? Why did you do so much? Why did you give me your life soul? It's not a life snatching. What you gave me was your life soul. Li Xian said as he stared at Li Mobai. I still failed? Li Mobai was extremely disappointed as he leaned against the wall and slowly sat down. The luster of his body gradually faded. What do you mean? Li Xian looked at Li Mobai and asked with gritted teeth. Li Mobai sighed and said, why are you still unable to be heartless even at this stage? Don't tell me you're not angry at all. Even if I were in hell, I wouldn't become a devil. Li Ma Bai, what were you trying to do? Li Xian asked again. Li Ma Bai closed his eyes and said, Do you still remember Big Brother? Of course I remember. Why are you mentioning him? Li Xian asked. Brother was peerless and was far better than both of us. He was no less inferior to Antianzua of the In family. If he had lived to this day, our Li family would definitely be in a better state than we are now. It wouldn't be difficult for us to become true elites. Li Mobai said. He's already been dead for so many years. Is there any point in saying all this now? Li Xian frowned. Don't you want to know how brother died? Li Mobai opened his eyes and stared at Li Xian. Wasn't brother killed by a dimensional creature when he went dimensional creature hunting in a dimensional zone? Li Xian's heart stirred as he vaguely felt that this matter wasn't that simple. Killed by dimensional creatures? That's technically right. Humans are the dirtiest dimensional creatures. Li Mabai mocked. What do you mean? Do you mean that brother was killed by someone? It wasn't an accident. Li Xian stared at Li Mabai and said. Of course not. Back then, before brother left, he told me that he wanted to go to the Dragon Gate Grotto to hunt fairies and to get a fairy companion egg for me as a birthday present. Li Mabai closed his eyes, his voice a little hoarse. But when he died, he was in Old Dragon Cave. Back then, I had my suspicions about why he was in Old Dragon Cave. He shouldn't have gone there. Brother was a man of his word. 
since he agreed to give me a fairy companion egg, he would definitely have gone to the lotus flower cave. He wouldn't leave before getting a fairy companion egg. I didn't dare to tell anyone about this because I was too young and weak back then. I didn't have the ability to do anything, so I could only bury this matter in my heart. I slowly investigated when I grew up and had the powers to do so. Li Mabai continued, In order to make myself stronger, I chose to cultivate the evil Gu Sutra. It gave me the power to control Gu, allowing me to use it as a foundation to control people. Slowly, I obtained clues. Everything pointed to a huge entity. That faction is too powerful, so powerful that it made me despair. Even if I used all my strength, I wouldn't be able to shake that massive figure. Who are they? Li Xian stared at Li Mabai and asked, The Xia family. Li Mabai said, The Xia family that gave us our invincible Kane divine art? Li Xian looked at Li Mabai in surprise. Invincible Kane divine art? That's nothing but a joke. The invincible Kane divine art they gave us is an incomplete version. If your talent wasn't so outstanding, no matter how much you cultivated it, you wouldn't have made any achievements. Thankfully, the heavens blessed you. You managed to master an incomplete invincible Kane divine art and condensed a high-level life providence like a mortal god of combat. But that's not enough. Although you are very strong, you are still far inferior to brother. Furthermore, the invincible Kane divine art's weakness is too obvious. With your personality, I'm afraid you would give up everything for a woman if you were to meet one that you loved. I... Li Xian was at a loss for words. He might really do that. The Xia family has no lack of women who can stir hearts. Li Mabai said in disdain. So, you want me to be completely heartless? There's no need for you to do that. All you need to do is tell me about brother. I can do it. There's no need for you to treat Wei Yang that way. Li Xian said through gritted teeth. It's not just because of this. To become an enemy of the Xia family and wipe it out, both of us are lacking. No matter how talented you are or how you can master an incomplete invincible Kane divine art to its limits and match that hero from the Xia family back then, you still can't touch the Xia family. Li Mabai opened his eyes as a cold glint flashed in his eyes. After lots of thinking, I came up with the only method to give us a fighting chance against the Xia family. In my cultivation of the evil Gu Sutra, there's a way of transferring. It's like a daughter I raise. After growing up and marrying someone else, I can transfer my life soul, evil King Gu, to you and help you condense a life soul. After absorbing the evil King Gu, your life soul will no longer be a pure life soul condensed by the invincible Kane divine art. It will subtly influence you, causing your body and life providence to change. It will make you stronger, far stronger than a pure invincible Kane divine art. It will not have the fatal flaw. Only then will you have the chance to deal with the Xia family. However, cultivating the evil Gu Sutra requires one to be emotionless or it will cause them to leave behind a huge latent problem. And to obtain the recognition of my life soul, evil King Gu, after I completely transfer it to you, you will also need to be heartless. At the very least, at the moment of fusion, you have to be able to disown your family. Only then will evil King Gu willingly sacrifice itself to be transferred to you. Li Mabai closed his eyes again. If I really did kill you and accomplish the act of being heartless, then who will tell me about brother? Without knowing anything, what's the point of doing all of this? Li Xian felt that Li Mabai was too bigoted. Me. A voice came from the room next door. As the secret chamber had been destroyed by the blast, the mirror wall had also shattered. Li Weiang, who had fallen to the ground, stood up alive. However, there was a strange change to her face. She didn't look like Li Weiang anymore. Her face was like an unfamiliar woman. Her name is Butterfly. Initially, after I die, she would tell you everything and support you to continue proceeding forward until you destroy the Xia family. Now it's useless, Li Mabai said as he tried to stand up. Li Xian subconsciously wanted to help Li Mabai up, but Li Mabai pushed him away and said indifferently, There's no need to help me. Since you failed, I'll continue taking this path. But you... Li Xian wanted to say that his life soul was gone, and the evil Gu Sutra was crippled. How could an ordinary person without any cultivation continue the path? There are no buts. Even if it's the path to hell, I have to walk it again. Li Mabai propped himself up and staggered towards the door. He was weak but firm. If Li Xian's body was in the depths of hell, as he headed for light, Li Mabai was the person who walked towards hell.